Welcome to the stream. Uh, once again, please enjoy this uh, moment of silence as I synchronize the audio uh, for the Twitch app. Okay, we should be good. Wow, wow, what an intro. Uh, let me first start things off here uh, with a couple of corrections on uh, last stream there that I got factually incorrect. Um, I was talking about the uh, Pelosi body cam footage that came out, and uh, I thought the antagonist there with the hammer, uh, Canadian fellow as it turns out, uh, I thought he had been um, convicted and sentenced. That is not true. Uh, he pled not guilty. And um, 13 years is uh, 13 years to life is what he uh, will get if he is sentenced. Uh, moving right along, I also said that the uh, the moon landings were 100% uh, uh, not real. I think that it's probably uh, probably not true. I'm sure it's uh, I mean at least a 50/50 toss up. They probably could have been real, so I was uh, incorrect on that as well. Um, I also said that my uh, my neighbor was a Bigfoot, a uh, large large uh, hairy fellow there um, that is uh, definitely not true I had a chat with them today uh, in the afternoon and as it turns out he is in fact a Sasquatch so uh, three points there on the last stream unfortunately I got incorrect but I'm very uh, very much a stickler for the truth around here so I just wanted to uh, set that record straight uh, moving right along into current events for today it is January 28th 2023 um, it's a Saturday, so, you know, we got that weekend news cycle. There's not a whole lot going on except, of course, uh, the rioting down there in the United States again over uh, the unfortunate incident that happened regarding some things and some people. You know, I'd like to, uh, to start things off on a lighter note and not talk about that, but here I am talking about it anyways. So I guess it's just uh, going to be one of those days, one of those days, you know. It's unfortunate uh, what happened, obviously. Um, I don't know what needs to be done. Uh, obviously some reform. I was talking about it yesterday, you know. Uh, it's just, uh, just an unfortunate thing. I think that really... Uh, Smashing your own windows and jumping down, uh, jumping up and down on strangers' cars is probably not um, not the solution. But uh, if that is really the only thing that can be done, I don't know, man. I'm I'm Canadian, so things are a little different up here. But I was especially surprised uh, to see that the five officers involved there were um, the same race as the victim. Um, so you know, people seem to still be making it out to be a, a racial thing and a racial issue and. If you look at the stats, the uh, the actual statistics released by the police, I don't know um, if that's something that, like a lot of people, they don't trust those statistics and they say that they're they're incorrect or whatever. So yeah, okay, I mean we can go down that road all day if we want to, but if you do look at the uh, reported statistics, um, the race of the police officers involved in any of these incidents doesn't seem to change the outcome of the incident. And this is something that people were talking about uh, during the George Floyd uh, protests and that incident as well. And people wanted to say that that wasn't the case. But again, if you look at the statistics, it seems to, to be that this isn't necessarily a, a racial issue. Um, you know, don't shoot the messenger. I'm just saying, if you, if you look at the facts, those are the facts as uh, they have been reported. So I think really the, the bigger issue at hand is probably... Uh, Probably something to do with uh, the police in general, you know. I was talking about how this whole thing, people say that uh, the problem is is all police are corrupt and blah, 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 and there's not a good one among the bunch. But I think that that kind of attitude isn't really going to fix the problem, you know. Kind of a hot take from a guy who just sails boxes around on a, uh, a virtual ship here. But I think that when you start to condemn the entirety of your police force, uh, then who's going who's gonna to do the job? You know, if you say they're all bad people, the only people that you're going to get in there are, are bad people, especially when the, the wages aren't very good. There's no respect for people in the uniform. So uh, the people you end up taking the job, you know, are unqualified, and they're just there to uh, hit somebody with a nightstick. So, so I don't know, man. I just wish that uh, I wish we could all stop screaming and shouting and just try to figure out the problem and get to the real root of the issue, whatever it is. 
calmly and without hysteria. But uh, hopefully, hopefully some changes do get made there, and also hopefully as well these uh, protests don't go on and on and on like the ones uh, back there in in 2020. And hopefully they don't end up creating uh, you know more victims through the violence of the protesting, because many people's lives are affected when you're out there smashing windows and driving away local business from your neighborhoods, terrorizing the people who live in those apartments on those streets. You gotta just think that, you know, those are people too, so. So too bad, too bad, but uh, I think that overall, you know, we're moving in the right direction here. Once again, if you take a look at the statistics concerning uh, both crime and police brutality, man, we're living in one of the, uh, the most peaceful, prosperous um, eras of humanity, hands down, in all fields. Despite what the boomers, or the uh, doomers rather, would have you uh, believe. So. so don't believe everything you read and hear on the internet. Because uh, I hear people even still trying to make it out about race, even though the police themselves, as I said, were the same race as the victim. But they've gone on to say now that uh, it's a racial issue that the five police uh, officers directly involved were convicted. Saying that, uh, you know, if they were Caucasian individuals, then they would have gotten off scot-free. And so it just seems like uh, yeah, there's just no winning with some people. They just want to start a race war, man. Just a bunch of doomers out there trying to paint a worse picture than uh, what's actually going on. If you ask me just one humble toga merchant's opinion this is of course uh, sea of thieves i'll be doing my commodity runs once again sailing these crates from port to port all seven ports twice i've been uh trying to prove that this game doesn't have a lot of pvp if you're not looking for it there's a lot of people doomers once again talking about doomers out there on the, the subreddit especially on reddit it's a very a very negative place let me just check my tail here. It's a very negative place overall, regardless of what subject it is you're uh, looking for, whether it's current events or video game news. Uh, I saw a lot of posts on there of people, uh, you know, they or uh, their friends, you'd take them out sailing, and you'd get sunk once by a crew that was uh, better than you. And what would happen is uh, nobody wants to come back and play the game because they think that's indicative of these the entire experience of the game as a whole. So I know that's not true, so I decided to uh, to come out here, film these videos, and prove that it's totally possible to sail around from port to port peacefully without running into uh, an excessive amount of PvP. I didn't know uh, how much PvP there would be. I knew it would be a lot less than the subreddit, but what ended up happening is I have actually run into... Uh, Barely, barely any aggressive ships. We're here on uh, run number 15. I did 10 runs on the Xbox servers, which uh, people tend to say are less aggressive. And now I'm on uh, run number 5 on the PC servers. And um, besides running into uh, to two aggressive ships over the last uh, 25 hours on the PC servers, uh, I've been sailing around peacefully, just uh, delivering my crates. My crates of sugar, my crates of silk, my crates of stone. Be in the old humble commodity march uh, merchant out here. Uh, I am a little bit tired tonight, in case uh, you haven't noticed by my intro. But that's alright, usually once I get going here the adrenaline kicks in. I had my cups of coffee there. Shouldn't be flubbing too many words, missing too many cannon shots if I do need to fire them. But I just do this as a hobby, so I got a lot of other things going on. I usually miss meals, I usually miss a lot of hours of sleep. One of these runs I ended up uh, sailing right out of port without any commodities on board. I'd completely forgotten to load them up, so uh, I find the results of my sleep deprivation can actually add to the entertainment value of the show. There's only ever one run that I had to scrap, run number nine. I've talked about it enough. We're not going to talk about it anymore. It was just awful from uh, from the get-go right up until I ended up getting port blasted. Of course, due to my own personal integrity, I uh, 
I do still count that as a sink. It's on my record. I'm not going to pretend that it never happened, even though I do, uh... I do wonder if I'm going to post the footage. Probably not. I have it saved. Alright, so, uh, we are leaving, uh, Dagger Tooth. This is the port we hate the most, of course. Because of that situation with the docks here, I will be sailing counterclockwise once again. As the commodity routes are the same for this week. And, uh, I don't think I'm going to be breaking any records today. The current record is, uh, 495,271 coins that I set last night, of course. But, uh... I wasn't trying to set any records. I knew I knew it could have happened. I did everything right that I was going to do, but I wasn't really trying. Just chilling, hanging out. And uh, what ended up happening is the stream went on for uh, seven and a half hours. Usually they only go for five and a half, so. So I don't think I'm going to, uh, I'm going to do anything crazy here. I think I'm just going to probably shoot for over, for over 400,000. I do like to have those numbers high because I'm, uh, I'm starting to get a real big ego out here, man. I'm starting to get real proud. I'm real proud of these coin numbers. But, you know, just with everything else I got going on, those extra two hours of stream, man, they really wear me out. So I'm going to, uh, to see. See, uh, see what I can do. Maybe I will, maybe I won't. I mean, I'm still going to be hitting the Megalodons and the uh, Skeleton Sloops as I go here, if I do run into any of them. Got to get that emissary flag up as much as possible, but uh, but you know I'd like to keep it under five and a half hours tonight. So so we'll see if I can bring myself to do it. I might even skip a couple ports if they are uh, they are occupied. That's what I used to do when I first started doing these streams. But since I've been uh, getting the higher and higher numbers here, this fellow, for instance, what is that? A sloop? A sloop with his lights on? He's just doing the old. Skeleton or uh, ghost fortress there. If the port is taken, usually what I do is I just skip it. It's what I would do when I was out here uh, not streaming. But um, you know, if you don't skip the ports, you're gonna make uh, easily a hundred thousand coins more at the end of the journey. So I've been uh, trying to hit all the point points and uh, ports I could without skipping any. I also was thinking too, you know, I've been putting these little cargo runs to uh, to get my flag up, to get uh, as much coin as I could, and it's just uh, it's just interesting because if the run comes out to uh, seven and a half hours, it would actually almost be uh, more worth my time to do an extra loop around all the ports instead of putting those uh, cargo runs into it. So I don't know. I'll have to try that sometime. I mean, if I'm gonna do a seven and a half hour uh, run anyways, like my whole thing was uh, calling it a 14 port run, so I was like, well, you know, if I put some extra cargo in there, then it's not really uh, breaking the rules, it's still a 14 port run, but, you know. Uh, if it's gonna take seven and a half hours, I might as well just make it a 21 uh, port run, and I'd probably make, uh, probably make more than 500,000 coin if I just did that, because you, uh, you make a whole lot of a lot of coin on those ports at the end of the run when uh, you've got that level 5 on the emissary flag. So, that's that. I don't know if I'll run into uh, any PvP this evening. Honestly, like I said, I expected to be uh, running into more aggressive ships. So I could cut some chase footage. I have some evasive maneuvers I have uh, come up with that actually work quite well. But uh, since uh, beginning to film this, I mean, you know, I only really had uh, three good chases. I had a couple of ships come after me on stream number 10, the last on the Xbox servers there. But they pulled away pretty quickly, so I don't really know if I can even consider those to be uh, aggressive ships at the end of it. But, you know, it's like... Three aggressive ships in 50 hours, and you'd go onto the subreddits, and uh, based on what you hear people post, what you read from their comments on there, you think that this game was absolutely nothing but the sweatiest of the sweatiest crews constantly trying to hunt people down. You never have a moment of peace. There's no way to even do an island voyage, and it's just absolutely untrue, as uh, as you've seen. 
if you watched any of these episodes. It's very calm out here, even on the PC servers. I mean, the problems uh, that I have run into, I've run into two crews on the PC servers here. And, uh, you know, they've been, uh, they've been all right, but certainly not unbeatable. I uh, did some practice uh, shooting palm trees there for an hour uh, back last Thursday. But, uh, but yeah, you know, I really think that there's just a lot of doomers on the internet. I mean, it's unbelievable talking about this thing that happened down in Memphis. I mean, it's, it's absolutely terrible, of course, but, uh, but just the way everybody's trying to, uh, to start a race war concerning it, you know, and uh, especially considering that, you know, uh, a lot of people can't seem to comprehend just how many people are uh, in the United States, you know, at a 350 million, uh, likely more at this point, of course. I mean, I don't know. I haven't caught up with the population numbers in a while, but more than 350 million. I mean, a lot of people can't, uh, can't really process in their mind exactly how many people that is and uh, how many people get pulled over and how many people get arrested. And there's absolutely no excuse for what happened. But at the same time, you know, mistakes uh, mistakes do get made. Uh, I'm not talking about the mistakes regarding uh, the police themselves, but the mistakes regarding their training and the hiring of these men. And mistakes uh, made regarding, uh, regarding not taking, uh, you know, the uh, whole department and the whole situation more seriously to prevent something like this happening. That's uh, that's something that's going to happen when you're uh, you're dealing with that many police in a country that size, and uh, it absolutely shouldn't happen. But uh, once again, as I've talked about on the stream a lot, you really have to look at what's been going on all throughout the entirety of history and how we connect to that, and how the numbers and statistics have really only been getting better. A lot of people would uh, have you believe that the world is ending and we're living in the most uh, terrible, violent time in history. But the truth is, um, if you look at the numbers, if you look at the reported statistics, things have actually been getting better. Even in the last 20 years and back, there's been less violent crime than there ever has. And of course, in this day and age, you know, all the police have body cams. So this kind of thing can't happen uh, without us knowing about it. And I know that there is a, uh, a lot of people, doomers on Reddit, once again, they seem to be under the impression that, oh, you know, just because they got caught this time doesn't mean that it's uh, their first offense and this must be something that they are doing all the time and there's all these incidences that we haven't heard about. But you know, the truth is, they have body cams and they got caught doing it. So if it is something that was a, a regular thing, that police force to be doing, those officers in particular, we would have heard about it. That's just the day and age we're living in. Frankly, uh, in my own opinion here, I, I cannot understand um, what instigated that entire incident. It, it, it's incomprehensible to me as I believe it is to a, a lot of people. Yeah, it's one of the uh, one of the most horrific things that uh, that I've seen in my life, man. Fuck. This is, of course, a family channel. I didn't mean to drop that f bomb, <laughs> but uh, <laughs> what actually was that noise? Sounded like I got harpooned by a rowboat, man. I'd be so surprised. Just one uh, one little pirate hobo out here. Waiting for me to check the barrels of his wreck. Looks like it's nothing but uh, a bit of floatsome here from a ship that uh, scuttled. But I thought maybe, maybe, maybe that could be a supply crate. That is something I do need. Oh! Crate of rarity. Good enough. Gives me a little bit on the emissary flag there. Okay. 
Moving right along to Sanctuary. Just gotta get my, uh, gotta get my commodities list up here. Always have these written, of course, in a notepad. Would be nice to see a skeleton sloop or something out here. But you know, it starts with that skeleton sloop, and then before you know it, I'm going to be out here for seven and a half hours again trying to beat my high score. Uh, it was nice getting 495,000, but the whole thing is like, you know, an extra six grand, I could have beat 500. And that's, uh, that's what we've been talking about here for a long time, trying to beat that 500,000 number. It is kind of pointless when the uh, the streams run seven and a half hours, though, because I feel like, you know, it's impressive if I made 500,000 in five and a half hours, but when you add those extra two hours on there, like I was saying, you know, I might as well just do another loop around the ports, and I'd probably be able to break 500,000 uh, easily anyways. The one nice thing about putting the cargo runs in there and sinking the uh, megalodons as they come up and whatnot is it does give me the extra money, but also too, like usually when I head off and I do those cargo runs, it's a little bit uh, safer than uh, running another loop around the ports because of course the more you sail around, the more likely you are to run into a, a hostile ship. Whereas uh, when I was doing those cargo runs, yeah, it took me an extra two hours to, uh, to tie it all together, but at the same time, when I did them, it was usually because par uh, ports were blocked or uh, there were ships out there that I knew were hostile, so I could just hang out over in uh, Moro's Peak to wait for them to uh, finish up whatever they were doing. Looks like that sloop's coming our way now. Yeah, that's the uh, Athena's Fortune guy as well. Good old Moby, Teated Buckalo 2. Usually with a name like that, I mean, uh, I'm going to say this guy's probably going to be hostile. I'm just going to give him rude. some room. Some room to be rude. See what he wants to do. If he wants to come out. Wants to come out and juggle some cannonballs. Or he's just uh, going to use the port himself. I do have the uh, Dark Adventurer sails. I don't have them equipped any longer. I was trying to get uh, a more balanced uh, set of data here to see what it would actually be like for an average player to come out and sail around the way I'm doing here. I'm going to edit these down into a supercut, post it to the subreddit, show everybody that. You know, you, you can just sail around and do commodities. Not everybody is hostile. Like I said, even the, uh, the crews I've run into that are hostile, I mean, um, one of them uh, parleyed there. Uh, and a lot of uh, crews that I ran into on the docks, uh, they've all been uh, friendly. Most people, when um, they hear that I'm out here streaming, they just want to chill and chat. So that's my advice, is if you're out here playing Sea of Thieves and you don't want to do PvP, just uh, get your microphone on. Tell them you're doing a, a Twitch stream. Might be able to buy you some time <laughs> as you run away with their, uh, their fruit crates and whatnot. Looks like he's got some of those uh, hourglass cosmetics as well, but that level 5 Athena, I'm sure he's just uh, pulling in to sell. He's probably got more valuable loot on his ship than I do on mine, so. They're just like spiders and snakes sometimes, you know, they're more afraid of you than you are of them. When I did have those Dark Adventure sails, the reason why I eventually took them off was because uh, sailing around past people, they would get uh, spooked by the uh, $8.5 million cosmetics, and they'd end up just uh, either breaking off chase real quickly or actually running from me. It was quite funny. Yeah, it's funny that this guy just doesn't even care about me, of course. Since I'm, uh, I'm right here anyways, I'm going to sail on down to Golden Sands and then I'll cut back to Sanctuary. It's not that much of a difference in length. Since uh, that should be Golden Sands straight ahead there and that port is open. So. No luck on the wind though. A little bit of wind would be nice today. Always got what I call the merchant's luck. Always sailing up wind.
What a brave sailor, man. <laughs> he just doesn't even care. But this is what I'm saying, you know, a lot of people, uh, you come out here and you get, you get hit by that one sweaty crew that one time or whatever. And you think that everybody is, uh, everybody's gonna be violent, but... I've run into just as many friendly crews as I have, uh, hostile crews, so... So sometimes you just kinda gotta take that chance, you know? It is all about the loot. I am all about the, uh, the cosmetics and whatnot, even though I'm, uh, still a green skeleton. The game, uh, decided it doesn't want to load my cosmetics today. Rest assured, I do have, a uh, great, great many of them. Is that it? Just had a couple pieces, I guess. Alright. Sail in and use it. Oh! Looks like he, uh, he might wanna... Might wanna come party. Nope, he's sailing away. Maybe he, <laughs> maybe he finally spotted me. He's just one of those guys that has the, uh, the Jack Sparrow theme blasting as loud as he possibly can in his headphones. He's just, uh, gone completely blind to everything around him. Might have finally gotten spooked by my presence here. I think that's actually what happened because he's sailing around to the other side now, so... Funny how that goes. Yeah, whatever. I'll, I'll, uh, I'll go hit up Golden Sands then, like I said. With any luck, I'll be able to catch the wind on the way back. Maybe it'll shift again. What else have we got out here? Look up in the crow's nest. I will tell you though, after I got a bit of uh, the on-stream PvP there, getting attacked by the two ships that uh, actually did manage to board me, I'm uh, bitten by the PvP bug. I I said I was gonna do 20 of these runs just sailing commodities, so I am gonna uh, I am gonna finish that up. But come the 21st run here, I'm gonna start mixing some uh, solo sloop PvP into it. I just can't help myself. It's a lot of fun, especially when you do win and you're filming it, so you can go back and check the stream, relive past glory. It's a lot of fun. But I think uh, what I am going to do, instead of just being a regular old predatory player, is uh, I'm just going to take a lot of risks and chances. I'm going to sail up to people, interview them regarding the uh, latest happenings. If somebody does try to attack me today, I'll probably ask them about what they think about Justin Roiland getting fired from Rick and Morty there. That's a that's a pretty big happening. I mean, uh, you know, I could talk to them about what's what happened in Memphis, but I mean, that's kind of the thing where I don't think that... Uh, it's not really a whole lot to talk about, man. Everybody thinks it was terrible, and everybody thinks that some reforms need to be done, but... But, uh, you know, I was also saying there that, like, to me, watching that... Uh, that that footage and then hearing an explanation of the situation I still don't understand what instigated the whole thing and I don't think anybody does but I feel like you know I mean I it's totally possible that it is just what it is just a horrific uh, a horrific occurrence that had absolutely um, nothing nothing to instigate it, but I just find that so difficult believe, to believe that, uh, you know, five officers would just randomly, uh, randomly single out an individual for absolutely no reason at all and do that to them. It's just incomprehensible. Like, I mean, I, I don't understand, uh, I just don't understand any of it. I seriously just don't understand any of it. It's one of those stories that I really think that, um, Something's gonna come out, you know, these stories, something always comes out, and I'm not saying that, uh, the victim, uh, there's anything he could have possibly done to have, uh, to have deserved that, I'm, I'm not saying that at all, regardless of what news comes out, there's really no excuse for what happened, but, 
But there's just, there is just got to be more to that. There's just got to be more to that, man. There's got to be more to that, like a case of mistaken identity or, or, uh, or something. I have no idea what. But for that just to have been a routine traffic stop that turned into that, man. I mean, the only other, uh, the only other explanation that I can think of is that the five officers on question were, uh, were themselves on some kind of drug, man. Because that's not, that's not the kind of thing that, like, you know, a group of sober people, police or not, um, would just suddenly decide, uh, one day to go completely insane like that. Like, it's just, it's bizarre, man. Completely bizarre. now what do you want what do I want you know what I want I come here five times a week twice twice a day five times a week to buy all your commodities so count those coins and give me them crates lady good old unfiltered minerals those are of course uh, different different from broken rocks they're not rocks they're minerals It's interesting that the three, uh, the three priciest of the goods that you can uh, you can sail around here are uh, just rocks, you know, the sugar, the tea, the silk, and the spices aren't worth as much as the broken stone, unfiltered minerals, and the semi-precious gemstones. Go, go, go. The semi-precious gemstones I can understand, but it is just interesting that the most expensive goods, expensive money-making goods you can make in this game are just sailing around a bunch of rocks talked about that before because I'm a bit of a rock person. I love minerals. I love semi-precious gemstones. It's like treasure that comes out of the earth. And uh, a lot of people don't think that rocks can have any value just because they're the most abundant thing on the planet. I think of uh, any other any other item that exists, there is none more numerous than your common rock. If you don't believe me, just take a step outside and look around, man. There's rocks everywhere. But if you're a rock person like me, I mean, I know a lot of rock people as well. You know, those crazy rock people. Um, there's a lot of beauty, man. A lot of beauty in stones. Sometimes you just find the right stone for whatever reason. Depending on what you're into, different people are into different kinds of stone. Whether it depends on the uh, minerals it's made out of, or sometimes it's just the right shape, the right color. It's easy to go out and uh, you end up coming back with uh, 30, 40, 50 pounds of rocks in a bag. And then you realize, you know, you gotta dial it back. Because you can't just live in a house that's completely full, floor to ceiling with stones. But yeah, rocks are quite amazing. Quite, quite amazing. I ain't ashamed to say that. A lot of people, man, they think it's crazy. Rocks, you're into rocks. How can you be into rocks? They're the most abundant thing out there. They have no value. But I think uh, I think they're great. They're like uh, nature's art, you know. There's just something about a stone, a good stone. And that's uh, that's not even uh, you know talking about the semi-precious gemstones and stuff that you can dig up out of the ground. You know, I was talking about amethyst on another stream. It's a quartz crystal, but it's purple. It's actually one of the most abundant semi-precious gemstones on the planet. Uh, even where I am around here uh, in North America, you can head out into the woods and there's uh, a couple of known caches. You can get books on rock hunting. You can head out, dig, uh, dig around in a few areas, and your odds of uh, digging up purple quartz crystals is actually pretty high. When I first uh, realized that, it was it was shocking, man. You wouldn't think that uh, such a uniquely colored gemstone would be so common on the planet, but but there you go. And I've even found uh, hunks of citrine just uh, on the beach in the city where I live here. Don't have to go very far to find that. It's even more abundant than amethyst. It's uh, quartz crystal, but it's orange, orange to uh, yellow in color. It's neat stuff. I even found a piece of it in a friend's driveway one time. But 
That's how abundant it is. It's not something you're gonna find every time you go out, but if you do keep an eye out, you might find, uh, you know, a couple of pieces a year. That's for sure. It's very cool stuff. Oh, you're just in time to help us. Just in time to help you. Just in time to help you help me. I am, of course, buying these uh, supply crates here because it helps get the emissary flag up. That's going to add a uh, massive amount on my bottom line by the end of the run here. Time to get going. Time, time, time. Time is precious. Always time to get going. I'll keep buying those right up until uh, level four. I still find it worth I, of course, uh, I'm rolling in the coins here, so money isn't really it. It's not what I meant to buy, but you know what? I can use that anyways. I said I was going to buy one last stream, and I didn't. The thing about the storage crates is when you buy them, you can't, uh, you can't sell them afterwards. So you lose the most money on them. I meant to buy the fruit crate instead. Speaking of supplies, though, <laughs> I like Sharon. There's been uh, no construction for a while, man. She should have gotten her hearing back by now, but no such luck, I guess. Should have worn your uh, PPE there, Sharon. Should have worn your uh, head muffs. Very important. I don't understand people who don't uh, don't wear hearing protection when they're on the job there. Any job that I've worked where I've had to wear hearing protection, man, that's always like... I'll wear double hearing protection, man. I'll wear, like, you know, earplugs and the muffs over them if I'm allowed to. Kind of just joking around, but... Uh, I like it, man. It makes the work so much more peaceful when you can't uh, you can't hear everything that's going on around you. I worked in a, a tire shop for a while there, and customers would come and try to talk to me. You just point point to the earplugs and walk away. <laughs> Not the best customer service, but like you know, hey, we got sales rep. Go talk to them, man. Go talk to them. But it's nice, even with eye protection, it uh, just makes me feel a lot more comfortable. So, I'm gonna sail up back to uh, Sanctuary now and double back. It should be done there. The Athena's guy. What, uh, what am I supposed to be selling here, though? Since I'm here. Golden Sand Spices? I probably only got one. Yeah, I got one crate, so I'm just gonna hold on to it. Hopefully, I can uh, get that flag up some other way. I'll get it on the second loop around. Still no Reapers. Um, interestingly enough, this being the fifth run on the PC uh, crossplay servers, one thing I have noticed is that there are actually less Reapers on the uh, the PC than there were on the uh, Xbox. So there you go. Something I wouldn't have thought to be the case, but one of the things about uh, Reaper ships that I've noticed is a lot of them they just pull the Reaper's flag to get the uh, the loot bonus on all three of the, the trade guilds there, instead of just the one. So most Reapers on the Xbox tend to be PvE Reapers. What they'll do is they'll go hit up a Skull Fort, or even sometimes they just go uh, do that one Ghost Fortress up in the corner over and over again, sailing back between Galleon's Grave and the Fortress. And they're not really out there looking to sink anybody. But... Um, Reapers in general, I do uh, I do try to just stay out of their line of sight. Because they're one of the, the few ships that they will chase you if they are uh, inclined to PvP. They spot you even from, uh, you know, here to the furthest island you can see. They'll sail right across the map to try to hit you. Regular players, even if they are inclined to be aggressive, they don't tend to go way out of their way if they don't have a... Uh, Reaper's Emissary pop. That's what I've noticed anyways. There's a, there's a different ship now. It's this. Oh, it's the same guy, but he's dropped his Emissary, so he should be finishing up soon. Here. I'll go sail out around to the west, see if I can find uh, 
find anything else here to add to my journey. Maybe I'll find a Megalodon. Doesn't look like there's any uh, skeleton ships out there, but... You never know what you might run into. Sometimes you can even find, uh, you know, rubies and emeralds on some of these smaller shores. So I'll sail by those. Even if I can get uh, an extra crate or two. Oh, what's this? Galleon? Looks like a galleon. Did buy cannonballs, so I could go try to hit it. But uh, I think I'll just leave it alone for now and see what else is around. Check the map here, see what kind of... Uh, what kind of islands we got? I can uh, check the shores of these three. I guess Keelhaw Port isn't really a island. Should have checked out Rapier K. Podcast. What is it? Stand behind the wheel, man. I'm going to hit you with it. You should know that as the captain of the ship. sail directly through it, get some more points on my ill-fated commendation. I do, of course, want to get that legendary ill-fated uh, title for the ship. I find it absolutely hilarious. Even though uh, doing these runs, I have had such incredible luck so far. I mean, it's tough to say if this is actually just the way Sea of Thieves is, if it's actually just this, uh, this chill of a game. I thought I would run into more aggressive ships. I just haven't. I've been making tons of coin hasn't been a problem, so uh, I wouldn't actually consider my ship to be ill-fated. Checking the book here. Um, I've only been sunk five times on this sloop, and I've made uh, 6.3 million on it, so there you go. That's a pretty good fate, if you ask me. But I do find that ill-fated uh, title and crest to just be hilarious. Basically advertising your bad luck when people are chasing after you, so it's like, you know, I don't care, man. You can chase me around all you want. Chase me from uh, here all the way down to Moro's Peak, I don't care. Wouldn't be the first time. So I just think it's uh, it's a badass title. I've got the regular ill-fated title on right now, but if it ain't legendary, it ain't nothing, you know. I can put the legendary emissary title on, but it's just not as cool. I feel like uh, with the... Uh, the uh, legendary emissary title on as well. People might be more inclined to chase me for longer, thinking that, uh, you know, I'm such a money maker, obviously, they'll have a lot of loot. I still don't know what these commodity boxes sell for at the Reaper's hideout, so. So when somebody sinks me, I'm not, uh, I'm not sure at all what kind of money that they would get from, uh, from what I've got on board here. When I do my final checkout, it's about 80k. But, uh, you know, I think it's different for the Reapers. Get him with a little bit of uh, naval artillery here. <laughs> uh, OP. Cannons need a nerf. Somebody call rare. That crab man is posting on the subreddit as we speak. Merchant sailed by my beach today. I was simply trying to do one of my crab voyages. He hit me with a cannonball and I died instantly. Rare, please nerf. 6.3 thousand upvotes. Crab people, crab people, crab people. Perfect. Sapphire. That's pretty good. 
crab people, man. Remember the crab people from South Park? That's a reference that's uh, probably 15 years old at this point, man. Holy. It's crazy how fast time goes. I can't even remember what that episode was about. Like, it was about crab people, obviously, but, like, um, crab people were, like, a, probably a metaphor for something. Going South Park. And their devious political commentary. They might have just been about crab people as well, because that's the whole thing about South Park, man, is you just never know. Sometimes things just are what they appear to be. Okay, so this uh, Trident of Dark Tides. I've always uh, said how much these things are useless. But I realized the other day when I was uh, fighting off those sea hobos that were trying to grab my supplies, I ended up uh, I ended up getting one with a pistol shot there and I got away with the club haul. You can check that out on the infamous run number 13 on YouTube. It's uh, 11 minutes into the video. It was right when I first, uh, first got uh, out of port there. It's actually pretty funny. What I realized is with these uh, Trident of Dark Tides, right, they take a little bit to charge up, but if a group of people are coming to, uh, to try to board your ship, you charge it up all the way, right, it does like a little area of effect blast there, and that uh, that's supposed to do uh, 90 damage, actually. Let me see. Yeah. Yeah. It does 90 damage in an area of effect, right? So uh, in those situations where I gotta fight uh, three people at once, sometimes using one of these to soften up, up soften up the group would actually be perfect, because I could hit him with uh, a level three charge shot from the Trident of Dark Tides, and then just hit him with a bunch of blunder bombs afterwards, because the blunder bombs, a direct hit with the blunder bomb does 25 points of damage. So. So one blunder bomb and one of those hits could take out three people if they were standing close enough together. What else we got going on in this island? Doesn't look like much. Looks like the old uh, Athena's guy there. He uh, he. Sanctuary is an open port. Just hoping on another uh, another sapphire or something. Maybe a snake I could shoot, just for fun. A dog. <laughs> I've never seen him so far away before. I think he's probably uh, he's sick of my attitude. He's thinking about uh, switching ships. He is the captain. Uh, like I've said before, it's for insurance purposes. Coverage is better, but the premiums are higher. But it's just like every episode, man, we've just been getting uh, further and further apart. I'm getting kind of sick of him because every time I hear him splash about or relieve himself on the deck of my ship, I always think that it's uh, a PvP guy crawling up the ladder with a powder keg. And he always just barks at absolutely nothing. So I don't know, man. Someday, I might just have to put him in his box, never let him out again. Hear that podcast? Yeah, I'm talking about you, you little bugger. He also never helps with the crates, which I, uh, I don't appreciate that. But what are you going to do? It's tough to find good help. It's tough to find good leadership. At least his uniform fits him, you know? That much I can say, he's a classy looking fellow. Definitely gotta get this chicken and pork cooked. Cooked meat, man. It's like the number one thing you need in this game if you're gonna win PvP battles. Because it gives you that little bit of health regen. Fills up the bar. And of course, each piece of uh, meat, you can take two bites out of it. Restores, uh, Stores uh, pretty close to half your health, I think, actually. So, I mean, compare that to a coconut. There's just absolutely no comparison. That and the health regen that it gives you automatically uh, can save you, you know, those couple of seconds you need to patch a hole in the side of the ship or to take that extra shot to uh, win a pirate duel. Deck here. I 
Definitely got to get that cooked up. You know, there's been a lot of uh, a lot of streams here where I forget to uh, forget to buy supplies and forget to cook the meat, and I do end up in a bit of a situation. That one time I did, no meat, no blunder bombs, nothing at all, no preparation. Makes a really big difference. I find the uh, number one thing if you're going to be winning PvP fights in this game is uh, a little bit of preparation goes a long way. Especially if you're somebody, uh, you know, of medium skill. I understand that uh, if you are one of these all-star streamer types, you know, you only need 20 cannonballs if every single one of them goes into the hall and your first chain shot knocks the mass down. Not going to argue about that, but if you're going to end up in a, a sustained fight, you're going to want a lot of cannonballs, you're going to want a lot of wood. You want food to eat. You're going to want a lot of blunder bombs. Which is, uh, talking about that since I've got all these uh, coins in my bankroll here. Blunder bombs are going to be my bread and butter of combat. Because you get five of them. 25 damage each. Very easy to hit people with. So if you need uh, that extra edge in combat, blunder bombs are the way to go. Fire pots are good as well, of course. They do uh, one third of a person's health, of course, but uh, that takes more time for them to burn that uh, damage over time effect to work. Also, I, uh, I tend to be fighting uh, defensively, being a merchant just fighting off the old sea hobos, the old hungry, hungry hippos there, trying to grab my fruit crates. So I don't want to use fire pots because uh, what happens is I light my own ship on fire, and that's generally a combat strategy. Using fire pots against my attackers when they come close is always a good thing, but uh, what I end up doing is um, when people try to board my ship, uh, they'll try to run out onto the bowsprit, right? Which is this little stick on the front. So they run up out here to try to jump off over onto your deck. And when they're standing on uh, the bowsprit here, you just hit them with a blunder bomb and it knocks them off into the water. And then they're out of commission for a little while and that's one less person you have to fight. And uh, you, know, you can catch that actually in uh, stream number 13 there where I get attacked by the sea hobos. I knocked a guy off the bowsprit, it worked perfectly. That's kind of uh, kind of what I talk about when I mean a little bit of preparation goes a long way. Okay, so sanctuary. I am gonna be selling sugar here. Uh, I am gonna pull around. Uh, I'm gonna pull around to the other side. It's quicker to sell here, but I want to get that flag up more actually before I sell. So. I'm gonna buy uh, some more of those supply crates and then I'll uh, I'll sell and load at the, the regular dock. Sea of Thieves is an interesting game because when you get into uh, pirate versus pirate conflicts, there ship versus ship, especially uh, ship versus ship, a lot of the. Uh, a lot of the things that happen in combat are uh, are very slow. Um, that was in a run number 11. I took a chance uh, trying to beat a ship heading up wind there. Usually when I try to evade, I try to head up wind because that way I don't have to worry about setting my sails one way or the other. The fastest way for a sloop to sail up wind is to have its sails set uh, just square. So. so that way I don't have to worry about... Uh, about losing to a sloop with a two-man crew that can set their sails. But what happened is one ship was uh, coming across a uh, crosswind, so I turned up uh, up the wind stream to try to uh, to try to get a little bit of a distance. Beautiful, beautiful port port landing there, Hawk Wild. Unbelievable, unbelievable. Should have had three cups of coffee instead of two this stream. But anyways, anyways, I took a gamble because, uh, you know, even though I could watch the map there and see our speed differences, it's really tough to judge uh, what's going on with these ships. 
until you see uh, you see the results of what have happened there. So a lot of the PvP is just uh, being in situations, trying to figure out what worked and what didn't, and then coming up with a plan for the next time. And I'm getting there. Like I said, I've been bit by the PvP bug, so I'm going to start uh, incorporating some more of that come run number 21. But I did set out here to, uh, to do something, so I am going to do it. I am just going to run these commodities peacefully for another five streams. Peaceful as I can go. I mean, obviously, if I uh, if I am attacked, I'm going to stand my ground. But I won't be out there looking for trouble. After uh, after I hit that guy off the bowsprit, man, that was so satisfying because that was something that I I saw twice already out here doing those commodity runs. Where every time, man, when they get close enough, if you do end up in a situation where they close the distance and they get close enough to your ship, they always run out along the bowsprit and try to jump on. So I was like, hey, even though blunder bombs were nerfed, man, they still knock you back quite a bit. And if you're standing on that bowsprit, it uh, wouldn't take a wouldn't take a direct hit even with a blunder bomb to knock you off at one way or the other. So, so that's what I did, and it worked, and it was great. Nothing uh, feels better than when a plan comes together, I'll tell you what. Good stuff. So now I'm thinking about uh, thinking about all kinds of tactics. My biggest asset that I didn't realize is uh, my extraordinary amount of money from doing these commodity runs. You know, I'm always out here. I always crack a profit, even if somebody uh, destroys me halfway through the run. Where's that? Where's that crate, lady? Skelly galleon out there. Nothing to worry about. So using my extraordinary amounts of money, <laughs> my idea was to just stock up on blunder bombs like crazy. Because even if you had a two-man crew, that's five blunder bombs apiece. They do area of effect damage, so you can hit multiple people with them, right? And if you got close enough to, uh, you got close enough to an enemy ship, and uh, both people on your own crew just absolutely rained uh, blunder bombs down on them. That would be a great way to start a fight. They do a uh, quarter damage. I guess I should probably double check that. I'm pretty sure they do uh, 25 hit points of damage. So, you know, you get in there and you rain 10 of them down. Five from each uh, person on the sloop. And as far as I'm concerned, that battle's already won before it started. Especially if you can hit multiple pirates with those, uh, with those blunders at, the, at a time there. And you just got to get in and uh, clean it up with the pistol and blunderbuss. I used to have a problem playing this game where people would come at me with the cutlass. They'd uh, attack me with the sword a lot. And I was never really good at sword versus sword combat. But um, I've come to realize doing this uh, solo slooping. Since I have to have the blunderbuss uh, equipped to cover the ladders. If somebody climbs up one of those ladders, of course, you just smoke them with the blunderbuss. And... Uh, even if you don't hit them uh, with a direct hit, one hit from a blunderbuss can actually kill somebody if you do manage to uh, hit them with all the pellets. Shoots 10 pellets, each pellet does 10 damage. Um, since I've had the blunderbuss equipped to uh, shoot people off the ladders, uh, what I've come to realize is that just the threat of having that blunderbuss out is enough to, uh, to keep the enemy away from you. They will not chase you with a sword if you're chasing them with a blunderbuss. <laughs> So, so that's kind of been my new thing. You just try to get in there for the, the blunderbuss shots. You chase them around instead of having them chase you around. And uh, as long as you don't miss with the blunderbuss completely, uh, usually that's enough. Just the threat of that direct hit is enough to, uh, to get them on the defense. And then, you know... Hit him with a couple blunder bombs, hit him with a blunder bus once, and then uh, you can just finish him up with the one pistol shot. I know a lot of people use the uh, the Eye of Reach, that's the meta. Um, that one fellow I uh, fought in uh, run 11, and I see this a lot, right? I always wondered why they go up. They'll stand on the, uh, the bowsprit with the Eye of Reach, and I realize now it's because it's a sniper rifle, right? So you can see, like, when you stand here, you get sight of the whole boat. But I think the, uh, the downside of the Eye of Reach is that even though it does a whopping 75 damage compared to the uh, pistol's 55 damage, 
I got crackened over there. The downside of it is, of course, with that intense scope, I think your odds of uh, hitting somebody in any kind of close quarter situation is going to be significantly less than if you were using the pistol. I don't know. I might, uh, I might still switch over. I'm just kind of the person who like them. I don't like quick scoping with sniper rifles and video games in general. It's just something I'm not into. I don't know why. It's just not. Uh, it's not fun, even though it works. Business, but you know, winning is fun. I can't. Uh, can't argue with that logic. Picking up more supply crates here, getting the flag up. And then I'll be unloading sugar and uh, sailing down to plunder outpost. Goodbye. Goodbye yourself. See you in five days. Will be interesting though to see see some uh, some good old fights because I really think that uh, I really think the blunder bomb is uh, underutilized by players I know that it was uh, it was nerfed recently I'm gonna actually double check that damage here blunder bomb damage blunder bomb can deal up to 50% damage to a player upon a direct hit mm. Players in the splash damage radius take 15% damage. Okay, I thought it was more of a more of a linear fall off to it, but you know, 15 damage is still good, especially when a single pistol shot does 55. So you know, 45 and uh, 55, three blunder, three blunder bombs and one pistol will get somebody. The whole thing about uh, the blunder bombs, like the way I look at them, right, is it's like. You only get uh, so many shots with your your weapons because you have to uh, reload them after every shot, right? Whereas the blunder bomb, that's uh, five throwables that you can use back to back without reloading at all. So, so I think that that is a massive advantage when it comes to PvP. The whole thing, though, is uh, you know most people they don't. Uh, they don't have the coin, and they don't sail port to port, so they're un unable to just like buy throwables at every port, the way I am doing these runs. So uh, I think that's probably why most crews, when you run into people, they're not uh, just raining down blunder bombs on you like I would be. But 50 damage for a direct hit—that's good. Kind of uh, tough to hit somebody with a direct hit with a blunder bomb. I, I'm uh, kind of curious to. Do a little testing with that to see what a direct hit actually uh, actually would be. Whether there's like an inner cone in the splash damage, or if it has to actually you know, be a direct contact with the blunder bomb on their hitbox. But that's a challenge, uh, you know, a challenge I'm willing to take. Try to hit somebody direct. Lundy bomb there, especially when you got five of them you can throw back to back, you know. It just seems like a strategy that's underutilized, so. It's gonna be fun figuring that one out. Was until I was attacked by those uh, sea hobos that were all uh, dressed like a bunch of disheveled fellows. The captain who boarded, uh, he was dressed. Uh, he was dressed nice enough. I will have to say he had uh, had a decent hat. Was at least wearing a shirt. But his crew members, they looked like a couple of a uh, couple of new sailors. And uh, what happened is both my, uh, or all three of these uh, supply crates went missing, but it was interesting because what happened is I, I threw a blunder bomb and I knocked myself off my own ship. And then when I landed in the water, for some reason it gave me the commendation for uh, what it said is it was uh, placing a piece of loot on another player's ship in an act of uh, kindness or something, or as a gesture of goodwill and kindness. And so it was like, 
I don't think it would give me that commendation if, uh, if they'd stolen it from me. I don't know. It is Sea of see Thieves, so, you know, weird things do happen, but, uh, it could have just bugged out somehow. Maybe when we collided. I mean, I don't know. Got a sloop scuttling over there. Maybe somehow when we collided, the, uh, the boxes glitched out or the blunder bomb glitched it or something. I don't know. I'm not sure if you can, uh, can you blunder bomb these crates? Okay, so it doesn't, uh, it doesn't do anything. Also looks like uh, that is a linear fall off because that definitely wasn't 15% of my damage. You can see the health regen there that I was talking about. Work jobs. So uh, I, I guess like, you know, I guess like uh, we'll just have to see. Just have to see. How's my heading here? Heading directly south, leaving, uh, not a slip. That galleon still, still that galleon. I'm gonna be leaving Sanctuary, heading on down to Plunder Outpost. One hour into the journey here. Talking about blunder bombs. Probably don't need uh, don't need to buy any more of them. I mean, there's one volley should be good for one encounter. Got those seven fire pots as well. I love lighting enemy ships on fire. There's just something so satisfying about it. It's uh, it's just like it just feels so uh, incredibly aggressive. It's a uh, massive advantage, too, in ship versus ship combat, because, of course, uh, you know, it only does the 33% damage uh, over time there. It takes quite a while for somebody to burn down their health as well, but if you can set their whole deck on fire, or even a significant portion of it, um, they have to put that fire out, and, like, the trips to the water bucket and back, even on a sloop, that's going to be time that they can't spend... Uh, steering and sailing the ship or uh, repairing it as well so it's especially good right if like if you can get into the hold and light the hold down here on fire that's even worse if you can light the helm on fire that's probably the best thing you can possibly do because then uh, anybody who's trying to sail the ship they're gonna have to stand in the flames but uh, you know Eventually, what's gonna happen here? I'm gonna have to start practicing with chain shot. I don't have a lot of uh, a lot of experience with it. I've I've probably only shot like three chain shot in my entire life playing this game. Not even kidding. Because um, I used to run crews with larger ships and whatever. I was never really running the cannons. I'm good at shooting the normal cannonballs because you can always uh, use those against whatever. But the chain shot's got a bit of a lower, uh, narrower arc on it, right? So, uh, so what I'm gonna have to do is, uh, I mean, I've got this storage crate, but, uh, of course, you can't buy chain shot as well, so I'll have to run around to the barrels and collect some, some time off stream. And then I'm gonna just, uh, sail in a loop around ports and just shoot chain shot at the, uh, I don't know, whatever, whatever it is I see on the island. And that'll, uh, hopefully get me a bit of experience there with what kind of an arc I'm dealing with. That's always what I'll do in these games. Uh, if you want to get good at something, especially if it's a PvP game like Sea of Thieves, where you're uh, you're not always in combat, the amount of time you spend in combat versus the uh, amount of time you spend just sailing around is uh, minuscule. As I've uh, as I've proven here doing these streams, you know, out of uh, this is going on hour 70 plus. And out of that time, uh, I've probably spent less than a half hour in any kind of uh, PvP situation. So, you know, less than 1% of my time. And then you cut down uh, that time spent in a PvP situation. Well, how, how many cannonballs did I shoot and how many, uh, how many shots of the pistol did I make, right? So it's like you, you keep bringing it down and down and down. So if you want to get good at a game, 
what you do is you just find a way to practice uh, against, you know, like I got a video there, it's still up on Twitch. I was missing some shots in that first fight because uh, Sea of Thieves has a bit of a dead zone with the sticks here. I am using an Elite Series 2 controller on Xbox here. I do play a lot of uh, a lot of Battlefield. I played some uh, Call of Duty as well. Quite good at that, but um, the dead zones weren't as big. So in order to get used to the aiming, I just went and shot at palm trees for an hour, and that seemed to uh, seemed to do pretty good. And obviously, you know, it's not the same as shooting at a moving target. So it's not the end all be all of PvP practice, but it is one of those things where, like I said, if you're in a fight even talking about Call of Duty or Battlefield. I mean, how much time do you actually spend looking down the sights and pulling the trigger? It's uh, just a small percentage of the amount of time you spend lighting up your targets or walking around or whatever. Another, another galley, and I'm looking for a sloop. Looking for a sloop. So, uh, the number of shots that I took at palm trees, even though they're just stationary, right? Just sticks. The number of shots I took would probably be the equivalent of uh, a thousand hours worth of PvP, right? And I found that if you can't hit a stationary target, you're not going to be able to hit a moving target either. So, so it's a beneficial thing to do. You can get uh, multiple times the gameplay equivalent of practice in just by, uh, you know, having a little bit of patience and focus there to just shoot at palm trees. I was going to try to make a three-hour video of it and post it to YouTube as a joke. Uh, three hours of intense PvP action, pirate versus palm tree. Uh, but I could only keep it going for about an hour. Because, yeah, it's tough. It's tough. But I also do recommend, like, if you're going to do a repetitive uh, kind of practice, an hour is probably good because you got to uh, give your brain some time to cook. I think eventually what happens is you get like diminishing returns, right? And it is also funny because uh, usually by the end of your practice session, you're you're gonna be worse than you were at the start of it. But then when you come back the next day, that's when like you know all the neurons get built or whatever. I don't know. I'm not a brain scientist, but uh, but I know a thing or two about learning. And uh, you practice until you just can't uh, practice anymore. Like I said, you're going to be worse, so don't get discouraged by that. But when you come back the next day, everything's going to be a whole lot easier. Another beautiful island in the Sea of Thieves. Said it before, and I'll say it again. I really like the uh, the art direction, and the uh, the composure of these islands. You know, it's like rare always uh, always knows just where to put a rock, just where to put a palm tree, where to put a bush. Like, there's never any spot of these islands from any angle that looks, like, barren or missing. It's like if someone were to draw a picture of a, a Caribbean island with palm trees on it, man, like, that's what you draw. Like, it's just, uh, it's astonishing how they're able to make them look so good from uh, every angle you look at them. And it's every island as well. It's, uh, it's good stuff. Of course, uh, you know, Rares is, they're an old company. They've been around for a long, long time. I still remember playing Donkey Kong Country, man. Which was really funny with Donkey Kong Country for the Super Nintendo because uh, King K. Rule was a pirate. He was a pirate alligator, right? So the whole game had a pirate theme. It had barrels, it had the bananas. It had uh, a lot of the things that are in Sea of Thieves are actually in Donkey Kong Country. So it's, uh, it's kind of a trip. Kind of a trip having grown up on that and then playing Sea of Thieves because it's like, uh, it's got such a, a similar art style. They should, uh, they should release a, a DLC or a season where they add Donkey Kong. Donkey Kong and Diddy Kong, man. That would be hilarious. Uh, Diddy Kong would make a good pet. They already let you uh, have monkeys, so they should totally release Diddy Kong as a pet. Okay, so I'm, uh, I'm not going to that skull fort, but Blunder Outpost will be just underneath that uh, that arc, arch, archway, or whatever you want to call it. Very easy to, uh, to recognize. 
I mean, I should know at this point. I've only uh, I've only done this route like uh, probably a hundred times by now. But this is always, for whatever reason, the uh, heading down from Sanctuary and uh, Golden Sands down to Plunder Outpost. I always miss this turn off. Almost uh, sailed off into the Red Sea one time. Sailed off into the Red Sea to join Kanye. Kanye West is out there sitting on a piece of uh, piece of wood, just like that lady from uh, the Titanic movie. He's out there lamenting his lost career. Getting some good luck with the wind. Oh, we got another sloop. Another sloopy doop straight ahead. It's not at uh, Ancient uh, or uh, Plunder Outpost, rather, so it should all be good. I'm just going to take a risk on it. He's off doing his own voyage there, so. It's one of the, ah, uh, oh, we got another sloop in the port of Blunder Outpost I spoke too soon here. Wrapped. It's one of the, uh, the number one things, right, is it's like, it's kind of easy to figure out who's going to be, uh, who's going to be hostile and who's not. If somebody's busy hanging out at an island, doing a voyage, they're probably not going to come out after you because they're doing some PvE stuff and they got their own loot to worry about anyways, so... Mostly the ships that are already sailing around. That don't really look like they're up to anything. Like they don't have any purpose to their heading. Are usually the ones I'm a little more uh, a little more wary of. Oh, looks like he uh, looks like he scuttled. Again, a little good luck here. Did he? I see a mast. Nope, he's still there. He's still there and he's coming right for us. All right. Just going to uh, sail down south a bit. Sail around south, then loop around. See if he's going to uh, change heading, chase after me. And if he does, I'll uh, get to show off some tricks with the blunder bombs, I suppose. name on that ship could be a rental. Another thing is, of course, you know, if someone does chase you and you see a ship like that uh, just parked at an island, sometimes you can just, uh, you can just sail past them. Train the aggressive ship onto the island ship. Okay, so this guy's now changed headings himself and looks like he's coming. Uh, either coming to cut me off or he's sailing away. I can't tell at this distance. Looks by the curve of the sail. <laughs> it's so funny because it's like one of those optical illusions, right? Are you looking at the inside of the globe or the outside of the globe? Go like this and it changes. Or uh, that one with the ballerina that spins around in circles, depending on uh, depending on what you think, she either spins uh, clockwise or counterclockwise. You can't literally can't tell the difference. That one's so trippy. I recommend looking that one up if you're an optical illusion spinning ballerina one. Looks like he's coming closer, just judging by the uh, increase in the size of uh, his ship, though. There's another uh, another ship out there that could be a sloop. Yeah, there's that skelly sloop I wanted. I don't know what that guy's doing still. I'm gonna just hang out here where I can see him. Just see if he's sailing over here, if he's uh, stopped in the water there. He might just be fishing or possibly fighting a megalodon. Not sure. Looks like he's got white lamps, though. 
I don't know if that could just be a fog effect. I generally tend to find people with colored lamps to be uh, to be more aggressive. Because, uh, you know, it does take the time to get the lamps, and then if you're willing to uh, get them and put them on, I feel like you're probably a player who's not afraid to get sunk to lose them. So, so really, to me, the only reason to, uh, to get colored lamps would be to, uh, to intimidate others. Looks like he's not moving, though, so... And I, I can't honestly even tell if those are colored lamps. It could just be because of the, uh, the faint mist covering there. So I'm just going to go about my business here. Just pretend he doesn't exist. Looks to me like he's got his sails down and his anchor down, so... Okay, plunder. Getting rid of these gemstones. That's a good place to get a little honey. Doesn't get much better than that. Of course, if you do think you're in uh, imminent danger, raising the anchor is probably uh, a wise thing to do. Raise the sails, raise the anchor. That way, you're ready to go. I've been leaving my uh, my anchor down, doing a lot of these though, just because uh, when you are loading and unloading commodities, what'll happen is the waves will tend to push your ship side to side, forward and backwards. Sometimes it uh, pushes it too far out and then you aren't able to load properly, so if I'm not in any immediate danger, I do leave that anchor down. Or sometimes what I'll do is I'll leave it down, and then I'll, uh, I'll raise it before the end there. Count my coins. Take your time. No hurry. Probably not going to get port blasted. You never know, though. Out here on the crazy Sea of Thieves. Visit okay. Again, if you dare. Well, you know I'll be back. Ah, uh, gemstones. It's way too early for me to be, uh... Getting streamer brain already. This uh, port always sketches me out a bit because of this blind corner, right? Um, I've got a, uh, a highlight there up on the Twitch channel. A crew full of uh, rank 5 Reapers came around that blind island just as I was uh, sailing out that blind corner there. And if I would have left like 10 seconds later, well, not even 10 seconds, 3 seconds later, I probably would have been uh, completely toast. Got away by the absolute uh, skin of my neck, the seat of my pants, you know. It was a close shave. <laughs> All those metaphors apply. But I got away. I actually got away from them. It's pretty crazy stuff. Of course, uh, I ended up getting kicked later that street. <laughs> That was still when I had my prox chat turned on, so uh, I didn't realize, but even them coming around the corner, as I was leaving here, they could hear me. So uh, most people, when they find out that I'm streaming, they, uh, they sneak around and then they uh, they try some shenanigans, which is appreciated, because, you know, it makes for good footage and all that. But I didn't realize uh, having my prox chat on could be uh, heard from so far away. So what those guys actually did is they dropped the... Uh, they dropped the level 5 reaper flag so I couldn't see him anymore and then they ended up uh, pulling in a robo when I was a dagger tooth sitting in the toaster there. They blasted me. It's good times. Good times, good times. I wasn't even angry. Because you know, 
I've been having uh, really, really good luck with these runs, so. More coin than I uh, really actually know what to do with. I guess once I get uh, eight and a half million up again, I am going to buy the, uh, the Dark Adventurer hull set. Then I'll have the, the sails and the hull paint. And we'll get to have some fun sailing around with that, seeing how people uh, people react. I've heard that uh, if you have the Dark Adventure sails, like they're eight and a half mil, when you have them equipped sailing around on the PC servers, um, it's it's a different effect than when you sail around on the Xbox servers. People on the Xbox servers they tended to avoid me, uh, but I think on the PC servers, I've heard that people see it as a challenge. Uh, I don't know. We'll have to see. We'll have to see. I did have them equipped for a couple of runs there on the Xbox server, so I mean, if I wanted to have a balanced data set there, it might make sense for me to equip them next stream for the last uh, four streams or three streams there. But we'll see how I feel. Once something is uh, working so well, I kind of have a hard time uh, mixing it up. Just sailing around with these flat blacks, I mean, uh, it's been so, so calm so successful that I don't know if I want to uh, throw those Dark Adventure sails on. When I had them on the Xbox servers, it was hard for me to take them off because they were working so well, but I had that run 9 where I just, I wasn't paying attention to anything at all and I ended up getting port blasted because I just got way too confident with those sails. I mean, I had a brig with Reaper, uh, Reaper sails, no emissary pop, but they had uh, the PvP Reaper sails on. And they hid behind uh, a rock waiting for me to uh, finish my commodity loading before they sailed into port. So I think that probably had something to do with the Dark Adventurer sails. They just decided to, uh, to give me my space. I've also heard too that people, uh, really sweaty PvP types, they'll, uh, they'll pop a merchant emissary flag just to hide behind it so you think it's just... Uh, just a little, little humble toga merchant like myself when actually it's a crew full of the sweatiest PvPers ever. So I think that combined with the Dark Adventure sales ended up uh, ended up getting that effect from people. But uh, I need to take more data to know if it was just a coincidence or actually something that the Dark Adventure sales do. But I will have to say that I, I noticed a difference almost immediately. It was uh, pretty funny. So. It's one of the things I always like about playing these uh, multiplayer games. Whether they're competitive or otherwise. Um, just dealing with other people and seeing the, uh, the different uh, psychology of the situations you end up in and, and people's me. reactions to, to your different Anytime. tactics and cosmetics and whatnot. It's, it's absolutely hilarious. Like I've said uh, before on the stream, I mean, yeah, I just sail around and I just uh, have been doing these commodities, but I wouldn't play this game if there wasn't any PvP in it and if it wasn't online. I don't think that uh, there would really be any point in just sailing these boxes from uh, port to port. But just because, you know, there's a chance that somebody might come up and try to uh, try to steal my loot, blast some cannonballs into the, the side of my ship, it just uh, it makes it all uh, makes it all exciting, makes it all come together. Chance of the unknown gives me just that little bit of adrenaline. Keeps me going for the whole five hours. So we are now leaving Plunder Outpost, sailing on east into Ancient Spire. One and a half hours into our journey. Talking about player psychology, man. I saw somebody playing that uh, eco game on the front page of Twitch there. I've, uh, I've got it on Steam, but they keep releasing updates to it that make it run uh, worse and worse and worse, and so it doesn't run on my PC anymore. It never really ran that well, but I still played about 150 hours of it anyways when I could there. And that's a funny game because uh, there's no combat. It's just uh, an economic game. Ooh, that's a real brig parked at an island that I didn't even notice. So, you know, oops. Should have been more aware there, but it's all good. It's all good. Um, 
talk about this eco game, man. Holy, was it ever funny. Because it's, uh, it's a simulated economy where everybody gets like a certain, you pick a certain skill set, like a, like a mason or a carpenter or, uh, you know, whatever. A metal worker. And then you, uh, you mine resources like Minecraft and then you have to build this society, right? And I would always, uh, mass produce everything I made and I just power game and set up all my logistics. I'd have eight wheelbarrows going. I'd be, like, building massive bridges and tunnels and everything and, like... Yeah, people didn't like me. It was like, it was really quite like, I kind of like, I don't know, you kind of expect that. Uh, but like, I didn't expect it to the degree I ran into it. It's hilarious. Because it's a game that like, I thought it was like, uh, since since there's no combat, it's just like a cooperative sort of thing, right? So you think that it's like, hey, let's build like the best, the best society we can. So I'm selling, uh, I'd always be a stonemason. And I'd be like, you know, we need lots of walls, we can build towers, we can build palaces, we can live in uh, massive, uh, massive castles, man. And I'll sell you these, uh, these bricks and these uh, stone walls for super cheap. And then, like, nobody would come and buy my goods just because, like, they'd see my stacks and stacks and stacks of goods for sale. And they'd just be like, yeah, forget this guy. It was like they thought I was Donald Trump or something, because I'd, I'd always live in a big tower, right? And I guess that's in bad taste. It is also, of course, a game with a simulated uh, ecology, um, an ecosystem there with all the animals and whatnot. So, like, a lot of people, uh, they don't really want to uh, to pave the world the way that I was uh, I was inclined to support. I mean, you know, you, you can own property. I never made any changes to uh, any land that wasn't owned by me, so it was my right. But, uh, you know, you got to get rid of some jungle if you're going to dig up the, the uh, materials needed. You needed slate. It only came from jungles. But, you know, the jungles are they're just, a, they're just a mess anyways, man. It's, uh, you could barely walk through them in that game unless you clear out all the brush and everything. So it's not like people were going on nature walks. But, but yeah, man, playing against, uh, playing against other people in that game is hilarious. Because, like, like, I'm... Like I'm saying, it's like supposed to be a cooperative game, but make no mistake, you're playing against other people. Everybody wants to be, uh, everybody wants to be something. I don't know. I don't know if people were, uh, if they didn't like, they didn't like the fact that I was uh, making so many goods and living in a tower because, uh, because they thought I was over industrious and, and somehow destroying the planet even though when you're making uh, you're making stone walls in that game it doesn't cause pollution it's only when you start running uh, smelters and metalworking that can cause the uh, simulated global warming and raise the sea level it's hilarious but I was never that guy I never made metal uh, metal products and stuff so you can't really fault me for just uh, building a big stone quarry especially when you know you quarry underground so it's not like you can uh, see a big open pit mine or anything I mean, my my slate mine was uh, kind of ugly, but hey, these walls got to come from somewhere, right? But yeah, any server I played on, I just got I got like no support, man, and I just kept trying to advertise my goods and blah blah blah. And like, yeah, I undercut everybody else's prices, but the whole thing is I'm scared by my own shadow there. The whole thing is uh, the 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 amount of money that people were charging for their bricks and their stone walls, it was like absolutely absurd because you need space to build these workshops and you need tier one and tier two walls and, and whatnot. And it was like at the price that these other people were charging, it was like, dude, no one was ever gonna live in anything more than a shack. So like, you know, I, I would uh, price my goods at, at what they were, not to undercut everybody, but it was just because that's what they were worth to me, man. Because it's the whole thing about economics of scale. When you uh, mass produce something, whether in real life or in a video game, then the amount of uh, effort that it takes you to produce a single one of those uh, objects is drastically reduced. That's just the way it goes, because the more efficient you are, then uh, the lower the production cost of your goods are. So, you know, instead of making uh, 10 bricks and putting them up for sale, I'd make 1,000 bricks. Like I said, I'd have, uh, I'd have eight wheelbarrows going. So instead of uh, instead of mining stone, putting them in one wheelbarrow, 
and then uh, transferring that one wheelbarrow's worth of stone to the mason table and starting production, I'd have eight wheelbarrows. So I just sit there, I'd fill all eight, transfer all eight into eight tables, and I'd eight, have eight tables going, and then have the output of the eight tables go directly into eight stockpiles. And so, uh, so that way you know, I thought I could have made walls for everybody, but no. Then of course the server admins, they always try to put in some sort of a welfare state with universal basic income and they mess up the whole economy because they have like no understanding of the actual prices of anything that people are naturally trading at and stuff. So it's just like, uh, yeah, most of the servers I played on, uh, they, they fell apart quite quickly. But it's even then, it's just, it's such an entertaining game for that reason, just to see the, the absolute economic disaster unfold definitely a game I want to uh, I want to play some more in the future I haven't played it in uh, two or three years actually but uh, it's one of those early access games where they've just been developing it um, non-stop haven't given up on it which is uh, which is really great I'm happy about that they have released uh, some patches here they keep saying they're trying to improve the frame rates and the load times and the, the uh, memory requirements and everything but Last time I booted up, it uh, it still didn't it still didn't run since the the one patch they released that was supposed to their first performance patch they ever released it made the game unplayable on my computer it no longer ran on it. I was like, oh okay, thanks guys. But I'm sure uh, I'm sure if they keep uh, they keep patching it, eventually it'll be it'll be playable or I'll upgrade my rig here. We'll see. So we're uh, pulling into Ancient Spire. Going to be selling my silks. Buying up everything once again. Coast looks clear. How nice to see Horizon looks clear. Another sunny day in the Sea of Thieves. Probably nothing to worry about out there. Mildred's quick on the coin counting. I think she might have taken my advice. Got herself a, a coin counting machine. Maybe an abacus. I'm not sure how an abacus would help, but... I just, uh, I just deliver the crates, man. I just pick them up, I move them. All this science and math and technology I don't understand, you know? I'm just the monkey who moves the boxes. Take Thank care. you very much, Mildred. Alright. Double check my audio sync here once again. recognizing it as a known issue even though uh, everybody who streams to Twitch off an Xbox has that problem doesn't matter if you're on a Xbox One or a Series X it, uh, it's a problem with both of them and streaming to uh, any other service it doesn't happen what will happen is uh, the audio from the microphone ends up getting a, a massive delay and, uh, it runs out of sync with the, uh, the video Four crates of silk I could sell here. I'm gonna hold on to them instead though and just load up. I'll sell them the second uh, second loop around because I'm not quite a level five emissary. So uh, if I can raise that emissary up a little bit, it'll give me a bit more money on the bottom line. I know I'm not gonna reach uh, 498,000. I would hope to uh, break more than 400k. I would also like to keep this to a uh, five and a half hour run instead of a seven and a half hour, seven and a half hour. So. We'll see. We'll see how it goes. I always just get uh, like way too into it. There was a skeleton sloop out there. I think it was down to the south. I could go hit that for a little bit of extra loot. But there is also usually some uh, some megalodons swimming around over in uh, the Devil's Roar. There almost always, 
almost always run into them. I could, of course, buy more supply crates here. It doesn't really raise the uh, flag much at this point, but every little bit does help. I'm, uh, I'm not going to, though, because uh, the supply crates do actually raise my end total uh, by more by more than uh, they should, because I actually uh, actually make a loss on them. But it counts the full sale. Like that end total doesn't actually cost, uh, doesn't actually incorporate the cost. It's only the the revenue. It's not the profit earned from my journey. So, so uh, you know, I'm actually uh, guilty of fraudulent bookkeeping here. Don't tell the pirate IRS; they might come after me. But it is something that I do talk about. It's not a total secret. So on a on a 495,000 uh, coin run, I think maybe 50 50k of that is probably uh, probably cost. If you can shave 50k off. I mean, I still make well over 400k profit, but I've never actually stopped to uh, to calculate the cost of these uh, these commodities as I buy them as well, and also the cost of. Uh, these supplies. I know that uh, on three of these supplies, like I'll lose uh, 7,500. But they're still worth buying because uh, raising that flag up those first three levels as quickly as I do adds uh, easily an extra 100,000 to my end total. So losing uh, 15k or even 25k or whatever from buying three sets of it. Still worth it in the end. Good old blurry gemstones. All right, that's that. I was going to do a uh, completely fraudulent bookkeeping episode. This probably won't be the one, though. If I bought and sold those supply crates at every port that I stopped into, uh, 14 ports, when I sell them, I make uh, 7,500. So, uh, you know, doing the math on that, that's over 100,000 on my bottom line, but... It's fraudulent because uh, because I'm actually losing money on them. So like, yeah, my my bottom line goes up at the end in the captain's log, but uh, I'm actually making less money per run if I were to do that. It would make for a funny title, though. It would make for a funny episode, the fraudulent bookkeeping episode. And then like, you know, I'd probably end up making like 560,000 on the end total, and I'd be like, yeah. How about that? How about them numbers? That's another galleon, another skelly galleon, another skelly galleon. Oh well, we're now leaving Ancient Spire, sailing out east to Moro's Peak. Making decent time. First time in a few streams here. Coming in at an hour and 45 minutes. Should be able to get the first loop done in uh, two and a half hours, which is uh, regular. And then have the whole thing wrapped up by uh, five hours and 15 minutes. Won't be a record breaker, but but uh, when I can't pronounce the words at the uh, the start of the stream properly, that's usually a sign that I need to uh, to get a little more sleep at night. Can all be book breakers, you know. As I look around for uh, <laughs> for a skelly sloop or something to run my numbers up, I think tomorrow, depending on what port I spawn in, um, I started at uh, Dagger's Tooth this time. It's better if I, I spawn in a plunder. Uh, depending on what port I spawn in, I might uh, I might try another record breaker tomorrow night. I still want to beat 500,000, but. Uh, like I was saying, if it's going to be a seven and a half hour stream, breaking 500,000 is almost kind of a 
kind of a pointless thing anyways because I might as well just do a 21 port run instead of a 14 port run. And I'd probably break 500,000 in less time, so. Incorporating all these extra cargo runs and whatever has been fun. It adds a little bit of variety to the journey, but when it really comes to making money uh, in this game, I think it's all about the amount of money per time. You know, you want to make the most coin in the shortest amount of time possible for it to be an impressive, uh, worthwhile endeavor. Because, I mean, in seven and a half hours to break 500k, I mean, somebody could probably just do... Uh, could even just do treasure vaults and you could probably make that kind of money in the same time. Couldn't do them solo on a sloop, that's for sure, but... But usually these, uh, you know, these runs make me 360, uh, 360,000 is probably about regular for like a five and a half hour run, so, you know, you add an extra two hours onto it, but you only make an extra 100k. I've kind of crunched the numbers on that, and it seems like it doesn't really make sense to do. But, uh, like I was saying, the variety is nice. I don't know what uh, what ended up making that stream last night uh, be the longest stream yet, but... I think just the time it takes even to, uh, to hit those megalodons when they come up, instead of just sailing past them and even trying to sink those skeleton sloops, it all adds up in the end. I did the uh, one cargo run out of Moro's Peak, and I did those two cargo runs out of uh, out of the lost, uh, not the lost, the shores of plenty there. But um, but I wouldn't have thought that would have added two hours onto my journey, especially considering that the stream before I did almost the same amount, and I got chased around by a brig for 20 minutes, and that was a shorter stream. So I guess it. Uh, you know, depends on the wind a little bit as well. Speaking of which, looks like I can uh, hit a bit of a crosswind here, shave a little time. Wind does make a big difference if you can uh, hit those two, hit those two wind streams going uh, north to south and south to north on the edges. Those are the two longest uh, parts of the run there. You can uh, circle around in five in-game days, otherwise uh, it takes about an average of eight. You uh, really get a speed boost when you hit one of these crosswinds, I'll tell you. Even downwind as opposed to upwind, that's a massive difference. Peak. This is my absolute favorite port, as I've talked about before. It's got sentimental value because I used to, uh, I used to do a lot of uh, cargo runs over here for the Devil's Roar because they make twice as much money. All loot is double over here. You have to deal with the volcanoes and the geysers and whatnot, so it's a little more hectic. But uh, when the loot is double, I feel like it's absolutely worth it. You also tend to run into uh, less ships, so less ships usually means less PvP. But I do also find that uh, sometimes um, when people do sail over here, they're uh, sailing over here uh, to look for targets. So, so just in my history dealing with the place, you gotta keep a lookout. So I do recommend you always keep an eye on the horizon anyways, Devil's Roar or not. The number one thing is, you know, is you just don't want to get caught uh, with your sail up and your anchor down when somebody rolls in to shoot you. You want to make sure that uh, you can at least get out there onto the uh, open Welcome water. To the Merchant Alliance. So you can either get into uh, your evasive maneuvering or... Um, or get uh, a fair fight, if that's what you decide to do and stand your ground. But if someone's already maneuvering into position before you can even get the anchor up, 
and your sails down to uh, get moving, then you're not going to have a very good time at the start of that fight, that's for sure. Jeez, man, you know, I really hope this, uh, I really hope this Memphis thing doesn't eat up all the news for two weeks. I mean, it's a horrible thing. It's a horrible thing, but it's like, it, just the way the news works, you know, it's if they get a, a big enough story, then it's just like, I don't want to repeat a 2012. Keep turning the wheels of commerce. I guess I'll just have to start, uh, I'll just have to start really digging through, man. Digging through the news. Five crates of tea. Hmm. I'll hold on to those as well. Gotta find something to get that emissary out, though. Hmm. It's funny, I thought I heard somebody, uh, I thought I heard somebody draw a pistol. <laughs> At least I've got my proximity chat turned off now. That was the biggest thing before. Did not realize how far that would broadcast. Absolutely ridiculous. Silks, silks, silks. Who's getting the toga party this time? Ancient Spire? Oh uh, yeah, that's right, I was just there. Didn't sell them. I'm gonna be packing a lot of uh, a lot of cloth by the time I get back there again. If I get back there, I mean, you just really never know how these are gonna go, but... Starting to reach that stride again where it's been, uh, it's been so long since I've run into any serious problems. I'm starting to believe that uh, I'm completely invincible. There's absolutely nothing that could stop me from delivering these commodities. But it's usually about the time when I start to get that feeling that crap hits the fan, so. Well, we'll see how it goes. I think I am going to, uh, to pull a cargo run out of here, though. That's my better judgment. I've been talking about how, oh, it's not worth it, it's not worth it, blah, blah, blah. blah. This will see if I can get lucky with one. one day. Sometimes, uh, sometimes they sail back, but usually, uh, usually with the these, what'll lines. happen is, uh, you Devil's pick them up watching. quite close and then you have this to sail them, uh, up town. north. One day. Huh. Get going! Okay. We have an empire to build. You bet, lady, you bet. An empire built on, uh, 15 crates of sugar and, uh, 110 togas every five days. Seven from Brian's Bazaar. I think that's up north, though. Yeah, Brian's is up north here. Yeah, I'm gonna cancel that one. They'll definitely have me sailing that one uh, back down south, so forget about it. If I can get one nearby, I'll do it. If I can't, I can't. Whatever. Can't all be record breakers, man. Okay, what do we got? Eight from Burning Tony. I'll absolutely do that. Eight is uh, eight's the most you can get anyway, so. So here we go. Hopefully, uh, hopefully they're going somewhere on the way. I'll check the date on them as well. But I think usually those have to be delivered within uh, six days or so, uh, which is uh, you know a decent amount of time with each day being 24 minutes long. But at the same time, 
usually takes me eight days to do a full loop. So if I gotta send them over to Ancient Spire or something, then I'll just have to uh, sail back over there and drop them off. But with any luck, they should be going to uh, maybe Kraken's Fall or Fetcher's Rest, which is on the way. So I might get lucky. Go down and cook some more chicken while I'm at it. Pork chops. Perfect. It's always so peaceful over here. I mean, besides the volcanoes and the geysers and all that uh, stuff trying to kill you. When it comes to other ships, you know, I used to uh, just run cargo over here for just hours and hours and hours and hours and you wouldn't see a person for like weeks. But then, uh, like I said, generally the way it works is uh, when someone does come over here and sail through, they're just sailing through looking for people to sink. So. so you uh, you do have to stay on your toes. But it's so funny to me now, man, thinking about all those times that somebody came out over here. Uh, they managed to uh, they managed to sink me, or I sailed off into the Red Sea, or whatever. I'd be running from these people, and I'd have no idea what to do. And now, uh, now I've got all these evasive maneuvers I've come up with, just from uh, oh, there he is. There's our boy. Told you they're always hanging out over here in Moro's Peak. I don't know what the deal is, why there's always me always megalodons over here, but it's almost always. That's an old. Uh, that's a green boy too. I think that's a rank three or something. Three out of five. I can check it, but whatever. Makes a make to me. It's never the shrouded ghost, anyways. That's what we're all waiting for. Two. Shot there, take a little off the back. Take your time, take your time, Mr. Fish. I guess he's uh, a little tuckered up from all those cannonballs. That's seven. This should be it. It's 12. Yeah, okay, there we go. 12 shots. That's what I heard. That's what the truth be. 12 shots of Megalodon. Just a big old fish, man. Ain't nothing but a big old fish. Sorry, didn't uh, didn't raise it all the way, but the extra loot will be nice. <laughs> Poor guy. It's better than getting stuck at Sea World, though. Am I right?
Look at all that shiny garbage. I mean, if anything, uh, you know, it's that Megalodon's fault for uh, eating so much treasure all the time. Easy there on the stairs. Staff of uh, uselessness here. One of these days I'll make one of those Staff of Dark Tides work for me. They didn't take so long to charge up. They'd be a lot uh, lot more useful in PvP on deck, but I think the, the trick to using them is it's, uh, it's a good way to soften people up before you board. If you just uh, you shoot one of those right on the deck. And that way... Uh, I had one of these last stream. I don't remember selling it at the end. I definitely checked all the spots, so I probably did. But anyways, that staff of dark tides. I think the thing is, is you just uh, you hit him with a couple of those before you board, and then that way everybody's health is a little bit lower. That got hit by the splash damage of it. Like that's my uh, my thinking when it comes to the strategy with those at some point, some later point. Here. Alright, onward, east, back to Ruby's Fall. See your good friend Burn and Tony, who is uh, it's always burning. Of course, we got smoke coming out of the volcano, so uh, I gotta wait this out. It's the one thing about the uh, the Devil's Roar when these volcanoes go out, you do have to wait them. I could take a chance, but the whole thing is, of course, uh, it's not just the fireballs that rain down on you, it's the fact that the water uh, becomes boiling hot as well. So you can't really swim to and from your ship without getting burnt up. So it's worth it to, uh, to just chill. Just chill out here. Let's see if I uh, bought grubs. Did I buy grubs? Didn't buy grubs. Okay. Whatever, I don't need grubs. Just catch a splash tail or something all the time here. Talk about Bigfoot some more. I think uh, maybe I've uh, talked about Bigfoot enough, though. Maybe we've, uh, absolutely, absolutely tapped out that topic. I mean, what else is there to to say about Bigfoot except that uh, you know he 100% absolutely exists, absolutely real. You know, I'm not going to admit to uh, being a Bigfoot myself. I think that would be unwise if I uh, was a Bigfoot away so uh, so readily kind of goes against the creed of the Bigfoot which is to uh, you know just remain mysterious just confuse people for uh, all of human history a lot of people misunderstand the Bigfoot they think that it's about uh, it's about staying hidden for safety reasons but it's actually uh, it's actually just to uh, make people look stupid. Every once in a while a Bigfoot will just come out, reveal himself in the lightest way possible. At a distance, uh, you know, no closer than a hundred yards. It's in the uh, Bigfoot manual. Which, uh, there is no English translation of that, so you'll have to take my word for it. You do have to speak Bigfoot to know the ways of the Bigfoot. But uh, I do have a copy of that manual say how I got a hold of it. I do have a copy and and the creed of the Bigfoot is to uh, to confuse and embarrass uh, humanity throughout the years. You know? Be an ape. Be a person in a suit. Be something else. A mystical, uh, mystical being. Time traveling. Through interdimensional portals. What does a Bigfoot eat? What is a Bigfoot, uh, what's Bigfoot cuisine? You know, we've never seen the remains of a meal from a Bigfoot. But it's a 
good question. I think it's worth asking. One would assume that the Bigfoot would likely be a vegetarian. Seems like a gentle spirit. Never attacked anybody, never done any harm. But, uh, you know, most primates are carnivorous. So one could also assume that the Bigfoot uh, would be perfectly capable of hunting animals. Perhaps with a spear or uh, even a, a laser rifle of some sort, depending on the, uh, the technological level of these Bigfoots. Really not sure at all. That was a nice volley of fireballs, by the way. Hats off. <laughs> hey, look, an old hat. Speaking of hats off, look at this. A little gift uh, from our friends, uh, the Atlantean Bigfoots that live underwater in the oceans. Beautiful. Can I can I do something with this? This is the, my most prized possession. I've I've never gotten one of these. I did not even know that that was possible. What did they sell for? Perfect. An old hat. Everybody needs an old hat with barnacles on it. It's perfect. You can uh, cut a cut a lemon or an orange in half there and just. Uh, orange juice on the barnacles have a little bit of extra brine in it you know it's all good it's all good of course you would get a lot of the juice on the hat but that's why it's made of leather it's part of what makes it old it wouldn't be an old hat if it didn't have orange juice stains on it of course if you made uh, a lemonade the uh, acidic content of the lemon help wash away and clean some of the orange juice. I learned that from a Bigfoot, actually. Captain Doby says fishing junk like that is some of the rarest items in the game. I have, uh, I've never seen it before in the entire time playing. I've never seen fishing junk. This is the first time. Right after I said hats off, fish up an old hat. There you go. I think Bigfoots wear hats. I think Bigfoots probably wear hats. There's no illustrations of uh, Bigfoot attire in the manual, but it does mention that uh, one of the things as a Bigfoot, uh, before exposing yourself to humanity, you're supposed to uh, completely disrobe before walking uh, through the forest. So I can assume from uh, that passage that, of course, uh, Bigfoots do have clothing. My guess is uh, they probably wear Yeezys. Just seems like something a Bigfoot would wear. Don't ask me why. It's just an intuitive thing. Captain Doby says all the commendation hunters on the server would come after you for that hat. Do I have to sell it? Do I have to sell it somewhere to get the commendation or what? I guess I should probably do that like immediately if that's the case. Go over to uh, the trade post or something. Beautiful. Beautiful old hat, you know. Captain Doby says hunters call people on sea. Ports. Yeah, okay. I'll go sell it uh, right after I pick up these goods then. Uh, I said I wasn't going to do this, and now I'm doing it. I'm doing a, I'm doing a goods run. If these goods aren't going to somewhere uh, on the way, then I'm just going to gonna biff them. They're just going to Ancient Isles. Forget about it. I don't think this is going to break uh, 500k anyways because of the... Uh, because of the whole fact that like I didn't run into anything at the start to get uh, the flag up, but... I also didn't really do that last time either, and it came out to 495, so... It's funny, man. Last night's stream, there was two two situations where I was... Uh, one where I was fighting a skeleton sloop, and then the other where I was fighting a megalodon, and they both went underwater, and if I would have gotten the loot from them, it would have broken 500k, but... Like I was saying earlier, um, if I'm going to do a 7.5 hour stream, I might as well just do 21 ports instead of 14, and then I'd probably break... Uh, probably break 5k from doing that so I don't know maybe on the uh, the 21st stream or something I'll do uh, I'll do a 21 port run see how much money I make from that ok 
Okay, Tony, where's it going? Ancient Spire Outpost. Uh, I said I wasn't going to do it. What's the date on them? It's the 17th. Oh, I'll get them on the next uh, the next pass around. Never mind. Ew. Ew. Captain Doby says likely seven hours is probably outside the spirit of the challenge. Yeah, it really is. It really is. Because, I mean, the whole thing is like I was saying. It's uh, I'm making a little bit of extra like money compared to uh, compared to the the 360k runs, but like in those two hours, uh, I should probably should have right in the water. In those two extra hours, it's like I could just do more ports instead, and I'd probably make more money uh, doing the commodities than doing all this extra stuff. But but I'm having fun, man. Can't stop me. Can't stop me from having fun. Call the fun police. I actually don't call the fun police because. Uh, because of uh, you know current events, etc., cetera, etc., cetera. I'm not gonna make a bad taste, a, a bad taste joke there. Keep the jokes in good taste. Oop! Launched. But I can definitely swing these by uh, Ancient Spire. Uh, on the next run around, man, because I got, who actually, what is it, 10, 11, okay, six days. Ah, okay, you know what, I'll run him over to Ancient Spire, but who do these go to? Just a shell. Yeah, I'll run him over to Ancient Spire, but this is, this is the last time. <laughs> this is the last time, man. I'm gonna swing over to Ancient Spire and the port's gonna be blocked. I'll just drink him. I'll just drink the rum, man. That's uh it's kinda close. I'm surprised the uh the geysers don't ruin the cloth. It's something that I always expect to happen. Because you think that like a whole uh a whole bunch of steaming hot water spitting up under them would ruin them, but it's not the case. I, of course, just, uh, you know, like having way too many goods on deck as well. Just all over the place. Makes it feel like a real merchant vessel. I just keep thinking, you know... I could break 500k. It would take me seven and a half hours again, but I could, uh, I could break it this run. Cause this is an eight piece. All I gotta do is I just gotta two, do the uh, the two uh, two emissary cargos, and then uh, do another one of these. Do another one of these devils uh, devils roar runs on the next loop around. Will I? I don't know. I feel like if I break 5k, then that's it. That'll be it, man. I'll just, like, uh, you know, go back to doing the old regular runs. But I just got, uh... I got bit by the high score. The high score bug, man. So, now leaving uh, Ruby's Fall, I'm gonna be sailing back over to uh, Ancient Spire. And then I'll head up north to Galleon's Grave and finish the first loop here. Still not really doing too bad on time. Uh, might not end up being a marathon seven hour run, but uh, time will tell with that. I guess it depends on whether I can hit some wind here. This looks pretty lucky. Good enough, good enough. Yeah, thinking about that, uh, 
Thinking about that Pelosi story and that body cam footage that came out yesterday, I was uh, reading about that again today, and uh, that guy was uh, Canadian. He's from Alberta, the, uh, the fellow there that uh, broke into the house. That just makes even less sense, man. I mean, I have a feeling, and this is totally just uh, absolute speculation coming from nowhere, but I feel like maybe maybe he's like distantly related to the Pelosi's somehow. Obviously, I think he is, uh, he's mentally disturbed. He's a crazy individual. It's pretty, uh, pretty nuts that he pleaded not guilty to the whole thing when it's like he's on camera doing literally all of the crime. So I don't know how he thinks he's going to, uh, to get away with a not guilty charge there. Be interesting to see if that works out for him, but... You know, you'd think as a as a crazy Canadian person. I mean, we've got uh, we've got them up here, absolutely. The uh, political extremists, um, especially like he's from Alberta. There there are a lot of them from Alberta. Um, I'm not throwing everybody from Alberta under the bus here. Great, great, uh, a great province, great bunch of people, et cetera, et cetera. But uh, you know, we've got those uh, the Freedom Convoy or whatever. Those dudes who all drove over to. Uh, Ontario during the uh, during the mandates, the mask mandates and stuff, and they honk their horn in Ottawa for like three months straight. So they're kind of like uh, they're kind of like the Canadian equivalent of I don't know what of the kind of people who would uh, break into to Nancy Pelosi's house. So so I would think if he was one of those people. Um, you think he would have went after uh, Trudeau or somebody because they uh, they all hate Trudeau, but but yeah, I don't know, I don't know, man. I just feel like there's more to that story. But for some reason, I just get like I just get a vibe. Um. I just get a vibe that, like, he knew the Pelosi somehow. Like, he's like, uh... Like, I want to say he's like a distant relative or something. Or whatever. Because it seemed like, uh... It seemed like when, uh, when they answered the door together there, it was like... Like, Paul didn't really want him to get in trouble, even though he was there causing an enormous amount of trouble, but... But it's also one of those things, you know, it's weird. It's, uh, it's a weird situation, because when somebody does break into your house, right? You kind of want to, like, especially if they are, like, mentally unstable. You want to, like, uh... You want to try to de-escalate the situation by acting calm. Kind of acting like you know them, so that, that could have been the case. He could have just been waiting for the uh, the police to act quicker than they did, so I don't know. It's just such a bizarre video, man. It's just so bizarre. It's so, like, just not what you'd expect from hearing that when that story was first recorded, right? Of, like, a home invasion and everything. And you're like, oh, okay. And then you see that body cam footage, and it's like, woo. But, you know, things uh, rarely ever go the way that people expect them to, so. That's that. Going through this storm, getting the old uh, ill-fated. Getting my old ill-fated storm hours up. It's always good. Love a good storm. Decent uh, visibility in this one. Still up for debate whether or not you could actually lose somebody in one of the storms. I think some of them have uh, better cloud cover than others. That's my experience, but one of those things where until you film it all, you really don't know. Oh, there she goes. Should be good, should just be a little hole, so we'll get that patched up when I'm out of the water here. 
find you the extra rain from the storm, maybe I should uh, take a look at that soon. I just don't want to lose my heading here. Ah! Ah, yeah, it's fine. Still see uh, Ancient Spire there in the distance, so we're good. The old Devil's Plants are getting a bit of water, so that's nice. That's nice. Big waves. I've seen bigger though. I think these storms definitely probably do have different grades, some are worse than others. I've seen some uh, some quite light ones, that's for sure. Visibility in this one is uh, that's a little worse, a little worse than the that one on run one that I tried to lose the guy through. But it is also nighttime as well, so I don't know uh, how much that has to do with it. Rocking two holes. All right. Yeah, put the water back in. That's what I wanted to do. Way to go, Hotwell. Not the direction I want to go in. Where's the eye of the storm? Mind? Perfect. Hopefully it, uh, oh, there's a brick. Guess I'll get to, uh, I'll get to see how good the cover of the storm is after all. I don't even know where that brick went, how about that? I think the thing about storms is, it's like, you know, you can't really see through them very well. But it's tough to lose somebody in them. They can, uh, they can see. They can see if they sail in after you. So. But I mean, there's been times, man, where I can't even see islands on the other side. It's patched up. Hopefully that brick doesn't come over to give me supplies. the other side of this wave, right? No, it's just on the other side of the island. I'm gonna risk it. Got his anchor down. I don't know what he's up to, but... Just gotta run some goods, man. That's it. I'm Kind of behind cover. Not perfectly, but they should be uh, quick in and out here. Just gotta run for Shelly, anyways. Come on, go, go, go! Yep. Did I not? Really? 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 I 100% dropped that anchor when I did, but sometimes, you know, you just get what you get with the anchor. Ah, oh, well, this still works. Don't sink the ship. <laughs> that would be embarrassing, right? What's a commodity stream without a little bit of reckless risking? Let's see, 
Can't see, can't see. Great, they're fresh. They smell like the ocean, just the way you like them. Right? That's why we're all out here, anyways. That fantastic briny smell. Just never goes away, permeates everything. Too many goods, get these goods off the ship. I hear a glug glug. Am I still, uh, oh yeah, that's right. I hit something. It's like, where's all this water coming from? Who left the tap on, man? Hate to see the rum go, but it's not for me. A little spicy, spicy rum. here. Yep, yep. Should be, uh, should be it. Right. Probably should have, uh, kept count or something. Where's my, uh, where's my lantern? Yep. Okay, that's good. Get out of here. See you later, Ancient Spire. Heading up north to uh, Galleon's Grave. I did start this run at Dagger Tooth, so uh, still actually making pretty good time here. Especially if I can hit some wind. Uh, as you can see, the Merchant's Luck has struck again. Heading directly into a headwind. That's all right. Just, uh, just more time for us to talk about Bigfoot. Which is a very important uh, subject. I don't think that, I don't think enough uh, North Americans take the time to consider. That's a ship right there, right? That's not a tower. That's a ship. It's got to be a ship. Yeah, that's a uh, looking like a galleon with its lamps on there. Guess I'll uh, sail around a bit to the east past it. That way I've got the headwind that I can work with. I do need to uh, do a little bit of evasive maneuvering. It does make me wonder uh, what percentage of my audience is comprised of Bigfoots. prolific watchers, both Twitch and YouTube videos. It's an easy way to keep up on the uh, current times, get a little action in without uh, risking being exposed within the 100 yard limit that the Bigfoot manual does, uh, does specify. Not sure uh, what would happen, what kind of uh, penalties a Bigfoot would suffer if it uh, went against the uh, went against the rules put forth in the Bigfoot manual. Penalties are not listed; they are in a separate manual, an edition which uh, I do not have a copy of. So it's, uh, it's tough to say. Tough to say. Coming a little bit close to this galleon here, if I'm going to keep my current heading, but. That's Skelly, Skelly Galleon over there. But uh, you know, I want to make uh, I want to make some good time here. Maybe what I can do is I can uh, sail a bit east, and then when I head northwest, I can catch this crosswind if I'm still still seeing it. 
We'll see, we'll see. We'll see what this galleon does. I'm giving it a 50 50. Doesn't look like anybody's on board, but there is a good chance they uh, will spot me if they're doing a voyage there. Spot me uh, from one of these cliffs or something. And we'll see what, uh, what they decide to get up to. Get this water out of my ship. I really want to uh, buy a new bed here. It's probably the next thing I'll pick up. Straighten that pick out. Bottles are fine. Always gotta have your cosmetics straight. You never know who you might need to be impressing. Next up, uh, murderous pirate. Murderous hobo pirate that jumps aboard. Trying to slash my throat. I wanna make sure that he knows I take good care of my ship. It's important. Alright, gonna head uh, straight north now, catch a little bit of wind. If I can uh, shave a little bit of time off this run, keep it below seven and a half hours. I was making uh, corrections at the start of this run. I uh, got a couple of facts wrong there yesterday. Uh, I have a uh, fourth correction I need to make. I said that there was uh, no reptilian aliens and that uh, there is no base on the moon. That, of course, is incorrect. Uh, there are, in fact, reptilian aliens and, uh, and, uh, and uh, uh, a quite sizable uh, population of them on the moon base. So. Uh, I'm a stickler for the truth on the stream. Thought I should just uh, be upfront about that. Got a direct complaint uh, from Reptilian High Command on that one, actually. They sent me a fax, if you can believe it. I still use uh, fax machines. The uh, fax technology uh, was actually originally gifted to this planet uh, by the Reptilians. We're quite proud of it. Um, even though, uh, you know, even though we might think it's out of date, uh, they just like uh, the ability to send a hard copy of paper documents uh, any time of day. Or night, or night, because uh, I think actually the real reason why they like using it is because every fax I've ever gotten from a reptilian alien has been uh, at 3 in the morning when I'm trying to sleep. It's like they just know. And they'll, uh, what they do is they uh, they fax you over uh, a bunch of blocks full of uh, black black nothing, so it wastes all the uh, wastes all the cartridges in the fax machine. Thanks a lot, Reptilian High Command. I love it when you do that. And after you get three pages of nonsense, um, you get the message right in the middle of the, the fourth page and then they'll send you a fifth page. I, to this day, have no idea what that fifth page is, but it's scaly and uh, I want to not, uh, I want to not be getting that picture anymore. Thank you very much. So, uh, if you're watching this moon-based reptilians, please grow up. Greatly appreciate that. But, uh, you know, haven't given that correction, I'm probably going to get another fax uh, this morning at 3.30 from him telling me uh, to ixnay on the uh, the reptilians. 
Uh, you know, because on the the one hand, they don't want to be known, and then you, you you say they don't exist, and then they they tell you that you need to tell people they exist. It's just unbelievable. Absolutely unbelievable. But you know, we should be grateful for their contribution of the fax machine. Uh, the fax machine, uh, trance music. If you've ever been to a rave before, that's uh, that's reptilian. You can thank them for that. Uh, the dimples on a golf ball, that's their technology. Very high tech. It's actually well above and beyond anything else given to us by any other extraterrestrial being. Those dimples on a golf ball, man. They got them on everything. They got them on clothes. They got them on hats. They got them on their vehicles. Everything, everything, literally everything is covered in those golf ball dimples. And they laugh at us because we only put them on a golf ball, right? The, uh, the golf ball was actually the uh, original technology they just used to... Uh, demonstrate the power of the dimples. But, uh... We're just too proud, we're just too classy, I think. Put those dimples on everything. We tried it out, but it's just too weird. It's too weird. Mythbusters actually did a, uh, uh, um, episode on that. They put, uh... a bunch of golf ball dimples on a car. And, uh... They thought they got 10% uh, better fuel mileage by their own uh, estimations. But then uh, what happened is Volkswagen actually tried it out. They sent them a letter and they said that they uh, they tried the dimple thing and they said that it was a, a negligible benefit and there was no point in, uh, in doing it. But it's interesting, the whole uh, dimples on a golf ball thing. I mean, the whole idea is that uh, what happens is air gets trapped in those dimples. So as the uh, golf ball moves forward, instead of uh, the wind resistance friction being primarily uh, air against golf ball, air against the plastic uh, surface of the ball, what happens is because the uh, dimples trap air around the ball, it ends up having uh, this pocket of air around the ball, and so it will fly further because it's uh, it's air against air. It's like it's uh, it's like slicked up. I'm not even making this part up. Uh, it's slicked up so that uh, so that there's less resistance. And I think probably what happened. I mean, if uh, Volkswagen decided to test it out in a wind tunnel instead of actually driving the car around. Interesting to speculate whether or not uh, those dimples would have any effect on a vehicle that was stationary in a wind tunnel, because the whole idea of the uh, that, the whole idea of the uh, dimples creating this pocket of wind around it as it uh, sails through the air or as the car drives along, I don't think that that would have as much of an effect on uh, a wind tunnel test for some reason. No, you'd think it would be the same thing. I feel like because the object itself isn't also moving through the wind, then it would have a less pronounceable effect. Even though that whole, uh, you know, special relativity or whatever says that it probably wouldn't make a difference. I don't think that Einstein was thinking about golf balls when he wrote that. Should have been, though. We could all do good to uh, think about golf balls more often. I'm thinking about them right now. Golf is actually, uh, it's a pretty good sport uh, in all seriousness. Uh, if you ever go golfing and you're really bad at it, uh, one of the things that I realized is that um, if you just use the weight of the club, like literally you lift the club up and you just like let it drop and you don't even swing, you just use like just the weight of the club dropping you can hit a golf ball 80 yards like it's pretty astonishing how far you can make that uh, that golf ball go just by not even putting any power into the swing at all so if you're somebody who really struggles at golf I mean like really struggles like I did try that out next time you go golfing
Step up and away, merchant vessel. I'll be back to finish Galleon's Grave at another time. I don't want a Galleon to put me in a grave at Galleon's Grave, man. They're probably just coming out to sell, though, so we'll see how that goes. I'll sail downwind the absolute uh, worst direction to sail. Sailing away from a Galleon. Band-Aid on the hall here. Guess I'll go uh, sail over to Daggertooth, maybe. Captain Toby says the Galleon has come for their dimpling. Yeah, the service I do provide, I'll dimple anything. I'll dimple anything, man. Just, uh, you know, call me up. Need dimples on your coat. Oh. Really? 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 They're coming, uh, they're coming for the sloop loot? Alright. <laughs> Let's see. Let's see what we got here. Uh, Shipwreck Bay? If I can get to Shipwreck Bay, that would be decent. Old Faithful, maybe? Kind of a different direction. No, oh, they turned. Now that they can't see me behind that rock, of course, I'm going to swing around, pull up north. And uh, at that point, they should uh, probably just forget I even exist. Most pirates have the memory of a goldfish. So, you know. Once you disappear, they forget you even existed. But uh, for real, you know, you need something dimpled. Just uh, send it to my uh, mailing address. There. Send it to the old P.O. box, and uh, I'll uh, dimple it with you. Dimple it for you, rather. I don't do uh, I don't do group dimplings. I don't do those anymore. I used to. Used to, uh, but it gets weird. Gets a little weird. Gets a little weird. I think a lot of people misunderstanding what a good uh, dimpling session is about. You know, it's just about increasing the uh, the aerodynamics, reducing the wind resistance of the uh, the object in question. Nothing more, nothing less. No weirdos, please. But uh, you know, nothing like a good dimpling to make you feel the uh, satisfaction. Job well done. I dimple cars, I dimple clothing, I'll dimple shoes, both the top, the leather, and the soles. Uh, no synthetic fabrics. Uh, blending, uh, blending the fabrics is fine, but it has to be uh, at least 50% uh, natural, natural uh, cotton or uh, cotton or otherwise. I'm not an expert in uh, textiles, but the whole thing about the dimpling procedure that uh, I can't be held responsible for what would happen if I were to dimple a uh, 100% nylon t-shirt. Um, it would just be reckless, reckless of me. I can't sign off on that kind of work. The uh, results would probably be, uh, probably be uh, uh, enormous, you know. You'd have practically no wind resistance whatsoever. As golf balls themselves are uh, are made of synthetic materials, but uh, I absolutely cannot condone a human being moving at the speeds that you would be moving if you sent me a synthetic material of clothing to dimple. So I, I no longer do that. Uh, there was a uh, a near accident. One of the recipients of my dimplings. I don't want to repeat that mistake again. So uh, please refrain sending me any uh, entirely synthetic material. At least uh, in regards to clothing, you know, obviously uh, if you need your vehicle dimpled, that's fine. But anything that you're going to be wearing on your person, I, I refuse to, uh, to dimple that entirely. Uh, if it's going to be made of synthetic materials. Dimpling cotton is fine. That'll uh, reduce your wind resistance a little bit, but it's a less extreme of an example. 
So, uh, so I still am willing to dimple cotton if that's the case. Contrary to uh, what some people have said, um, I do all my dimpling in house. I do not, uh, I do not export any of my dimpling procedures to uh, outsiders, terrestrial uh, or otherwise. Especially not uh, a reptilian, so if you do get uh, your article of clothing back and it smells like a uh, terrarium, like a, a reptile tank, that is a complete coincidence. It has absolutely nothing to do with uh, the dimpling procedure. Okay, so I've had some complaints about that, but I'm sure what's probably uh, probably going on there is your local UPS or uh, FedEx uh, or even the uh, local postal service. Doing the deliveries is uh, probably storing your packages uh, in, a, in a, big, uh, a big room full of reptiles. I know that's a standard procedure uh, for the local post office here in Canada because... Uh, a lot of foodstuffs will go through the post office, and what happens is they uh, they get a large rodent population uh, at the uh, at the old package warehouse there. Oh 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 oh! Should have club hauled it. Should have club hauled it. If only my ship had more dimples on it. I could have made that corner better than I did. Just goes to show you the performance of a smooth haul versus a dimpled haul. But as I was saying, uh, you know, here in the uh, packaging warehouses of Canada, it's very common for uh, a large number of uh, reptiles to be running around the floor at any given time. They uh, release them on purpose. Of course, with the uh, number of packages going through the warehouse, they don't always have time to, uh, to clean up after the reptiles, so that will, uh, that will explain the smell of the packages you send for dimpling. Just want to get that out of the way. I mean, I don't know how it is uh, in the United States, but uh, anything sent will have to go through a uh, Canadian depot, so it is going to smell like lizards when you get it. You might be uh, you might be asking me, well, Hogwell, I've sent things to Canada before and gotten them back, and they didn't smell like lizards. Well, you know, here's the thing about smell: is it's a very subjective thing. Okay, so. I don't want to. Uh, I don't want to be a jerk about it, but I might. Uh, I might be unable to put it any other way. Just smell it harder, okay? Just give it, give it a bigger whiff. I'll guarantee you, it's got some kind of uh, some kind of uh, reptilian stink to it. It usually does. So uh, you know, don't go accusing me of things that aren't happening. I am not outsourcing my dimpling to reptilians, terrestrial or otherwise. Okay. And they're all on the moon anyways. How am I supposed to, uh... How am I supposed to get to and from the moon? To outsource that kind of thing. You don't think that shipping to the moon is expensive? I mean, come on, give your head a shake. I don't think that that's the way that uh, that works at all. It's not like there's, uh, some sort of an underground railway system all over the, uh, United States there. Going to uh, various uh, teleportation facilities, allowing us to send uh, materials to the moon and back. That doesn't exist. Never even heard of that. I don't know where anybody would get that kind of an idea. It's absolutely not a real thing. And, uh, you know, if that underground railway system did exist, I'll tell you one thing, though. That train is dimpled, man. That train's got uh, ten times as many dimples as a golf ball. If it existed, but it doesn't. Okay, so uh, we're here at Galleon's Grave, my second favorite port. Um, selling minerals. It's a good thing that Galleon didn't have any dimples on it, or else it would have definitely caught up to me. I uh, I don't think they were uh, I don't think they were actually coming for me. I think they were just making a turn. I think that's probably what that looked like, but. You know, it's the thing about this game is that you never really know uh, who is hostile and who's not hostile until they're on your ship and you're throwing blunder bombs at them. 
Because I think probably what's going on, talking about people who think this game has a lot of, uh, a lot of thirsty, aggressive uh, pirates out there. Pirates with the old booty thirst. They just gotta get that booty, gotta get all that booty on their ship. Um, I think probably what's happening is people are, uh, are sailing excessively close to other ships and getting attacked. I thought about this last night. And then what happens, right, is you end up in that situation where you sail close to somebody and get attacked and then you tell yourself, oh, if they attacked me at that range, they'd probably attack me at any range, right? So that was definitely an unavoidable encounter, but... But I've found that uh, most people don't like chasing sloops all over the map. Us sloops, man. You ever try to uh, chase after a rabbit with a butterfly net? Yeah, me neither. I mean, of course not. That sounds absolutely absurd, right? We do that. But uh, if you if you did try it, I mean, that's that's pretty much the same feeling as uh, chasing after a sloop and a galleon. Chasing after a rabbit with a butterfly net. Did uh, you know that rabbits can kick so hard with their hind legs that they can break their own back? Yep, that's a fact. That's a rabbit fact. 100% rabbit fact. And uh, rabbits, uh, they don't even have any natural dimpling. Not like reptiles, man. Reptiles are covered in dimples. Never take a look at a Komodo dragon up close. Just really get in there, press your face against its skin. I recommend if you do try to do that to a Komodo Dragon, uh, pick a day where it's uh, less than 10 degrees Celsius at least. They're a lot slower. Then you can just get right in there, poke them in the belly, grab their tail, swing them around left and right if you want. Just, uh, you know, make sure the, uh, the moon is down as well. Because uh, there's... there's uh, there's certain uh, protective groups, certain protective groups that like to, uh, they like to observe things, man. But uh, they're still using telescopes. They put dimples on the telescope. Uh, it didn't do anything, okay? That's not the way the dimples work. But uh, you'll be getting a fax at three in, uh, 3 in the morning there if you're out there kicking Komodo dragons in the ribs. Well, the, the moon is up there in the sky, so I'm just saying. I'm just saying if that's something you want to go out and try. You got to wait for the moon to be down and the temperature to be low. Moto dragons are, of course, uh, cold-blooded individuals. So if you are going to keep one in your house, I recommend uh, running the air conditioning all the time. Non-stop. Even in the uh, the winter, you want to keep them cold, because otherwise they uh, they start to wake up and they start to ask you questions, questions that uh, that don't have any answer. Like how many dimples are there on a golf ball? I mean, now you're saying Hogwild. There's an answer to that. There's an answer. Okay. But do you think that I'm gonna go and I'm gonna count the dimples on a golf ball? No, I'm absolutely not. So, like, you know, philosophically speaking, that's a question that has absolutely no answer. Because if I'm unwilling to find the truth, then the truth just doesn't exist. Right? Yeah, I could go on the internet, and I could uh, look up how many uh, dimples are on a golf ball, and they'd give me a number. But does that really prove anything? I don't think so. I think that if you really want to be sure of something, you got to figure it out yourself, you know? And uh, you should probably double check that thing as many times as possible. That's why, uh, you know, anytime I'm out camping, I always shove my hand directly into the campfire. Every time. Because uh, that's the only way you're going to know the fire is hot. I do have to, uh, I do have to say, don't, uh, don't do that. Don't do that, kids. Don't hurt yourself. I'm obviously just joking. Uh, not about the, uh, the golf ball dimples, that's a real thing, but, uh, Don't shove your hand in the fire. Ask your parents. It's fire hot. And then, uh, you know, take it for face value. 
Unless, of course, your parents tell you the fire isn't hot. Then, uh, you know, maybe consider the, uh, the foster care system. Um, you know, like I said, I've uh, been friends with some foster kids. They turned out pretty good. The uh, system as a whole gets a lot of flack. But, um, you know, I think it works. I think it's better than nothing. Um, I know a kid who was raised entirely by wolves. He's an adult now. Um, it didn't do as well as uh, my friends in the foster system. So there you go. I think really it just compares to uh, what you're going to what you're going to compare to, right? I mean, yeah. If you got uh, two loving parents, or even three or four, or five or six or seven, that might not compare to, uh, to uh, I don't know, whatever you might get in some of these, uh, these foster homes. Which is unfair as well, because, I mean, you know, it's not that, uh, it's not that people, uh, the foster parents are uncaring unloving or less loving I think uh, it's just uh, you know I don't know how many kids go through there some of those houses they got like five kids man so it's just kind of what uh, what you get there what you get but seriously kids listen to your parents eat your fruit eat your vegetables speaking of fruit and vegetables I'm gonna get rid of these cannonball crates I'm gonna get rid of these fruit crates I'm gonna get rid of these wood crates Don't need these anymore. This is just hobo bait. Someone's gonna sail by in a uh, gonna sail by in a galleon and spot my bananas, and they're just gonna try to steal them. Best loot in the game for most players, you know. Fruit crates. They're all bananas too. Jeez. I shouldn't laugh, not everybody can be uh, as well off as a merchant captain eating nothing but pork chops day after day after day. But, uh, you know, come on, bananas. Come on, you guys, come on. I feel like if you're uh, out here on the seas and you're eating bananas, uh, you're, you're doing something wrong. Podcast. Unbelievable. Just, uh, you know, go find a pig, go find a chicken. Put it on the grill. You're going to thank me later. When uh, you're in the middle of that PvP fight and you catch a cannonball in the teeth. That chicken, uh, chicken's going to save your life. You know? And I mean that uh, if you cook it. It's going to save your life if you cook it. Uh, I don't recommend giving the chicken a blunderbuss. I've tried that before. Uh, had a bit of a mutiny situation. Lost a ship. It's not that they are uh, unskilled. Or even, uh, you know, you'd assume a chicken would be, uh, would be cowardly. Cowardly with a blunderbuss there. Um, it's more so that uh, they're a little overskilled. I didn't expect, uh, I didn't expect them to be so good. Did I, uh, did I, did I do everything I was supposed to here? I'm selling minerals, right? Am I seriously I'm selling minerals? Okay, well I still have one crate of minerals, so I gotta, I just gotta double back. Wouldn't have this problem if I had dimples on my brain. It would increase the, uh, the speed of my brain by lowering the, the wind resistance inside of my skull. Everybody knows that the human brain spins in circles as it works, like a, a rotary engine. That's why if uh, you press your ear up to the ear of a, a, a person and ask them uh, to solve mathematical equations, you'll be able to hear that. Sounds like the, uh, the whirring of a jet engine. Why you're not supposed to uh, use Q-tips to clean out your ears? Because uh, if you were to have one of those Q-tips inside of your ear, someone were to ask you a, uh, a complicated question, or you were to think of uh, a philosophical thought, the uh, torque from the rotation of the human brain would uh, 
break that Q-tip right in half and maybe even uh, maybe even a finger bone. So I know we all do it. I know we all use Q-tips to clean out our ears, but you got to be careful. You've got to be careful. you got to be careful not to think of anything too okay. intense when you're doing that. And if you don't believe me, it uh, says so right on the Q-tip package. So uh, be careful. Be careful about that. I of course don't, uh, I don't dimple brains, I offer a uh, dimpling service for a number of things, but brains are not one of them, because uh, I'm not a brain doctor, or a doctor of any kind. You know? So uh, I'm not certified, I'm not certified to do that kind of a dimpling procedure. I also, uh, I don't recommend you get that procedure done uh, by any of my competitors either, reptilian or otherwise very complicated. It can increase uh, the speed of your thoughts by up to uh, 10%. But um, one of the problems is it also increases the fuel efficiency of your mind. So what's going to happen is is uh, you're going to start gaining some, uh, some pounds on the old love handles and backside there. Because, uh, you know, the brain on average, uh, what it consumes like over a thousand calories a day. So by increasing the uh, efficiency of the human brain by dimpling it like a golf ball, all that's going to happen is uh, you're just going to not going to be able to eat as many cookies, cookies and uh, soda beverages. Yeah, three hours. That's not too bad. We're coming into uh, Daggerfall, leaving uh, leaving Galleon's uh, graveyard. We call it Daggerfall. Dagger's tooth. Dagger, just dagger tooth. I uh, never met anybody with uh, a dagger in their teeth. That sounds like something a pirate would probably have. Dangerous. Dangerous. Do you imagine uh, biting your tongue, chewing a piece of gum? You had a dagger tooth? Unbelievable. It's also not a uh, procedure I recommend getting done. That's, uh, that's not Dagger 2, is it? Get me out of this storm. Didn't get struck by lightning in quite a few streams, though. Just don't have the luck. Oh! Hello, Mr. Sloot. Is it me you're looking for? There he is. Hello. You skeletons look like you need more iron in your diet. Lots of calcium, I can see that. Your bones are strong. A little more iron might do you good. Narrowly missed by that magical cannonball. Come now, let me dimple your ship. Hearing the death rattle of my own hall. Should be fine, should be fine. Okay, that's a couple of hits. Oh, a little bit of battle carpentry here. Uh oh, uh oh, uh oh. Get this water out of my ship. My, uh, what's, what's hitting me? They're hitting me, aren't they? It sounds like a paint trading situation. Absolutely. Should be good. Sail up just a little bit. Back the other way. Check the situation with the water park downstairs here. Still good. Still moist as advertised. Don't want the rats to sue me. Lest my uh, ad campaign turn into a barrel of lies. 
I tell them it's uh, just enough water to not drown in. Oh, this is good. Always, always got to have a nap. It's important to uh, important to keep yourself awake when you need to be awake. I think that the middle of a uh, ship battle would be a, a good time to stay awake. But it's always a good time to take a nap as well. I am headed straight into an island, but should be fine. Unless, uh, unless this skeleton loot decides to disappear, because I want that loot. Cool. I've said this before, of course, that's the thing about these uh, skeleton ships, is really what you want to do is you want to hit them with 10 shots right off the get-go here. Otherwise, you just end up in uh, end up in this situation where you're just kind of like sailing around, doing your carpentry, not really getting any closer to solving the problem at hand. They do repair, but they don't bail water. So we'll see. That might finish them off. Water out of my ship. Pig's crooked could be uh, a sign of uh, ill omen. You know, sign of things to come here. Uh, of course, my advice is if you do have two paintings, always fix the pig first. The pig is the one that matters. Practically dimples unto themselves, if you ask me. Come now to the slaughter. Maybe a couple of more iron injections. Free dimpling of your own there. Ouch. My ego. Oh. My other ego. Take a chicken break. Oh. I'm gonna do a, uh, a wall ride here. I can submit this tape to the X Games. Maybe they'll finally give me uh, a space on the vert ramp that I've been asking for. They keep telling me, Hogwild, you can't put a pirate ship on the vert ramp. It makes no sense. And I just uh, keep telling them, you know, none of the X Games, uh, nothing about it really makes any sense anyway. So just, just give me the space on the vert ramp, man. We can put... Uh, you can put a dolly under the ship, you know, it doesn't matter if the whole thing just explodes as soon as it hits the bottom. It's the X Games, right? It's all about the spectacle. Fix that, fix that. It's very important. Get that loot, get that booty on board. Then we'll get to pull into uh, Dagger Tooth for the end of the uh, first loop here. Where are my emissary quests? Probably Shores of Plenty again. Oh, Galleon's Grave. Oh, it was from Tess. It was from Tess. This is from uh, Dagger 2. I'm not going to do these. I'm not doing these this time. I can try to wrap this up in five and a half hours. Let's through these uh, last seven ports. What do we got? What do we got? What do we got?
Sure got a lot of uh, commodities on board, that's for certain. Always uh, guaranteed uh, content on this stream. You see a lot of crates. Crates of all kind. Another one of these uh, garbage sticks. Beautiful. Great a rare tea. These exquisite spices are actually uh, half decent loot. Another skull to whisper me secrets. Sapphire mermaid gem. Also decent loot. Stupid garbage stick. That ruby. Give me that ruby. This ash and chest, I guess I'll take it. I just don't even care, really, though. But I gotta get my five doubloomini dooms, or whatever you call them, blue coins. Treasure chest. Sure, I'll just put this here. And another crate of spices. Nope, storage crate. Okay, cool. Whatever. that. Was it worth it? Everything's worth it. It's like a brig hanging out over at shipwreck. Yep, that's a brig. If I were to uh, do these emissary cargo runs, they'd probably head me over to Galleon's, uh, not Galleon's grave, shipwreck bay. I always get those confused. Because, you know, Shipwreck Bay, Galleon's Grave, it's kind of like the same thing. I think that's uh, a Galleon smashed over at Shipwreck Bay, so whatever. Pulling into Dagger Tooth now, gonna sell this stone. Get some mad air. Think about, uh, Getting some more highlights for my X Games uh, submission video. You know, the way I uh, look at it is, what's the difference between a pirate ship and a skateboard? Like, literally, what's the difference? I mean, they're both made of wood, right? They both go really fast. You stand on the top of both of them. So, for them to tell me that I can't put a pirate ship on a vert ramp, that is, uh, that is nonsense, and I'm taking it to court. Um, no time soon because I have uh, a large backlog of uh, court cases I have to go through before I get to that one. Mostly involving uh, dimplings on uh, synthetic materials. This is why I don't do that anymore. But, um, but you know, as soon as my schedule opens up there, and uh, as soon as I can get a lawyer to uh, return my calls, a lot of them won't these days, then I'm uh, taking it to the X Games, man. I'm going to get this... Uh, ship on a bird ramp, we're gonna, we're gonna do it up. I mean, the way I've explained it to them is, uh, if I can kickflip it, then how can you tell me it's not a skateboard? You know? But you're gonna discriminate against it because it's a, it's a size difference? Like, is there some sort of a, a size and weight regulation? How much wood can be on a skateboard for it to no longer be considered a skateboard at all? I can put wheels on it. It's not the problem. It should be obvious. The ship isn't always in the water, obviously, when I'm uh, riding it around on the, uh, the tarmac. Obviously, it's got wheels. It's not even a not even a point of contention. I think that should even be raised. It goes without saying. What are we doing here? Minerals. No. Stone. Seems like I should have a lot of that. Yeah, okay. This is it. That's it. Hit my head on the dock. Stream's over. It's done. Speaking of which, it's not moving, is it? Nope. Okay. Good. Good stuff. 
I don't think that uh, brig I saw wants any. They know. Fifteen hundred. Get this ruby gem off of my ship. It glows too bright. Five thousand. Get this. Uh, what is that? A captain's chest. This rare tea. I wish I could drink it. Get uh, super speed. In uh, you know Stardew Valley, that'd be great. Alchemy would be uh, an excellent addition to this game, I gotta say. Yeah, people would complain. Yeah, people complain about everything, anyways. I mean, I think it'd be going a little too far if. Uh, you could get a potion to super jump and then you could just jump on people's head. Uh, jump on top of their head like the Mario Brothers. You know, stomp them like a Goomba. That's probably taking it a bit too far, but, you know, rare if you're listening to this. Eh, Goomba stomping, come on. That'd be pretty cool. I mean, while you're at it, give us a dinosaur we could ride. It doesn't have to be Yoshi. Just like uh, an anatomically correct uh, Velociraptor. Um, you know, who owns the rights to uh, to Jurassic Park there? Is it Disney? It's probably Disney, right? Uh, Disney owns everything at this point. So, like, you've already had a, uh, a tie-in with uh, Pirates of the Caribbean. Why not uh, do a tie-in with Jurassic Park? Give me a Velociraptor that I can ride around the islands. It worked for, uh, you know, Ark Survival Evolved. Talking about that last stream. Uh, the game is uh, 250 gigs in size, size and runs like a just a jar of molasses in the winter time stuck to a wall, but everybody loves it and they play it. You know why that is? It's because of the dinosaurs. I think that if you put dinosaurs in any game, it's gonna it's gonna make it two points better on any scale. Even out of five, two points better out of five. Definitely out of ten. I mean, out of a hundred for sure. It goes without saying, but. Uh, your game's a 3 out of 5, you put dinosaurs in it, man, that brings it right up to a 5 out of 5. And that's not just my opinion, that's a hard fact, that's science. You can go check that on Wikipedia, you can go to Snopes.com, it won't be debunked. It'll be, uh... Rebunked? Just bunked? Like, if something gets debunked, that's bad, right? So if something gets bunked, then that's, like, good, right? Like, that's the way that words work. But I always thought that like a bunch of bunk, like a bunch of bunk is just bad. Oh, it's just a bunch of bunk. I don't know. There ain't no bunk about dinosaurs in video games, man. That's what I'm saying about dinosaurs is they're naturally dimpled. That's why they're an apex predator. Nothing can run faster than a velociraptor, except maybe like a gazelle with dimples on it. Like if you dimpled a gazelle, it would probably be quicker. Or a cheetah. Cheetahs are interesting, right? Because they got uh, they got spots on them, so they're not like they're not like real dimples, but they're like uh, they're like uh, aesthetic dimples, like the spots. The spots are like dimples, but I mean, to be honest, has anybody ever shaved a cheetah before? I mean, I've never seen that. Seems like something Steve Irwin would do: catch a cheetah and shave it, count the dimples on its skin. Like I said, uh, if nobody we know has ever done it. How would we know if it's true or not? I don't know. Just got to get out there. But, uh, you know, if a uh, cheetah doesn't have dimples on it, then I would say probably a, a dimpled cheetah would be... Uh, dimpled cheetah would be probably faster than a velociraptor, but don't, uh, don't hold me to that if you're ever at the... Uh, the horse races and you got a bet on a jockey riding a velociraptor versus a jockey riding a dimpled cheetah and you put a hundred grand on it and you lose. Don't send me a fax at 3 a.m., okay? I'm just putting that out there. But, uh, it's my, uh, my professional opinion. 
that, uh, being the, the, the dimpler that I am. Um, only ever ridden a cheetah once. It did have a saddle on it, so that, that will lower the speed of the cheetah. It was when I was younger, I was quite a few pounds, uh, quite a few pounds lighter. But it was fast, okay. Never ridden a velociraptor, obviously, because they're tough to come by outside of the, uh, stratosphere of the moon anyways a place I've never been to certainly uh, not by dimpled train anyways um, so you know I can't really comment on that but just based on uh, what I've seen I've seen uh, one Jurassic Park movie the first one when I was younger there so uh, I think I know how fast a, a Velociraptor is thank you very much Undimpled, the Velociraptor absolutely uh, would have a speed advantage, but the, the cheetah, the cheetah needs the dimples if it doesn't have them already, but like I said, gotta shave it, gotta shave it to find out, because it's got those spots, and you're gonna tell me those spots don't correspond to any underlying dimpled structure on its skin and or bones? I don't think that, uh, I don't think nature is that random. I'm told that that's the way evolution works, right? that it all, uh, it all is the uh, survival of the fittest. You're going to tell me that a cheetah is going to evolve a coat full of aesthetic dimples but no dimples beneath the fur? I don't know about that. That sounds like a, a load of uh, creationist, uh, creationist bunk. You know what I'm saying? Talking about bunk, I think that's been debunked. That's not the way that evolution works. Alright, got that stone sold. I'm gonna sail around to the front dagger tooth park my uh, Park my ship in the oven there get the falcon in the oven cook a bird cook a big old bird Hopefully not get cooked, but uh, you know even just being uh, near the heat of the fire sometimes can Brown the feathers a bit Still no luck on the lightning strikes. I would like to get struck by lightning again this stream. Not to say I've been uh, struck this stream yet, but that's always good luck. That one stream I got struck twice, that was a good stream. That was one of the streams I got kegged, actually, so maybe the maybe the lightning's a bad thing, actually. Now that I think about it. Geez, I was talking about that, uh, that Pelosi thing at the start of the video yesterday. I think it tanked my impressions. I don't think anybody wants to hear about Pelosi. I also figure, like, I think it's not, like, overall. It's probably, like, you know. What's your average, uh, Sea of Thieves individual want to hear about? Probably the same thing as anybody else. I'd imagine Sea of Thieves players. I mean, I play a lot of Sea of Thieves. I think I'm, uh, pretty average. Pretty average when it comes to, uh, you know, your, your man on the street. But I also think too, I always gotta wonder about those things, right? Where it's like, if a CNN reporter got fired for reporting it, are they gonna call up Google and they're gonna be like, hey, maybe just tank any video that mentions it in the impressions? Cause I was talking about how that's like, probably not a thing that happens. It's probably just people don't wanna hear about it, but yeah, I thought about that. Just when there's uh, really nothing else going on in the world besides that. Besides that, and then, you know, the gold riots in the United States. That's definitely going to tank my impression. I, I should not have uh, started the video with that. But. <laughs> but whatever, man. It's one video. One video out of how many? I already got uh, 1,700 impressions total. So, there you go. If it's funny, it's funny. I guess it's not really funny, but, you know. It's important, man, that uh, journalists from a thousand years from now are going to dig up these tapes. They're going to be like, by golly, because that's how they're going to talk in the future. They're going to go, by golly, look at the current events that this guy, uh, this guy was talking about. They're going to say, wow, wow, were people ever smart. Back in 2023. They knew so much about dimpling. 
that we're only just beginning to understand here in the year 3023. By that time, they will have used dimpling to increase the speed of everything. I'm going to take this. Including um, farm equipment. I think that if you uh, dimple the tractor, you'd be able to grow 10% uh, more food. 10% uh, reduction in, uh, uh, you know, fuel expenditure. 10% increase in the fuel economy of the tractor there, so that's just a no-brainer. That's a, uh, a dollar off the price of lettuce right there, just from dimples. And then, you know, if you dimpled the lettuce, and you dimpled the truck delivering it, then uh, that's another 10% off the uh, the cost of the fuel to bring the lettuce to the, the grocery store. And then, uh, of course, the dimples on the lettuce, that's 10% uh, off the, uh, the cost of uh, lifting the lettuce and uh, putting it in your mouth with a fork there. A lot of people don't realize uh, there's a lot, of, a lot of wind resistance on a piece of lettuce. I mean, if you don't believe me, just go, uh, just go buy some lettuce, you know, go throw it, see how far it goes. It won't. It won't, man. A lot of people uh, don't know this, but the original experiments in France, uh, again, this is what I want at all. It is. The original uh, experiments in France, I don't know where a low cove is, but I said I wasn't going to do that this stream, so I'm going to actually stick to my word. Unbelievable. What was I talking about? Dimpled lettuce here. The original experiments in France uh, to try to beat the Wright brothers to uh, make the first flying machine. The uh, first planes they made, the uh, wings were actually made entirely of uh, of uh, romaine. There's a, a romaine uh, for the outside there. Easier to dimple. And then uh, iceberg for the uh, structure of the wing. Didn't work, of course. It didn't work. But it was uh, a good effort. Good effort. It could have worked. It certainly wasn't the uh, the lettuce that was preventing it um, from uh, from flying. I think what it was is uh, you see the pictures of the uh, the first pilots there. Very heavy set individuals, well over 300 pounds. They uh, they found the uh, the fattest people in uh, in France. Uh, to pilot those first flying machines because uh, the methodology of uh, thinking there was that you know fat weighs less than muscle so the more fat uh, the more fat you got on a guy there then the, the uh, closer they are to being lighter than air which of course I, uh, I don't think that's true we know that now that, uh, you know the fatter you are the heavier you're gonna be generally speaking but it was a different time they didn't really understand uh, the densities of the human body as well as we do today. Of course, there were uh, a lot less fat people, so they didn't understand them. They were a bit of a scientific anomaly that they uh, thought they could utilize in their studies, their day-to-day uh, -day studies there. Utilize them, they did. It's actually what the uh, the song "Fat Bottom Girls" by a Queen. What that song's about? That's about. Uh, making the first uh, airplanes there to, uh, to beat the Wright brothers. Truly, they did make the world go round, or so they thought. They thought that the, uh, the increase of body fat uh, maintained the, uh, the, uh, the spin of the planet and the orbit around the sun there. But uh, as we now know, because of the, uh, the shift the uh, magnetic poles of the planet is accelerating, it's very likely, in fact, that uh, Fat Bottom Girls uh, don't make the world go round, but actually possibly interfere uh, with the uh, the regular regular spinning of the planet and uh, the location of the poles. Not something that uh, we've quite cracked the case on, though. We don't uh, quite understand what's causing that. But uh, I firmly believe that correlation is, of course, causation. So, so that's probably what's going on there. We'll never know for sure. I think the uh, 
the easiest way to figure that out is you get one of those uh, one of those cruises, those fat people cruises. Sail it down to the uh, the Antarctic there. See what kind of results you get. Watch the pulls. Do they shift? Do they shift more? Do they shift less? You know, get beyond that cruise as well. I love to uh, I love to be there. If you know what I'm saying. Probably be a, a very, uh, very good time. Loading up on sugar here. Of course, just uh, you know, I meant for science. I wasn't, I uh, wasn't being weird about sugar or anything. I would like to see the Antarctic uh, on a cruise full of fat people. You know, read into that however you want. Like I said, I have a uh, extensive team of lawyers, none of uh, which will return my calls. But uh, when one of them does, go ahead, say something weird about me. I dare you, I'll sue you for, uh, for libel. Sometime after uh, 2053, though, because like I said, I have a large uh, backlog. Large backlog of uh, lawsuits I have to get through first. Especially, uh, you know, depending on when uh, one of these lawyers will return my call. It's like every time I mention the word dimple, uh, they hang up on me. I don't know if that's a thing. A fear of it, uh, the, the, the technology. They're like technophobes, you know. I'm sure if I uh, called them up and I said the word Neuralink, they'd probably uh, hang up just as quickly. But I can never get to that part of the conversation. Because I always bring up the dimpling first. All my uh, all my lawsuits I gotta get out of the way here. It all involves dimples, one way or the other. Either uh, my dimples or uh, the dimples of uh, another company, another dimpling company. I tell you, I tried to uh, tried to dimple my tax payments. I don't recommend that. Got the IRS after me now. There was maybe a loophole in the tax code. Where if I uh, dimpled my tax payments, then I could take 10% off of uh, money owed there to the government. But they don't—they uh, don't believe they don't believe that that's the way that works, which is fair, I guess. We're still not uh, fully understanding of the effects of dimples on uh, mathematics on numbers. Okay, so that went well. That went well. Not a dimple gain, not a uh, dimple lost. So we'll get out of uh, Dagger Tooth and start the second loop here. See if I can get the second loop done in uh, two hours. Get this finished up at a regular time here. I tell you, it pains me. It pains me not to go after all the extra loot here. I guess maybe I'm just going to have to uh, accept that I'm never going to break 500k. Unless I do like a 21 port run or something, but maybe on the 20, uh, the 21st run, I'll do a 21 port run to celebrate the 21st run. That'll be uh, the 20, 20 standard runs will be done there, and then I'll do like the a 21 port. See how quick I can get that done. It's funny that it it seems daunting. I'm gonna uh, I'm gonna do a 21 point run because I know it'll take seven hours, but. When I sit down to do like a five hour run and then I just put a bunch of cargo runs in between, even though it takes a long time, it doesn't feel as daunting. So I'm like, you know, whatever. No big deal, man. Mixing it up a bit, getting a little bit of extra action in there. The horizon looks clear. Not a ship in sight. Not a reptilian alien in sight. Skeleton galleon. Of course, uh, if there were be a reptilian alien in plain sight, we probably wouldn't know. They're shifty, quick, covered in dimples. Okay. like it's uh, that part of the night. 
what have I got here? Are these even organized? We got the gemstones, we got the uh, minerals. There was a box of stone on the stairs. I see I got that taken care of. How's my regen? Regen's at half. Need some more chicken. Bone and all. Gotta fix the pick. It's important. Pigs out. Uh, bottles of mystery are probably out as well. Gotta fix my books, of course. Those are the books I read to learn how to get good. Uh, the results are still uh, inconclusive. A lot of important, uh, important facts in there. That's where I learned how to uh, practice on palm trees, of course. Not that I have anything against palm trees, but you know, when a target is just the uh, perfect shape to practice, it's kind of hard not to use it. No shooting range, of course. So you gotta go out to the palm tree range. Some more ammo here. It's a shame to do all that practice and not really have to uh, shoot anybody. But on the 13th run there, I did. I did have to shoot somebody. So. It did pay off, it did pay off. Big Sky Vike is here. He says, ahoy, ahoy. What was the grand tally from the other night? Oh, uh, from the night you were at, it was at uh, 488,000, I think. <laughs> and then the next night I did uh, 495,000. But they were both uh, they were both seven hour streams. So I'm sitting here thinking like, okay, if I'm gonna do a seven hour stream, I might as well just hit 21 ports of commodities and I'd probably break 500,000, so. Big Sky Bike says, awesome, I was close on my guess. Yeah, actually, it's in the uh, outro there. You're the winner, man. You were the closest. So, uh, you know, collect your, uh, collect your, uh, I don't know, I'll give you a voucher for one free dimpling or something there. You can get uh, whatever you want dimpled. Get some dimples put on it like a golf ball. Take the wind resistance off it. I do everything except uh, synthetic clothing. It's got to be at least 50% cotton. But, uh, yeah, congrats to yourself. Um... Yeah, it's good. I don't know. I'm getting uh, I'm getting kind of too caught up. Like it used to be like a five and a half hour stream. I hit 14 ports, right? I was like, okay, that's pretty cool. But then I'm just like trying to get that number higher and higher by putting these cargo runs in. But the whole thing about the cargo runs is like they take more time than running commodities. So the only uh, the only thing about doing 21 ports instead of 14 would be like I got to do that extra loop around, and so there's more chance of me running into uh, enemy ships. Whereas when I run the cargos, it's kind of like between the ports. So if it's clear, it's clear. So I mean, there's that advantage. But yeah, I still gotta. Uh, I still gotta like. I don't know. I want to break 500,000, but it's almost like I said at the point where if it takes me seven and a half hours to do it, then there's not really as much prestige as just doing a, a normal run or whatever. So. So I don't really know what the future holds, man. I'm on. Uh, is this run 14 or run? This is run 15, right? Jeez, time flies. So this is run 15, so I still got like another five of these to do. I might do I might do one more where I try to break 500k, even if it takes me seven and a half, just to say I did it. But uh, it kind of depends on where I spawn as well, because starting at uh, Plunder Outpost works really well if you're going counterclockwise, because you can hit those cargo runs out of Moro's Peak. But no such luck today, so I'm just taking it easy. I did. Uh, I did one cargo run on Amoros Peak because I was thinking about uh, thinking about doing another record, but then I missed the uh, the cargo emissary out of uh, wherever Galleon's Grave. There, didn't realize it was from the uh, the uh, tavern lady. I thought it would have just from been from the merchant again because they usually are. So, so I'm just uh, just hitting up the second loop now. I got uh, seven more ports to do here. It's so far so simple. Haven't run into any PVP. It's actually looking like the PC servers are uh, more chill than the Xbox ones, if you can imagine it. I certainly see uh, a lot less Reapers. Um, just about every run that I did on the Xbox servers, I saw a Reaper ship. And I've only seen the one Reaper ship on PC so far. So, so that's interesting, I think. That's it. 
Speaking of interesting, man, this is not uh, missing my. Uh... Yeah, exactly. That's what I was thinking too. Uh, Big Sky Bike says running uh, goods back and forth from tavern to ship can be a pain, especially if it's dagger or ancient spire. Yeah, it's weird because uh, doing those good those good runs, right? It's like a little extra, but I don't realize like how much um, extra time it puts onto the stream, man. Like last night's stream was seven and a half hours. Which is like cool. I love hanging out and doing the stream, but but um, yeah, it's not really like in the spirit. It's like my high score is like kind of changed the meaning of what it is. And yeah, for sure, running the goods back and forth from tavern to shift, especially if it's like uh, ancient spire where it's way up on the hill there. Yep, it can be a pain. So. So I don't know. I think maybe uh, maybe I'll do like a 21 port run one of these days or something. I'm not really sure. I don't know why I'm such a stickler for it because it's like I'm, I'm the one making the rules. Nobody else does these. <laughs> so it's like, like I was saying yesterday, uh, somebody call a referee, man. Give me a red card. Breaking the commodity rules. Oh, what? You mean there's none that exist? Okay, then. But, uh, you know. If I can do a seven and a half hour stream and break like 550 or something, Big Sky Vikes says we play against ourselves. LOL. Yeah, absolutely, man. You got to uh, you got to make little rules and stuff, dude, because it's all about. Anytime I play any game, I always try to find like you know, squeeze a little bit more efficiency out of what you're doing, because that's like half the fun of it. It's I'm I'm way too far south. This is ridiculous. Got to put some dimples on my compass, man. It's uh, too slow, too slow to get my heading. But yeah, I don't know. It's weird. I'll have to try it. I'll have to try 21 port run one time. Do three loops around. The only thing is like, once I get to the end of the uh, the 14 port run, I get a little bit, uh, I get a little bit anxious, right? Cashing out at that last port. So I feel like doing another loop around would just be like really anxiety inducing somehow. Because when you do do like the cargo runs, I don't think they pay like as much as the commodities, even the uh, emissary ones. But like I said, they're always like between ports, right? So you're not like, um, you're not sailing off into new territory every time you do them. Whereas uh, when you're sailing around doing these uh, commodity runs, that's a real brig. I mean, a galleon. Yeah, when you're sailing from port to port doing these commodity runs, like, you're always running in. Big Sky Vike says, uh, pays more in paranoia, that's for sure. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. I think if I did a third loop, like, I don't know, I could probably pull it off, but... The longer you stay out in the sea, and especially the more you sail around into new sections of the map, when there's nobody nearby in the section you're in, then it's like, you're risking getting sunk by somebody. So it's tough to say if that would even work, but but I don't know. I've I've been having a really smooth time these last three streams. No, uh, nobody, nobody's giving me trouble. Ran into those sea hobos in stream three, but they were they were pretty chill. They took my supply crates. I had to fight one of them off, but they gave up pretty quick. So. My whole thing is thinking now, uh, next time I run into somebody, I'm going to like interview them for the stream and see if I can get them to uh, to back down that way. Because like most people I run into, as soon as they realize I'm streaming, they tend to want to parley and, and chill out. So I'm going to try to use my uh, merchant charisma to get me through it. Definitely uh, come stream uh, 2021 20, here once I get all my, my data for these runs. Cut them down for the subreddit. I'm going to uh, I'm going to start start doing more of that stuff. I'm probably going to sail up to every person I find. I'll be like still doing the commodity runs, but instead of trying to get like a, a high score with the coins, because like the coins are cool. I want to get the uh, DA haul and everything, but at the same time, it's like you know, uh, they're just they're just coins. They're just like you know, just loot coins. I don't really care. I want to cut uh, I want to cut the most entertaining content I can. So I'm probably going to be sailing up to everybody I see. And uh, talking to them over the horn. 
ask them what they think about current events and whatnot, see if they aggro. I'll uh, get a lot of uh, get a lot of PvP in as I'm trying to uh, you know deal with the situation or whatever. I think that could make for some good streams. I'd be uh, I'd be doing it already if I hadn't committed to just uh, collecting this data set for the subreddit there. Because that is one thing I will say is you know it's like. Uh, even though uh, those last two streams were seven and a half hours, it still uh, it still fits in with the spirit of of doing the runs, in the sense of uh, in the sense of documenting how much PVP there is on the water. Because you know seven and a half hours is just uh, just more than five and a half hours. So. So that's that. I gotta start drinking G Fuel or something, man. It's like my, uh, my docking procedure has just gotten worse. Gotta get that G Fuel. G Fuel sponsorship. Get dimpled. <laughs> Big Sky Vike says did that the other day against an Athena Galley on my stream. I approached them, I was friendly, they were not turned into an hour of me driving them crazy. Yeah, that's another thing too, right? Because it's like even if you're not uh you're not actually sinking them and taking their loot, I think it'd be hilarious just to swing by them and huck fire pots on their deck every time. Just harass them like a like a gnat under their skin. It's kind of stuff, kind of stuff I want to do. Get creative with it. I mean, you know, it's cool watching people sail around and just sink everybody all the time. That's fine too. But I'm the kind of guy who's like, yeah, whatever. I only consider myself a little bit above average, anyways, when it comes to uh, PVP. So it's like, if I lose some fights on stream, as long as they're entertaining, as long as I'm not losing every fight, I'm okay with it. You know, hurts the ego to get sunk on stream, but. I'm a big boy, I can handle it. It's not a big deal. I think it would be, uh... Is this right? Yeah, this is right. It would be interesting, though, to just go visit some ships, man, and just talk to them. Uh, you know, I got the voice chat muted, obviously, because I don't want people, uh... dropping uh, the C-bomb on my stream. I'll get banned. Somebody will say cracker. I'll get annihilated and kicked off Twitch. But, uh, but you know, otherwise, otherwise they can still talk through text and that's fine. I think it's probably better too because, you know, they're more anonymous on stream and stuff. Just go out, see what people are up to. See how they're enjoying the weather. Ask them if they've heard of the uh, awesome performance enhancing potential of the dimple. You know? It's all about dimples, man. The more dimples you got, the faster you go. It's the secret of the golf ball. It's the secret of the, uh, the reptile. That's why reptiles are so quick. Snakes kind of, uh, they don't got a lot of dimples. They kind of got dimples, but it's not really as many dimples as they could have. They got shortchanged in uh, both the limb department and the dimple departments. So there you go. But all other reptiles, man. Covered in dimples. Sugar, sugar, sugar. Keep thinking that uh, post over there is somebody standing, but it's like absolutely not. I don't know why I just admitted that. Sometimes I think maybe I should keep my cards a little closer to my chest. And not just talk about uh, every stupid mistake and uh, stupid thought I have in my head, but... Personal integrity, I take it very seriously, so... 
when I hallucinate, it's important that everybody knows about it. That way, if I truly am uh, losing it, you know, you can call the reptilians uh, who live on the moon and they can come take me away. Get me the help and the dimpling that I need. Big Sky Vike says, nah, it's a mermaid. It's all good. No posts here. <laughs> yeah, you laugh, but uh, this was that sanctuary. I got kegged, man. That actually happened. I was sitting at this port and a mermaid popped out of the ground. I was like, oh, what's going on? I got that on the highlights. I got him with the blunderbuss, but he was crawling up the right ladder and I uh, detonated the keg on myself. So that was game over for me that stream, but never happened again, except for the next time it happened at Daggertooth, but it didn't happen three times. So there you go. Uh, okay, so let me see. That's all the sugar since I'm so well organized here. I'm just gonna fill up on uh, State your business, everything please. else now. Sugar, of course, is not good for you. Refined sugar, but uh, if you eat uh, semi-precious gemstones, that'll give you superpowers. So, you know. I also uh, recommend, though, that you consult a healthcare professional before deciding to eat semi-precious gemstones. Ask your doctor if uh, semi-precious gemstones in your diet are uh, are good for you. You know, rubies, sapphires, emeralds. Get some calcites of all kinds. Amethyst and citrine we already talked about. You know, just uh, put them in your uh, put them in your rice, put them in your cereal, mix them into your drinks. They'll be flying around like uh, an ascended guru in no time. The belly full of uh, belly full of magic rocks. But of course, consult your doctor first. I am uh, not a healthcare professional. I'm a humble toga merchant. So, make sure, make sure you know what's right for you. Get together with your doctor, press your foreheads close together, do a little uh, mind melt, like Spock from uh, Star Trek there. I don't recommend uh, doing that if your doctor is not a Vulcan. I once had a uh, non-Vulcan doctor try to mind meld with me and it was a uncomfortable experience. Big Sky Bikes is not a healthcare professional, but you play as uh, you play one as a merchant lord in a pirate game. Well, I mean, actually, now that you mention it, yeah, as a merchant lord, I probably am the healthcare professional of the the seven seas here. Well, four seas. I would say seven seas, but there's only four seas in the Sea of Thieves. I guess maybe it's just one sea because it's not called the Seas of Thieves. Uh, but yeah, I mean, you know, probably the closest thing to a healthcare professional there is out here, especially considering uh, at the time, like, you know, a, a barber used to be a healthcare professional. That's apparently why they got those uh, red and blue poles. Yeah, 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 exactly. Big Sky Bug says the official snake and hog oil salesperson of the Sea of Thieves. That's what I'm talking about, man. That's what I'm talking about. I'm the guy who shows up with all his, his magical tinctures that are just like completely useless and is like, got a problem? Just uh, rub some of this on that, eat some of these semi-precious gemstones. That's what I'm saying. Feeling sick? Just uh, eat an emerald. There you go. There you go, man. <laughs> Wrap yourself in silk, snort some of this sugar, drink lots of tea. Yeah. Easy there. Easy there, podcast. That's <laughs> RODL rolls on deck laughing. I would uh, be careful to uh, clean yourself off if you're going to be rolling on this deck, man. I don't know if you've seen what my dog does to this deck a hundred times every stream, but it smells like asparagus, if you know what I'm saying. Which is weird because, like, I don't feed him, so I don't really know where he gets it from. It's probably these uh, ungraded tea leaves. 
crack open one of the crates and it's just a bunch of asparagus and it's like, this isn't tea. It's like, yeah, well, that's why it's ungraded. This is asparagus grade tea. <laughs> yep. Big Sky Bike says asparagus, Hollywood Boulevard, tea leaves and urine. Yeah, that's about, that's about the gist of it. That's about the gist of it. All right, this has got to be the last crate. Hoo, hoo ah! Oh, crate of spices. It's a lot of spices. I guess some of these I didn't sell. I was saving them for the, uh, the second loop here. Broken stone. You got something to uh, say there, podcast? You want to make a commentary about the uh, state of the uh, police in the United States? Well, too bad. We don't have time for that. We got to get out of here. We got to get out of a. Uh, got to get out of sanctuary. Get me out of this stupid port. This is actually one of the least stupid of the ports shouldn't be speaking ill of Sanctuary. Except I, uh, I do have to laugh about the name Sanctuary because of all the ports, this is probably the one port where you run into the most people. So it's like the opposite of Sanctuary. Something about the uh, west side of the map here. There's always the most ships here, so if you are uh, you are looking for people to fight, this is the place to go. Mm, 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 looks clear. Unbelievable. Where's my content? It's everywhere. It's all around us, like the dimples of the universe. I think that's um, how we're going to have our free energy breakthrough, you know. People think it's all about fusion power, but I think we just have to put uh, more dimples on coal, right? If we can find a way to get more dimples on a single piece of coal, that would increase the uh, energy efficiency of it. Dimple the turbines. Dimple the water towers. I think that if we could dimple space-time itself, you know, dimple time and space, and that be the free energy breakthrough that we need. Speaking of uh, free energy, looks like that galleon's coming this way to give me some free energy in the form of uh, flying cannonballs up my face. So I'm just going to, uh, I'm just going to pretend that I don't care. I'm just going to be all aloof. I think galleons are uh, are the opposite of cats. The more attention you pay them, the more attention they're going to give you back. So if I just act aloof, he should go the other way. Shouldn't be a problem. Ah, it's too bad. I really want to get into that port, like, right away, too. But, uh... Yeah, the current heading there, they're like, they're coming this way. Well, I could skip it. I could skip it for old time's sake. I haven't skipped the port in like seven streams. Big Sky Vike says, use the Homer Simpson clip of him putting the dimples in his car with the pickaxe to make it more aerodynamic. Yeah, I was talking about that earlier, not the Simpsons one, but did you know that the Mythbusters, they actually covered a car in dimples like uh, Homer Simpson? And according to their testing, it actually increased the fuel mileage by 10%. But then uh, Volkswagen sent them a letter and they were like, we recreated your experiment and it didn't work. And they were just laughing because they're just imagining like a bunch of uh, guys in lab coats at Volkswagen dimpling a car in a wind tunnel and being like, hmm, interesting. But I speculated because like they probably used... Uh, Big Sky Vikes says, yep, saw that Volkswagen was lying. Yeah, I never thought of that. They probably could have lied because they freaking 
they lied on all their emissions tests, which I found uh, pretty funny about that because, you know, man, for the longest time in those early 2000s when they were, uh, they came out with those diesel uh, Jettas, the new ones, they were like, oh, diesel is like, it's cleaner than gasoline and there's no, uh, there's no emissions. And meanwhile, your neighbor starts up his car in the morning and a big black cloud of smoke shoots out of it and his face looks like, uh, one of the little rascals who shoved his uh, face in an exhaust pipe, right? Or like when a bomb goes off in a Looney Tunes commercial and you're like, hmm, is that really cleaner than gasoline? Like, I don't know about that Volkswagen. And then like 10 years later it came out, they faked all the emission tests. Crazy Germans. Not that I'm generalizing an entire country again. That's uh, that's against uh, Twitch, uh, Twitch rules. It's also just in bad taste, you know? But, uh, Volkswagen, dude. Sneaky. Sneaky, sneaky, sneaky. <laughs> You're not gonna report me for that, are you? I've done that, like, a few times on this stream by accident, and I didn't even realize I was doing it. Because it's, the, the whole thing is, like, I would never generalize, um, anybody but, like, European, uh, European countries, because I feel like that's just, like, an age-old European tradition, is generalizing entire groups of uh, other Europeans, right? So, I don't know. Whoa, that was a cannonball. Because, like, I remember, uh, I remember growing up as a kid, man, and we'd have, like, picture books about, uh, about countries, about European countries. And it would have, like, uh, it'd be, like, Italy, and then it'd just have a picture of a guy with a Mario mustache making pizza. And it was like, oh, Ireland, and it would be a dude who looks like a leprechaun with a, with a thing full of coins and it's just like that's just what like uh, Europeans have been doing for like the last thousand years is uh, you know poking each other with uh, sharp sticks and uh, generalizing entire populations so I would never like I would never generalize like uh, a country outside of Europe but at the same time I should stop doing it in general because it's like uh, it's just stupid man I'm obviously just joking around but but even if I say like uh, something like oh you know those uh, those guys over in that country, they're a great bunch of people. Then it implies that I think there's a country full of people who aren't great, and so it's like that's not a good look. It's not a good look at all, man. So I'm gonna stop doing that. That's my uh, that's my New Year's resolution for 2024. Luckily, it's only January 28, 2023 here, so I got a whole 11 months worth of uh, generalizing entire communities of Europeans. So look forward to that in uh, the streams to come. And then it'll get cancelled from uh, Twitter. I guess Twitter probably doesn't cancel people anymore now that Elon Musk took it over, huh? That was their whole thing, is they tried to cancel Twitter because he took it over, but then like they didn't have control of Twitter to cancel Twitter on Twitter, so it didn't work. It's like, whoever controls Twitter controls cancel culture. So, just as long as the uh, Germans don't get control of Twitter, then I'll be fine, I think, right? Big Sky Vike says, so Reapers, what a bunch of tools, am I right? Yeah, I mean, I don't know. We're allowed to generalize about Reapers, right? There's no, like, country full of Reapers. So, uh, they're all right. I like them. They put the effort in. They chase me around. They don't catch me. But they try. You know? I used to, uh, I used to run Reaper ships. I don't talk about that anymore because it, uh, it makes me sound like uh, like I miss it, you know. It makes me sound like I'm uh, I'm trying to say like what I think I'm doing now isn't as cool as being a reaper, but I actually enjoy this a lot more, just running goods. So I don't talk about that anymore. That galleon's in port, hey. Nope. Yep. Yep. He is. Okay. Big Sky Vike says, "Nah, just a bunch of pixels in pajamas." Yeah, those reaper pajamas. I always love it when they dress the part. I gotta hand it to them. I used to always wear that reaper outfit. Did that. If they're not dressed the part, then I don't feel like it's uh, it's a real Reaper encounter, you know. I'm not skipping this port. I'm gonna run this to six hours. I don't care. I'm just gonna sail around in circles here until those guys are done. Kind of want to get a name on that ship though, just for fun. We'll just sail around talk about the miracle technology of dimples some more. 
One thing you don't want to do is you don't want to put dimples on the bottom of your shoes, though, right? Because that's actually going to reduce your friction with the ground. It's just named Charles. Captain by High Boss 21. I've. Oh, dude, I know this guy, but I saw him on the Xbox servers. I'm almost certain I've seen that name before, but he was uh, in a brig called Steve instead of a galleon called Charles, and I always I chuckled at that because I was like, who names a boat just after a dude? But I guess like. It's no weird than uh, naming your ship like Cassandra or something, right? Like that would that would be a ship name. People are always naming ship after women. So why not name your ship after a dude? That's fine, I guess. Charles is a strong name for a boat. Unless there's some other uh, some other joke there that I'm missing. That somehow that's just another dirty innuendo. What are they doing? Are they just are they eyeballing me, wondering it's like, is that merchant sloop gonna come keg us? Somehow I don't think that these guys are more afraid of me than I am of them. Oh, they got uh, they got a bit of PvP halt going on there too. I think that's the Ashen one. Better watch out. I'm up wind, so it should be fine if they decide to chase, but. That's also kind of one of the, uh, oh, yo, Big Sky Vike says my last galley was Large March, so ladylike, I guess. That's like a Large March from uh, Pee Wee Herman. Yeah. I know that because I, I had a band in uh, high school. We called it the Barge. We had it the Barge, and then somebody, uh, somebody might, it was actually my brother. He kept calling us Large March in the Boston Barge. I was like, yeah, I don't like the implication, but like, whatever. So that's funny. Yes, indeed. Yes, indeed. Large Mard's a good is a good name for a galleon, though. That's hilarious. I was gonna uh, I was gonna call mine the uh, the Grand Chungus, and then call my uh, my brig the Medium Chungus. I think Medium Chungus is like funnier than the Grand Chungus, but I don't know. This one, of course, is uh, called the Centennial Falcon because I feel like I'm out here uh, smuggling goods around, trying to avoid all these uh, dirty tax collectors. I haven't talked about that uh, for a couple of streams now. Big Sky Vike says my sloop is the Helena Handbasket. Uh, that's a nice name. I uh, don't uh, I don't recognize the reference though. Oh, they okay? Yeah, never mind. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, that's a good one. I did that. I figured that out without brain dimples as well. Can you believe that? I don't even have a dimpled brain. Not not to say that it's smooth. It's not entirely smooth. Uh, it's a little wavy. I got some of them uh, them folds the smart people got, but uh, no dimples. You know. If I had folds and dimples, man, uh, I'd be just the smartest, uh, smartest pirate on the sea. These guys better not alt F4 and sit there for like a half hour. Wouldn't be the first time. Maybe I'll just uh, take a look around this island for no reason. See if I can find something on the shore here. That looks like some merchant goods. It looks like an ammo crate. That looks like maybe some human remains. Poke him with a stick. Go shoot some pigs. I think I should be safe here. But uh, what was I trying to say Say there? Oh yeah, okay, so uh, now that I know actually how to like evade a ship if they chase me, it certainly makes the game a lot more interesting because I can uh, I can dare to get close to people, right? Because it's like as long as you're upwind and you got some islands you can play with, you can shake people off your tail. So if you want to just sail in to say hello, shoot some fireworks. Sorry about that, old friend. I'm even uh, full on pork chops. Oh, fruit crate! This is the real MVP. Hopefully it's got some dimpled fruit in it, like a pineapple. Maybe a uh, coconut's got like three dimples. Look at that pineapple. 
get what you wish for. Not a very good wish. Uh, if you do have a wish, three wishes or otherwise, I recommend you don't spend one of them on a pineapple. Again, uh, consult a healthcare professional before making a wish. I am uh, not a healthcare professional myself. But I just feel that uh, dimpled as a pineapple is, there's probably better things that you could get out of a genie, you know? Or, uh, you know, a wand of wishing. I'm not going to discriminate against uh, all forms of, uh, of wishing here. Come on, give me that big loot. What is even... The biggest piece of loot I could find here. Maybe like a ruby. I do like these islands though. Hey, is this, uh, this is that island. This is where I shot skeletons for an hour. And my skeleton, uh, or not skeletons, palm trees. This is the exact spot I was just shooting these palm trees for an hour straight. Just to work on my aim. I, uh, I changed the joystick settings though, so I kind of got to, uh, kind of got to come back, spend another hour with the new, uh, the new response curve. But... It helped. Help me shoot a man in his gut. I uh, won a fight thanks to that practice. So. No complaints there. Oh, hello, ghost. Is it me you're looking for? Do you want dimples on your door? Chicken. Do I like chicken? Chicken's alright. Some chain shot, a couple of cannonballs, nothing good. Oh yeah, you know what I was gonna do too? I was gonna take uh, these gunpowder barrels and I was gonna practice dropping them off the back of my ship while I'm in motion. Probably not something I should do like on stream today, but like uh, the whole idea of getting like really proficient at uh, bringing it up from under under the hold there. And, uh, I don't know what, ooh, what was I talking about? Talking about a mermaid gem. There it is. Big Sky Vike says I'd wish for five pineapples. No more, no less, because I can't carry more than that. That's even daring to carry five pineapples. I'd stick with four because it's like two in each hand. I know you could balance the one in the middle. Put, uh, put it under your chin. But, uh, it's a lot of chickens, man. It's a big old chicken congregation there. But uh, yeah, I think that just with the spikes and the dimples there that they might, uh, at least in my case, maybe cut my face or something. I actually cut my face on uh, stream the other day. You couldn't see it. It wasn't like bleeding or anything. I don't think the camera's like HD enough to pick it up, but I was like scratching myself and I looked at it afterwards and it was like a cat scratched me in the face. I was like, when did that happen? It's bizarre. But uh, five pine pineapples, that's a good wish. Like, you know, I was saying, I wouldn't wish for one, but five, uh, five's good. Like you said, I mean, that's probably the absolute limit of, uh, what a human being could carry in terms of pineapples. Ammo crate. Not really something I need solo sleeping, but it's always good to have. Alright, gonna swing around the corner here, put a couple of extra dimples for speed in the bottom of my ship, using the sandbar method. Then we're gonna, uh, we're gonna see, we're gonna see if that galleon's there. Looks like a nice fog bank. Is that the port? I can't even tell if that's the port. The port's over here, though. I guess. Jeez, that's crazy. That's a crazy amount of fog that just rolled in. Get out of here. 
just enough water for the rats to play in. Right on, right on. Oh, there's the port. It's like, do I have any idea where I am? Who am I? What year is it? Come with me if you want to live. I need your clothes and your motorcycle. Etc, etc. Big Sky Vike said, great time to roll up and cake a galley that can't see you. Yeah, it would be. I had those cakes too. That galley is, uh, they're gone. Oh. That's it, isn't it? I'm looking at the wrong port. I mean, what I meant to say was I, I knew that that was port all along. Is anybody buying this? <laughs> oh, jeez. Oh, jeez. Yeah, I should have grabbed that powder keg. That'd be funny. I could have parked behind this rock. Swam up and kicked him. I'm just, uh, you know, I'm on the clock here doing these merchant voyages. Come run, uh, come run 21, I'm really gonna mix it up. There'll be kickings, there'll be shenanigans, there'll be all courts, sorts of stuff, but when I set my mind to uh, do something, I gotta do it, man. So I'm all like, gotta get this data, gotta get this data for the subreddit. Even though, like I was saying before, man, I'm gonna like, uh, I'm gonna post it and people are just gonna just be just absolute miserable doomers like they always are on that website. Just be like, oh, 100 hours doesn't prove anything. You just got lucky. All you do is run away from ships anyways. And it's like, well, like, okay. You either gotta get good at PvP or you gotta run from people, bro. Like, there's really no other option. But, I don't know. I'm gonna do it anyways, man. I'm gonna prove it. I kinda feel like, uh... You know Andy Kaufman? I don't know if that's a dated reference. I mean, it is a dated reference, but he was that comedian uh, where he was all like, he's saying that uh, he's like, "Oh, wrestling is fake. Wrestling is fake." And then he and then he went, he's like, "I'll prove it that it's fake." And then he just like would only wrestle women. Everybody hated him. Sometimes I feel like Andy Kaufman out here because I'm just like, "There's no PVP in this game." Big Sky Vug says, man on the moon. Uh, yeah, so you do know the reference, yeah. I feel a little bit like Annie Kaufman, like I'm doing a, like an anti-stream. Because it's like, I didn't mean to like... Like, I really thought there'd be more PvP when I started doing these runs. Like, I thought I'd get a bunch of chase footage and all this stuff and everything else. And then, like, so far, what I've kind of proven is it's like... This game is actually really chill. And, like... The only people who uh, mainly aren't chill are pe are streamers, streamers like me, who go out there and they just like blow people up for footage, right? So I'm doing like this anti-stream where I'm just like exposing um, the true nature of the game, how it's like not even really, uh, it's not really a PvP game, man. Like you're just basically blowing kids up and calling them sweaty. But I didn't, I didn't mean to do it, man. I didn't mean to do it. It's like, yeah, I just wanted to do a little bit of uh, a little bit of fun, a little bit of fun journalism, and it's like I accidentally stumbled upon a dark secret, a dark secret of Sea of Thieves. Big Sky Vike says, or uh, Tony Clifton, and shake it up. <laughs> yeah, Tony Clifton's great. I could do a Tony Clifton thing out here. Get some, get some sunglasses. Oh man, come on. Take a dump or get off the pot, you guys. I guess I could pull in the other side. They're at the Sovereign deck. I could just use the uh, the regular... Oh no, the regular <laughs> regular dock's like right there. It's 30 feet from them. But yeah, I kind of feel like I'm out here just like... Oh, this game has no PvP, but then I'm just like running from everybody as well, right? But I'm just trying to prove that like... That, uh, you know... It's not like you see somebody from across the map and then they just sail towards you and double gun you, light your ship on fire every time. And that's like, if you went into the subreddit, man, you'd think that that's what this game literally is. There's a ton of people who are clamoring for a PvE only mode. 
and it's like uh, 75 hours and I've only had two runs go bad so Big Sky Bike says Charles is just sitting in his sovereign throne not leaving anytime soon yeah I think probably what happened is uh, what what people do is they unload and then they just like alt F4 instead of quitting the game properly so their ship doesn't scuttle it just sits there for 10 minutes So, I mean, it's probably safe. I could, like, uh, park behind an island and swim over there, find out. Should have grabbed that rowboat. I could have done that as well, but... I'm, uh, I'm pretty patient. As anybody who's watched this stream you know, has, uh, has known by now. Can't wait for... Uh, can't wait for stream 21, though. Big Sky Vike says, does Chucky have an emissary flag up? No, it doesn't look like it. I think you're absolutely correct. It's, there's probably nobody in it, like. So, I mean, if it was a sloop, I'd head over there. I could swim it from here, but like, the whole thing is if there's somebody in the galleon, I swim over there. And then they launch the galleon and come after my uh, my sloop. Their massive speed advantage. I'd probably get toast pretty quick. Captain Doby says, probably time to shoot over and investigate then. Doby, I'm saying I can't do that. I'm making excuses not to do that. I don't want to lose this run, but like... Yeah, I guess I should. I guess I should go check it. Check it out. Um, let me check my heading here. Wouldn't be the first time. What I want to do is, uh, it's too bad I couldn't shoot over with a, a storage crate in my hands because uh, I wanted to steal all their supplies as well before I set them free. Captain Toby says, well, you'd be fine. They're anchored pointed directly at the Sovereign Dock. Yeah. Yeah, I'm also concerned about, you know, like, Give myself a little bit more speed. Where are my ships going to go here if it's just going to go into uh, uncharted waters? Southeast just ends up uh, crashing into the Reaper's hideout. But uh, you know what? <laughs> Big Sky says best Palpatine voice. Do it. <laughs> yeah, alright. Just don't tell anybody I did this, okay? If anybody asks, I'm, I'm just a merchant commodity. Just a merchant commodity guy. I don't do this kind of stuff. I'm not like a regular streamer, okay? It's four and a half hours in anyways. If this gets me killed, I'm just going to uh, take the night off. <laughs> there she goes. The finest sloop on the Sea of Thieves. Okay, I got my push to talk on as well, so they're not going to hear me coming from 200, uh, 200 miles away again. Didn't they have their, uh, didn't they have their sails up last time we looked? Oh no, you said, uh, raise sails, so probably not. Okay. Oh, pfft, there's my fucking mermaid. <laughs> Yeah, looks good. Looks good. Looks clear. Looks clear. Hoo ah. Yeah, okay. Yep, 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 yep. That's a nice haul. Now the question is, do I even bother to move it or should I just leave it here? Cause these guys are, these guys are long gone.
kind of want to light it on fire just out of principle, but... Yeah, I'll see if they got a firebomb. Locally. You know what? I mean, got so many of them, anyways. Why podcast? There's no time to comment on the military industrial complex affecting all of our lives. In there just for good measure. Yeah. Turning up the heat. Getting a little smoky. Refill my blunder bombs. That'll do. Get me out of here. Mermaid. Excellent. That's faster than an Uber. Now that's a mermaid with some dimples. As I go onto my ship and my ship's on fire, the old switcheroo. Please enjoy these uh, original Xbox One loading times. It's an excellent, uh, excellent opportunity to gaze into the abyss. Think about your entire life as you stare into darkness. Yeah, that's right, podcast. Depression. Depression and, um, oh. <laughs> uh, probably should have made sure the ship didn't have holes in it before I did that, right? This never happened. Yeah, I'm a professional. I don't even know where I am. Like, where, where is the, uh... Okay, there we go, that's Golden Sands. I think probably what happened is it, uh, ran into an island. On its own there. Uh, that was north, right? Should be behind that spire. I think. Yep, northwest. I'm surprised I never, uh, never figured that out sooner that I guess if they're in port and you, uh, you don't see an emissary flag on them, they're probably long, long gone, because nobody's going to lower the emissary and hang out for an hour. But you never know. They could have been drinking go grog, playing the banjo, putting dimples in their gear, getting ready for the future. Oh yeah, it's, uh, it's scuttled by now, anyways. Not the bell. I keep hitting that bell with my head. It's uh, not the way I recommend installing dimples on your own skull. So it's loud. Uh, it might not only damage your hearing, but you will likely get the neighbors uh, complaining from the sound of uh, hitting your head on that bell to install uh, enough dimples to give you any kind of uh, a fuel mileage increase on your own skull. I'm telling you, you're going to see that in the Olympics uh, this year or whatever the next Olympics is because I, I really don't care about the Olympics like most normal people. The Olympics is weird, man, but uh, I'll, I'll get into that another time. But anyways, the point being, dimples, dude. People in the next Olympics are going to be covered, covered in dimples. 
Captain Dolby says, wonder if you can check the captain's logbook to see if they're gone, like if it blanks out the names of the crew members. That's a good point as well. Uh, probably not. Just because, like, um, when you quit the game uh, the wrong way by Alt F4ing or by uh, hucking your Xbox through the window, like some people do, um, it'll save a server spot for 10 minutes so nobody else can join the crew, so it probably still has your name in the logbook. Because uh, if you log out the correct way and there's nobody left in the crew, your ship scuttles almost immediately. So, you know. Is anybody playing, uh, any Sea of Thieves players watching this, man? You quit a public crew. Quit it the right way. Do the right thing. Eat your chicken McNuggets. You know? Don't do drugs. Stay in school. Quit through the menu. Not school. Don't quit, uh, don't quit school through the menu. God, that would be great. Man, I always have these, uh, reoccurring dreams where I'm back in high school. And I'm in my 30s, right? And it's just, like... Just the stupidest dreams ever, because I'm like in my 30s and everybody else is a teenager. I had one the other week, and it was exam time. It was like the ending exams, and I was like, I'm not, I'm not going to the exams. It's pointless. And they're like, Well, if you don't, if you don't graduate, you can't come back next year. And I'm like, Lady, I'm 34. I don't think I'm coming back next year. Like this is the stupidest, the stupidest situation I've ever been in. Dreams are so weird, man, because it's like. You'll just be in these situations that are completely, uh, complete nonsense, right? It's like I was somehow, like, lucid enough to realize that, like, being a 34-year-old man in a high school was pointless, but I wasn't lucid enough to realize that I was dreaming at the same time. So, I don't know. That made me laugh when I woke up, though. They're actually usually pretty enjoyable dreams to have because, like, in the dream I'll be, like, all stressed out about school and nonsense, and then I wake up and I'm like, oh, yeah, okay. Well, none of that was real. That was, like, a bunch of pointless stress. You ever wonder if that's, like, uh... Maybe that's life, man. Is like, someday we just wake up from life and then we go, oh, dude. That was all pointless. That was all nonsense. It's real deep, dude. Real deep, like the dimples on a pineapple. Big Sky Vike says you can check your recently played with players list to see if the crew is still on server as well. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Because, uh, okay, I was wondering this the other day. Yeah, other crews, all other crews. No, it doesn't show it in here. It showed in the arena. Some guy was sending me, uh, he was sending me these hate messages yesterday where he's like, oh. What's with all the running, like, blah, blah, blah. We sank you 30 times and all this, all these messages. And it was like, yeah, you got the wrong guy, man. Like, I don't have my USB uh, keyboard plugged in, so I can't, uh, I can't write them back. I mean, I guess I could through the, the thumb, the thumb messages. It would take me so long to do, but. I don't know where that guy got my name, that he thought that I was the sloop. So. It says it was like a two man in a brig or something. Then, uh, then yeah, it got me all paranoid because I was doing those uh, those cargo drops, and I was like, okay, if someone's sending me messages over Xbox Live, obviously I'm within visual range, and I'm currently like, I got my bowsprit buried in the sand, so I was like, uh, what? Then I sailed out, and everything was good. I didn't see a brig anywhere. So. Be quick, time's precious. One of those mysteries of seas of thieves. Big Sky Vike says, hold down Xbox button at uh, will and scroll down to recently played players. Yeah. Yeah, because that'll show you, um, that'll show you everybody recently. I guess it'll, you can tell because it's like whoever's still on Sea of Thieves is still in, uh, still in the game. There. I got kind of a bad memory though, so I, I couldn't remember uh, who even was on the ship. It was like Charles, but who was the captain? Oh yeah, it was Highlock. It was Highlock 12 because I friggin' have seen that guy before. So. Okay. Now, now I look like a liar about my memory. Unbelievable. I'm just, uh, I'm just a fraud, man. I can't even forget things properly. It's a weird thing about memory, though, right? Is it's like, 
at least with me there's some things i'll just i'll just never remember and then other things i can remember because it has to have some sort of like go, go, go. some sort of story or relevance to my situation then i can remember it that's how i came up with this uh, wonderful organization which is like kind of falling apart today but but I put uh, organic substances on the left and then non-organic substances on the right and then it's least complex in the back and most complex in the front and that's how I remember because if you don't like um, make up a reason for your organization then you just have to like uh, you know Memorize it through uh, repetition, which takes a lot longer. Ooh, those gemstones, spices. Milestone class 33 and gold earned. That's great. It's here. Next to the rest of the crates. God, I wish these crates had dimples on them, man. I'd be doing this 10% faster. It's crazy. I'm gonna write. Uh, I'm gonna write rare. Dear rare, I am your biggest fan. Please put dimples on the commodity crates. We would all appreciate being able to carry them 10% faster. What are you looking at, podcast? Are you looking at the violence inherent in the system? Are you going to tell us about everything that's going wrong in the world today? Yeah, I don't know. I don't know about that podcast. I don't know. Speaking of podcasts, Doomsday Podcast, man, I was listening to a bunch of those videos about the magnetic pole shift. I was joking about that earlier, but like, holy, are those people ever stupid, man. For some reason, they think that like when the poles shift, the world is literally going to stop turning. And there's absolutely no reason for that to be the case. Like a whole planet just can't stop turning in a day, dude. It's the stupidest thing I've ever heard. It's so stupid. I can't believe that, like, uh, dudes like Joe Rogan can sit down with those guys and just keep a straight face and be like, oh, wow. Because I totally get, like, you know, maybe um, since it's uh, the magnetic poles or whatever, we got the magnetosphere over the Earth that protects us from the sun's harmful rays, protects us from the uh, the judgment of ultraviolet, the uh, ultraviolet judgment of the sun or whatever. But, um... But the whole idea that like the, the planet's gonna stop rotating and then like we're all just gonna fly off the globe because we're going like a thousand kilometers a second and then suddenly we just stop dead. And then like uh, all the, uh, the water is supposed to wash over like a big tidal wave. It's so absurd. It's so beyond absurd. And I've, uh, I know about absurdity, man. Let me tell you, I've watched a lot of YouTube videos. Some of them existed. Some of them I uh, only dreamt about. They're pretty crazy things, but like, dude, these doomsday guys are just hilarious. I don't even know why they think that's going to happen. It has something to do with, uh, like, interpretations of religious scripture, and I'm not even joking. And then he has these guys on, and they're trying to say they're scientists. And it's like, what's the scientific basis for the world just, like, suddenly not turning? It's just complete insanity, man. Funny stuff. Yeah, there was a uh, there was another thing. Oh yeah, watching those videos on those UAPs because they call them uh, like UFOs. They call them UAPs now. And the more videos I watch on those, the more I think that it's just like complete. Like uh, like I've been saying, I think they're like atmospheric phenomenon or something. Because it's just it's just to the point where I'm not even like interested in them anymore. Because th now the ones they see they go like Mach 33, and they can they can fly in and out of the ocean without breaking the sound sound barrier or making a splash. And it's like okay, at what point is an object so ridiculous and so above and beyond our understanding of physics that like we should just stop caring about it? 
because it's like, uh, how is this thing going to go 33 times the speed of sound? And you're telling me it's a physical object, but not only does it not for? obey the laws of physics in its movement, but it literally has no interaction with physical objects. Like, that to me sounds like you're not explaining a physical object anymore. But they're still just so, like, uh... You know? They keep picking them up on their, uh... Their different, uh, I don't know, radar. They got, uh, a different thing. Some guy, like, the, the pilots in the Air Force, the Naval Air Force, when they fly over the ocean, they say they see them with their, uh... With their eyes. And I'm not, like... I'm not denying that they see them, but at the same time, I think they're probably just, like... Just something we don't understand, man. About, like, energy. You know? I don't think that they're uh, from off-planet, and I don't think that they're, like... They're, um... I don't know. The only other thing that some guy was talking about that I think could be, uh... Could be the case is, uh... Is they're, like, drones, right? They're, like, unmanned drones from an alien civilization. And I think that's trippy to think about that. Like, there is a civilization that's so advanced that they made these uh, unmanned drones that they just sent out all over the galaxy, man. And they go to every planet and they just rip around at 33 times the speed of sound and they can fly through physical matter and they just collect information just to send back. That's maybe possible, but I don't think that there's anybody like... Uh, necessarily even collecting the information anymore. I think that's one of those things that it's like uh, that civilization could be like a billion years destroyed and their drones are still flying around the universe, man. Because, yeah, it's one of those things like I don't, I really didn't expect to watch like, I was like into that stuff and then the more of those videos I watched and especially like the new ones, it's like the less interest I got in it because I was like, okay, these aren't flying saucers, man. These are just like I don't know. They say they look like cubes inside of a inside of a ball of some sort of energy. But it's like, dude, I don't even know what to tell you. It's just like it's little green men in flying uh flying Tupperware or nothing, man. I don't care. I don't care if there's no uh there's no little green men. Show me the green men. Gotta wonder if you put uh, dimples on one of those things, would it be able to reach, uh, you know, Mach 37? Or maybe that's actually the uh, the pinnacle of dimple technology, is that, uh, you know, these things can fly around and they have absolutely no wind resistance. No, uh, no resistance to any matter at all, that they can just kerplunk into the water. And, uh, and that's it, man. Wouldn't even see a splash. Am I going east? That's not right, should be southeast. You find it really interesting though. The skepticism of the whole thing. I mean obviously they're uh, observing something, right? But I never thought that I'd ever believe that uh, UFOs um, were real, but I'm just not interested in them anymore because it's like, oh those sound dumb. Sounds stupid. They're going too fast. I don't care. But yeah, you get people like uh, Neil Tyson and scientists like that, and they're just like, "Oh, it's like a, it's a goose," or like the, the uh, instruments are out of calibration. There was actually one guy. I can't remember if it was Thunderfoot or somebody else on YouTube, and he actually made a video where he said it was a, a duck, trying to imply that like. Somebody with a pilot's license who flies jets uh, across the ocean hundreds of times previous in his lifetime wouldn't know what a duck looked like um, on radar or otherwise. Like, this guy making YouTube videos is the only person to have ever thought that maybe it could have been a bird. And he just says it with such, like, conviction and confidence. Like, I get more uh, more of a kick out of watching the skeptic videos than I do of the, uh, the actual videos of the UAPs themselves because, man, the hoops these guys jump through just to, like, just to say that this stuff is, like, absolutely does not exist and the people who have any inkling of believing in it are complete idiots. When it's like, can you not just admit that, like, maybe there's, like, just something out there that doesn't necessarily have to be, like, uh, even meaningful in any way? It just happens to exist. Like, you know, 
I really think it's just like an atmospheric, some sort of weird atmospheric thing, man. But, uh, you know, I'd have to call up the reptilians and see what they say. They haven't given me an answer back. The whole thing is that, like I said, every time I try to communicate with those guys, they only, uh, they only communicate in fax messages. And they keep, uh, they keep faxing me at, uh, 3 a.m., only when I'm asleep. If I'm awake, I don't get any messages. Damn fax machine is so loud. They send me, uh, page after page after page of just, uh, blank black bars just to use up all my cartridges in the machine so I mean anytime I ask the reptilians anything I just uh, I just hope it's uh, incredibly important and I don't think I have a big enough interest in UAPs to uh, ask them that question probably just gonna try to uh, sell me a dimpling service that I don't require incredible merchants incredible merchants reptilian aliens Merchants and manipulators, man. That's all they are. They're like the middlemen of the galaxy. Okay, so when I'm at quarter to five, man, I sure, uh, sure used up a lot of time. Just, uh, sailing around that galleon. Get some wind. Is this something we can do? a little bit of wind, get some dimples on my sail, get going here, come on. I don't want to go west, but it'll be quicker if I do. Go a little west and then I'll sail east. Oh, even though that's, uh, that's plunder right there. Oh, the luck of a merchant only had a machine that could control the wind. That uh, trident of dark tides, man, that's what they need. You gotta get a staff you can uh, raise up into the air and it changes the wind direction. It would be called the uh, the merchant staff of, uh, of wind breaking, but every time you use it, all it does is it changes the wind so it's a direct headwind for your boat. It doesn't change it to like a crosswind or a backwind, it only changes it to a headwind. It would be like the most useless item in the game. Keep saying I'm gonna figure out these wind uh, currents, but yeah, I don't know. I feel like the wind blows a little differently than it used to. Because he used to switch every, uh, I want to say every 10 minutes, but I can't remember if it was, uh, if it was in-game minutes or if it was, <laughs> or if it was real-time minutes. It, it definitely wasn't in-game minutes because that's like 10 seconds, right? But, but yeah, I don't know. Sure would be nice. Sure would be nice to get a little win for once. away. Oh, I forgot to sell the hat. Good lord. That would have been a stream ender. Where's the nearest uh, the nearest actual port here? I gotta sell this thing. Oh, hey, how's it going there, Reapers? Uh, finest trading post. I know it's kind of ridiculous to do, but I'm actually probably gonna uh, 
Probably gonna go out east to that finest trading post and then loop loop back down around because I want to sell it in case I get hit by the reapers. They're doing a skull for it or something. I just want to make sure that they don't uh, finish up what they're doing and then come over here, cash out or whatever. It looks like a skull for it. I can kind of see it next to the storm, but. Not really. Yeah, I'll sail out west, sell that hat. This is gemstones, right? Sure is gemstones off of my ship. You know, I don't really complain about plunder, but uh, it is one of the longer docks. It's no dagger tooth, but it is actually kind of BS. Take your time. Count those coins. Shut up, podcast. Nobody wants to hear it. Give me those spices. Give me those spices. This is actually moderate to severely sketchy on the sketchy meter, considering how close that reaper is. I was just talking about how I don't have a, I don't have a, don't have a see them. Don't ever see those reapers on the PC servers. And here they are. Speak of the devil, and it smells like brimstone. Beware. Might just be the dog, though. I haven't washed him in a long time. He's too proud to be cleaned by a crewmate, as he is the captain. No big deal, just walking my stones in. Having a nice leisurely stone walk. of my stream I have sunk the reaper ship using nothing but my mind never underestimate the powers of the merchant menace that's it couldn't take it saw me sail in the port and he knew that he was done toast In uh, all complete seriousness, uh, that almost makes me more nervous. I have no idea why a, a rank 3 Reaper would just disappear in the middle of a, middle of a whatever they were doing there. They might have gotten sunk if they were doing a skull fort. Somebody could have rolled up, blasted them. Maybe... Uh, Maybe it was supper time. Their door dash showed up. Chicken tenders were done in the, uh, the old microwave there. It's tough, tough to get into the mind of a reaper. Usually, to do so, I have to have to put a, a, a vice on my head and just squeeze it and squeeze it and squeeze it, squeeze it and squeeze it. Never giving more than two cranks. Two cranks every 15 minutes. Again, I'm I'm not a healthcare professional, so um, if if you know you do decide to put a uh, vice on your head, please consult a doctor before doing so. Ask your doctor if a head vice is right for you. You know, you'd have to remove it. 
from uh, from somewhere first. I don't recommend putting your head in a vise if it's attached to a table because that limits your uh, range of movement. But turn that crank. Turn that crank a little bit and soon you'll uh, you'll understand. You'll get to see. You get to see things the way a reaper crew gets to see them. One turn at a time. Until eventually Logging out at a skull fort with only three bars on your emissary flag. Understand. Okay, my paranoia has completely passed. I'm no longer paranoid. That's the update. That's my emotional update. Should be good. Feel completely safe. Feel like I'm uh, wrapped in a big burrito tortilla. You know? Completely comforted by uh, by corn. I mean, what's tortilla? Tortilla is made out of corn, right? I think it's made out of corn flour. Probably has some egg in there. It's a comforting thing to be uh, to be wrapped in. Feels good. Feel like a big old burrito. Ready for service. Got some beef. Beef, chicken, cheese. A little bit of bean. Not too much bean. Okay, put some more bean in there. A little more bean. A little more bean. That's enough bean. A little bit of lettuce. Just for color. Can't taste it anyways. And uh, a little bit of corn too. Corn, corn kernels. Forget the kernels. Put a whole cob in there. Just uh, smear it around the cob. Wrap the cob in the tortilla. That's good. That's perfect. And that's what it feel like. So just imagine that. Perfect, perfect, perfect. The perfect food to eat on the go. Okay, so... Uh, getting out of plunder. That's the last for plunder. I'll organize these on the go. I am going to go over to uh, that trading post, though. I'm going to trade this hat in. I think that's... Uh, Probably one of the rarest items in the game, so I don't want to miss out on that commendation. All right. Engage the dimpling. Let's go warp four. Excellent, excellent, excellent. Check my heading here. I don't go over to this uh, trading post very often, so I have no idea where it even is. Ah, oh, bro, it's so far out there. Is there another one down here somewhere? Oh. Ah. Noises of discontent. Ah, oh, it should be. It should be fine. It's just a quick jaunt. Things I do just to turn in an old hat with barnacles, I'll tell ya. Sailing an extra three nautical miles. Good thing I enjoy it. Get these crates sorted out. The coast is still clear. Get these spices on the front. Spices on the front. Get these spices on the front. This one too. I think what we're gonna do with these spices here is we're gonna put them on the front. 
think um, probably these spices. Uh, I'm thinking probably front front is where these are gonna go. These spices here, we're gonna put them on the front. These silks, we're gonna put them by the spices. Perfect, perfect. Create a broken stone. Put it with the stone. Put it with the other stone. Okay, that's good. That's good. Everything's perfect. Everything's where it should be. Everything in its uh, perfect place. Perfect little place. Don't touch the crates. Don't touch the crates, podcast. Don't move my crates. Everything's where I want them. Where is podcast? Did we leave him on the shore? Oh, there he is. Can't get rid of him. Podcast is here to stay. You'd think that uh, you would have been made obsolete by Bidcast, but nope. Podcast is still here. Wow, good heading, Hogwild. Oh, that's just perfect. That is just doing such a good job. Thanks, viewers. Thanks for that encouragement. The joke, of course, being that I'm not even close. I'm not even close to the trading post. I think that's probably it right up there. It's all good, though. Get to shoot at some pigs. Taking bets. That wasn't even close. Chickens. Ooh, that wasn't even close. We got another pig. No whammy. No whammy this time. Finest trading post. Is that like, uh, whenever you go to a city and they're like, uh, America's best pizza? And it's never, it's never the best? How do they get away with that? Is it because I'm the only person who's dumb enough to fall for it every time? I mean, I, I keep trying to sue them, but it's like doesn't it doesn't really matter how many lawyers you have if none of them uh, none of them will call you back. Finest, world's finest pizza, world's best cup of coffee. It's all a lie. The, uh, the f world's finest pizza, I think, are the friends we make along the way, you know? You know what I'm saying? You can't put that in a deep dish and serve it up. I mean, you could. You could if you were, uh, you know, like Hannibal Lecter, but... But if you're gonna do that, once again, consult your local healthcare practitioner. And ask him if a deep dish pizza serving of uh, serving of your friends is uh, right for you. I don't recommend it. I think it's a, a bad way to live. Unholy and unnatural. An affront to humanity natural way of the universe in general. Deep dish pizza. Deep dish pizza in general, I think, is unholy. Never mind uh, what you make it with. You know, it's like... I didn't sell these. What, uh, what are you hiding there? What are you hiding there in uh, all that dish? Why has it got to be so deep, you know? It's like you tell me that it's just more pizza more pizza in the dish, but I have no proof of that until I bite into it, you know? It's like you're trying to hide something in the deepness of the dish. You can't just, uh, you can't just make a, a pizza deeper and expect there to be no consequences. It's, uh, it's unbelievable. Unbelievable to, to live that way. Okay. Here we go. I'm gonna sell my old hat finally. This is great. This is just great. Fantastic. Maybe if I'm lucky, I'll get the bowsprit caught for the third time this stream. There it is. Guaranteed content here. 
Perfect. Perfect, perfect, perfect. Wouldn't be a merchant voyage. Wouldn't be a solo slooping experience without getting the bowsprit. Bowsprit cut. Why even. Uh, okay, let me see. That hat. What is that? Uh, hat sold. 10 coins. How can me and my family help you? Say hello to my father if you see him. What a man. Yeah, I'll, uh, I'll make sure to do that. Thanks for the 10 coins. I don't know how many of those you got to turn in for something to happen, but that's one, I guess. Did I even get a screenshot of that hat? Good lord. Whatever. I guess it's uh, it's on it's on stream, so I'm being an idiot. The whole thing's uh, one magical moving screenshot. Can you believe this technology? Did I uh? I didn't make any jokes about being a little man trapped in a box yet. I'm gonna have to do that at the start of the stream. No, it's way too far into the stream to be making that joke, but it's like, oh help, I'm trapped in a box. I'm trapped in a box, right? It's like I'm I'm trapped in this box in the corner of your screen. Uh am I doing this right? Uh, okay, whatever, I'm done with that joke. That's not original or funny. Okay, so uh, now we just have to hit up Ancient Spire Outpost, uh, Moro's Peak, and Galleon's Grave. That'll be the last three ports. I'll check out a Dagger Tooth. That'll be it for uh, tonight's voyage here. My guess is it's uh, probably going to go for another hour and a half. Unless I can catch some wind. Uh, already at maximum dimplage on the ship, so... There's no way I'm going to be able to get any more of a speed advantage. What is that? Just one little, uh... It's like a cannonball crate or something just chilling in the middle of the water. Well, that's unsettling. Where am I? Who am I? What year is it? Are these dimples? Or were they always a part of me? Yep. Yep, this is it. That's the sea, all right. So, uh, that there's Plunder Outpost. Beautiful. Golly gee, I really did not need to, uh, sail all that way out of the way just to deposit that hat. That was probably not necessary. But you know what? I'll just, uh, I'll get over it. We all make mistakes. Happy little accidents, I guess. I mean, I'm sure if you if you deposit enough of them, they give you some commendation of some sort. Pat on the butt there, an attaboy. Good job there, sailor. That's all I wanted. Just want a little recognition. Job well done, you know. That's all anybody really wants, I think. Run 15. Run 15. Run 15. I'm gonna make it, man. I'm gonna make it. I just got five more of these and then I'm gonna mix it up. Then I'm gonna mix it up, man. It's just funny. It's funny, though. The things that, uh. The personal commitments that I make, you know? But this is good. This is good. Gives me practice. Good streaming practice. Or, uh, or something like that. I'm going to sail right through that storm, obviously. Get some more of those uh, commendations on the old ill-fated. Old ill-fated crest. I've got the crest. I want the uh, legendary ill fated title, though. What am I at here for that thing? Ship's log. St 
star date 24064. I'm alone on this ship, floating through the vast expanse of, uh, you know, wherever we're at here. Ship milestones, yeah. Here. Voyager 207, how you like that? Ill fated 49. I don't know what, uh, I don't know what legendary is. I think it's, uh, 75 or something. Might be 90. Time sunk. Only sunk five times. That's such a gnarly way to, uh, get that up. You gotta sink 15 times for one, one, uh, one commendation level. It's like, holy, that's a lot of sinking. I think it's easier to just uh, cut through storms and whatnot. Captain's log. Somebody get me off of this ship. Somebody get this ship out of this storm. That's fine, it's just a little one. My uh, compass isn't even spinning. Oh. I wonder if lightning struck the ocean if it would make a splash. I gotta look that up now. I wonder if we have any footage of that. Probably do. Horizon still looks clear. Come on now. Just a little bit further. That's a nice wave. It's like the ocean is waving to me. Because it's, uh... Because it's just so friendly, you know. It never stops waving. Hello. Hello, C. Looking good today. Um, an unironically nice looking sunrise, though. That's cool. I like the washed out colors from the storm as well. Never disappoints around here. See it peeps. I am actually making my way through uh, these wood stores I bought. It's pretty crazy. I guess uh, that uh, skelly sloop I hit kind of went on forever. Oh, look at that! Look at that! I got it. The legendary ill fated ship title. I thought it was 75, but it's 50. Nope. I'm happy, man. I'm going to put that on at the end of the stream for sure. I love that. Legendary ill fated. It's like the worst title, so it's the best title. It's like ironically cool. Especially considering my ship's only sunk five times. But I feel like, uh, I feel like if you have a legendary ill fated title on your ship, people just like don't even chase after you. Because they're just like, oh, it's just Charlie Brown. Just Charlie Brown's sailing around, man. Just give him a break. That's like Sun Tzu's Art of War. If your uh, enemy thinks that uh, you are undimpled, then uh, have dimples, you know? If your enemy thinks you're dimpled, then be undimpled. It's all about throwing your enemy off balance. Take another look there at Ancient Spire. Got a nice fog bank here. Well, not quite. It's just ambient fog. That almost looks like usable fog over there. Okay, lopsided lobster. I don't even know. I don't even know where that ship is that I just spotted. How how useless am I on this uh, spyglass? Like, where did I hit that, man? 
Ancients is kind of important. <laughs> I hope he's not an Ancient. That's so weird. Oh yeah, he is. He's between the two. Okay. Combat to Sushi. That's cool. I'll just, uh... I'll just, I don't know, you know, I'll just deal with it. Deal with it the way I usually do. I think this is actually a legit fog bank over here, so... How's my wind? Wind is no good for evasive maneuvering, but uh, if I sneak over here to uh, the fog bank, it should be good. Probably just another guy who uh, punched his computer as hard as he could to log off, so I gotta wait for the ship to despawn. Too bad I can't see the uh, the top of the mast from here. Oh yeah, I can. Doesn't look like he's got an emissary. It is a brig though. Because that's a galleon. I don't know. That's a galleon. That's a big old, big old galleon. One of them there, fat bottom girls we were talking about earlier. Is it a fresh, or is he checking out? That's not at the Sovereign Dock, so that looks like he might be fresh. Well. Didn't buy any, didn't buy any bait. Unbelievable. Guess I'll just check this island, kill some time, park behind it, run around a little bit, see if I can find another ruby. You know, why not? 4.2 mil, so it's looking to be a pretty standard run. But uh, you know, could always use an extra piece of uh, piece of uh, gemstone there, so I can eat it and get superpowers. Of course, once again, consult a healthcare practitioner before imbibing uh, minerals or any other uh, solid undigestible substance. Ask your family doctor if eating gemstones is for you. between the eyes. Shut up, podcast. I don't want to hear it. You're going to tell me about animal cruelty and factory farming? You're going to ruin hamburgers for me? Is that what you want to do? Oh, he's on the move. I don't think I'm spotted at all. Please don't turn left. Please don't turn left. Using my mind powers, don't turn left. You can't see me. You can't see me. You can't. Okay, yeah, we're good. What do we got here? A bunch of dead snakes. Hey, I'll take that. I don't know what that is, but I'll take it. It's mine now. Thank you very much. Up, up and away. I guess I could have harpooned it up like a civilized being. Villainous bounty skull. Did that come from the snake? Because that's impressive. Some sort of a cobra lord. Cobra lord of the seas. Gotta be a slower way to do this.
Yeah, that makes sense. Sure, why not? Cook it up. Cook it up to eat, man. Make one of them their uh, deep dish pizzas I was talking about. Fuck. Oh shit. It's happening. How's my wind? Absolutely awful. That's what I get for trying to uh, use mind powers. Didn't work, it did the opposite. This isn't a very good island for this either, but at least we're five and a half hours into the run, so. So, uh, it's been a good one, ladies and gentlemen. I'll do the best I can to shake this galleon, but. Uh, I guess I got, uh. I guess I got wind, actually. I can use wind, but. The question is, you know. It's the island I want to use. I'm already at an island. Can't tell how uh, deep these shallows are. There he is. Didn't work. Yeah, I'll just use the wind. If I got the wind, I'll use it. Might just give up. Oh. Missed me, sir. Missed me. Perfect. Now I've got uh, the entire map to just lazily sail up north. And then, uh, you know, whatever. I could run him around this island, but the whole thing is, is uh, you gotta tucker him out first. So, see how long these guys wanna chase me. Devil's Ridge, Ancient Spire. Kraken's Fall would be perfect, but uh, I'll probably get a wind change before then. Geez, it's about time, you know. It's about time. Coming in on uh, how many ever hours it's been here. Absolutely uh, no aggressive ships. Finally, now I got one. We'll see how long uh, he'll stay on the line here. Oh, he's coming. One versus four. I like my odds. Which side is he on? Left side. Now just stay with the wind. Definitely punch through these rocks, though. Too bad I can't see anything. Not that left or the other left? That left. Ah, I should cut through, but this should be fine. I'll just tuck him out on the wind. It's always in the last three ports, isn't it? Funny how that works. You get nothing the whole time, and then the last three ports, everybody wants a piece. Where was that fog bank? That fog bank. Oh, 
Well, looks like they've lost a lot of ground there, but uh, no doubt they are a very, uh, very enduring bunch. They won't give up. They did just start. I think that was a fresh galleon, so they are freshies. Freshies out on the sea here, so if anybody's going to give me a run for my money, it's probably these lads. But it will be interesting to see. Crook's Hollow is no good. That's the uh, that's the one I was using last time. There's just not enough shallows for it uh, for it to work. I always thought it was uh, getting those tight turns in there, and it is to a to a degree. But it's mostly finding a mostly finding an isle, uh, an island with some nice uh, sandy beaches there that you can sail over. So no such luck there. Looks like uh, my dimpling is giving me the advantage in this chase. Captain Dovey says, this is what happens when you don't invite the, the one man to the toga party. He eventually puts a bounty on the merchant menace. Hey, I just deliver the togas, Captain Dovey. I'm not uh, in charge of the uh, the invitations to the parties, okay? They won't even invite me. I keep asking them, you know? I'm like, okay, surely, you know, I'm delivering the togas to Dagger Tooth, so the party's here somewhere, right? And they're like, oh, they, they won't even tell me. They won't even tell me. They, uh, they won't even tell me where the uh, the party is. I always assume it's at the island I'm delivering them to, but then they they they, they kind of say, you know, no, it's not here, it's not here, man, it's somewhere else. Oh, I see. Cam Dovey says exactly, but if you're sunk, who delivers the silk and sugar for the cakes? I get what you're saying, because if they ruin me, then they ruin the party, because I'm like the only one out here delivering commodities, right? So it's like. If someone doesn't invite you to a party, all you gotta do is sink the guy delivering the party supplies. Okay, that makes a lot more sense. Oh, look at that anchor turn! Ain't that beautiful? You don't, you don't often get to see a galleon doing an anchor turn in the wild. Isn't nature amazing, ladies and gentlemen? Just majestic, just majestic. So, so now the question is, where am I? Who am I? What am I doing? Where am I going? What is life? on this crazy blue marble flying through space. Does the Earth have dimples? The Earth has dimples, like a golf ball. It's probably why it's able to orbit the sun so quickly. Only 365 days a loop. Uh, but really the question is here, oh, this is kind of a bit of a fog, a bit of a fog bank as well. Well, that's it, I definitely got away. Um, what I'm trying to say here, though, is uh, I need to figure out how I'm going to approach this situation now because I got to get to Ancient Spire somehow, and I don't want to run into those guys again. So I got to put on my smuggler's cap here, figure out uh, how I'm going to do this. I think what I'm probably going to do is just cut hard east, even though I'm going west. So uh, those guys are to the guys are directly behind me to the east so I'm not, not, I'm not gonna cut hard east uh, but I guess I'll have to circle around north I can either circle around north or circle around south I feel like I'm gonna circle around south I know this seems kind of like a weird thing to do circle around south instead of the north but I feel like they're probably gonna head north so I'll keep going uh, I'll keep going west until I hit uh, Plunder outpost, and then I'll circle back down to the south. They're directly behind me, so they're somewhere around here, probably. And then I'm going to uh, sneak along the bottom of the map here. Doop -a -doop -a -doop -a -doop 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 -do and then I'm going to come back up north to Ancient Spire. Instead of my other alternative, of course, is coming around north, and circling around down somehow, but I feel like since they spotted me in the south, they've already been there looking for targets, so they're probably not going to circle around south again. Plus, they don't know uh, whether I'm going to cut south or north. I think they would probably figure I would cut north uh, if they had any kind of a thought in their head about what uh, what goes on in my head on the uh, Merchant Sloop here. They'd probably expect me to cut around north because there's more map for me to play with up there. 
whereas I circle around the bottom, then I'm uh, crushed against the Red Sea, so that's uh, that's not an ideal uh, place for me to be, which is ac exactly why I'm going to go down there. Do the old double dimple fake out here. So, so much for this being a uh, five and a half hour stream. Looks like we're going to end up going to seven hours, and I'm not even going to I'm not even going to make a make a dollar over a record here or anything. But I probably won't even break 400k. I don't know. Whatever, man. It's no big deal. Maybe I will. Isn't like a, a regular run with supply crates is uh, over 400k? Well, or something. So. Time will tell. God, that's the last time I try to use my friggin' mind powers. <laughs> I really thought they didn't see me, man. I kind of lucked out on spotting them there, but whatever. It's all good. Uh, sea Dogs Arena there. I always think that's a port, the Sea Dogs Arena with all the lights on. But it's not. I was uh, I was really expecting them to follow me for longer. I don't know if uh, you could all tell by my uh, my commentary. You just can't get a good chase like you used to, you know. Unbelievable. And then I say that I'm probably gonna end up running into them again. I gotta keep an eye out. I am of course at the uh, line of sight disadvantage. When you get somebody way up in that crow's nest in a galleon, man, you can see like forever. I can't uh, sail my ship and sit in the crow's nest at the same time, so. So there you go. God, I can't believe I started this video by saying, uh, welcome to the stream, and I, like, said the word stream wrong. I should have just restarted the intro. <laughs> and instead I just went with it. That's the quality guarantee you get with this show, man. Unbelievable. I was just like, whatever, I'm already doing it, I'm doing it, but it's like... It would have been so easy to just restart it. If I mess up literally like the first four words I'm saying. But that was like run number nine, man. It was like just ripping, ripping the intro to pieces. In the worst, uh, worst way possible, and I was like, whatever, just keep going. Just keep going, man, just power through it. Just power through the burn, dude. That's how you get that's how you get stronger. You know? Feel the brain burn. Feel the, the burn in your, your soul, bruh. Looks clear. Those guys will probably log off in twenty minutes anyways. Most crews do. Okay. Looking good. I can actually catch some wind now when I don't really want it. I'm not. Uh, I'm not really trying to get down there as quickly as possible. I'd give them a bit of time for them to uh, sail around. But I really, really doubt they're going to be down here in this part of the map, south of Ancient Spire. Forgot to tell those guys I was streaming on Twitch. Could have gotten a couple more viewers. Would have been great. Was 
awfully nice of them to shoot up a white flare. <laughs> yeah. I was, uh, last time that happened to me, someone shot up a white flare, I was thinking about shooting up a red flare in response as I'm running away from them, just to be like, no, no peace, never peace. I run away angrily. <laughs> but, like, I didn't want to that time. I didn't want to antagonize them, man. I'm almost at the end of this run, so it's like, let's just, uh, let's just get it done. Let's just get the run done, man. These crates need a home. They need a good home. In the eyes of an angel. You know, adopt a crate. Come on. One of these crates could be your new crate. You could uh, rest your feet on it. Or uh, use it. Use it. Use all of them and stack them up and make a wall of crates. And you can build a crate for it with your kids or your significant other. You could, uh, you could imagine what's in the crate. You can't open the crate, but you can imagine what's in the crates. Crates everywhere. Crates on the ship. Crates in your home. Crates in your mind. Crates in your brain when you close your eyes to sleep tonight. Oh. That's a title card. As I'm all like, you know, I don't want to be, uh, I don't want to be driving into a uh, galleon. I don't want a galleon on me, and I'm just, uh, you know, organizing my crates, sailing blindly into the galleon. Sometimes, you know, you just got to uh, approach life head first with your eyes closed, and your mouth open. Breathe through your nose, though. Breathe through your nose. That's my advice if you're going to approach life head first with your mouth open. Don't breathe through your mouth, man. You never know what you're going to run into. Gotta let those uh, mucous membranes uh, clean the air, add moisture to it. Very important process in breathing. Oh, you stupid galleon. They're seriously just chilling at Ancient Spire right now. Like, they, they just don't have anything better to do but just hang out at Ancient Spire all day. That is so stupid. I'm so done with this galleon, man. Well, it's time for another exciting merchant wait off to see uh, what ship can wait the longest. Is it me or is it the galleon? Here's a little uh, here's a little spoiler alert. It's always me. I can wait longer than anybody else in the history of people. I have literally unlimited patience. It's my only superpower. It gets me into trouble though. Because, uh, like I've said before on this stream, I end up in situations where I just, like, listen to people talk about nonsense for 40 hours in a row. And then, uh, they just want to, like, keep, keep telling me things that I don't want to hear. So patience can get you in trouble, man. Patience can get you in trouble, for sure. That's such a stupid thing to say. <laughs> I've said a lot of stupid things in this stream tonight, but that's actually probably probably pretty stupid. Patience, uh, patience can't get you in trouble, man. I'm not. I don't actually have a problem with that. If somebody's telling me something I don't want to hear. I just tell them to f off. But you don't have to get impatient to tell somebody to f off. That's for sure. But I thought it would make for a good joke. Thought I'd make for a good joke. First joke of the night. Wish I had a banner that I could pull a string and a banner comes down behind me. First joke of the night. Confetti drop would drop all over my head. Maybe uh, some balloons would get released. We're not working with that kind of a budget, though. I was thinking of uh, putting up a whiteboard here, though, beside me. And then I could write down, uh, write down all the things I talk about as I uh, go along the stream. Because I, I want to find a way to like edit edit these streams down. Where there's like a lot of things I talk about, but I can never, uh, I can never sort through. Like, there's no way I'm gonna be able to sort through that much footage, man. It's too much footage. I mean, I guess I could someday. It'll always be there. If I ever, 
reduce my streaming schedule a little bit. I'll have more free time to cut through the footage. But at that point, it's old. It's old, stale footage. Nobody wants it. Nobody wants old, weak, old footage. They only want the fresh footage. They want the new footage. They want that, uh, that barely legal footage. Hey, that got weird. Sorry about that, pig. Sorry about that, pig. Rowboat. Powder keg. Ghost. There has to be a powder keg on this island. Well, it's usually not my style. But I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna absolutely 100% do it. If I can find a powder keg, I'm rowing it over to them. Definitely not swimming it over like some people though, that's just insane. There's seriously like no way there isn't a powder keg on this island too. There has to be one. An island without a powder keg is just like snotty. I just gotta find it. Of course by the time I'm uh, halfway over there with the keg they're probably gonna scuttle anyways. Knowing my luck. But uh... It's an interesting thing about my luck, you know, like I've said before, sometimes I think you gotta get unlucky to be lucky when you need the luck, so anytime I don't really care, I always get bad luck, but then those moments where I really need to get lucky, it seems to work out. Seems to work out, that's what I'm trying to say. Sounded like someone lighting a keg. Good old Ash and Guardian. Man, I can't believe that guy's still here. I remember sailing past that dude. Uh, he's just always there. There's always a skeleton lord hanging out there. Sailed past him a million times. Well, they're not there anymore, so uh, knowing my luck, they've swung around the other side of uh, this island I'm on, and they're all eating my pork chops on my sloop as we speak. We'll see. We'll see how it goes. No luck finding a keg anyways. I'll just sail in very slowly. Slowly but surely. Isn't my ship supposed to be on the opposite end? Oh, that's not Ancient Spire. Okay, right, 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 right. That's uh, that's the other, the other one. The one with the spire is Plunder Outpost. The one without the spire is Ancient Spire. Okay. So they could still be there. I think they can see it like through here or something. I gotta take a look. Skeletons. Scary, spooky skeletons. Why not? Why not, man? Why not, skeletons? 
good aim practice. Hope these stairs go where I want them to. Just want to get a uh, just want to get a clean look at Ancient Spire without exposing myself. Yeah, no, okay, whatever. I'll just sail out there then. What's the worst that could happen, right? Cannonball sounds, cannonball sounds. I can't believe they tried to hit me with that chain shot from so far away. Like, now that I think about it, that was really weird. They were way too far for that chain shot. What does it mean? I'll just uh, poke my head out this side here. Hopefully I don't get annihilated, but you know. I'm here for a good time, not a long time. just covered in fog, is that what's going on? So that's Thieves Haven, or Devil's Ridge, yeah, Devil's Ridge. So it should actually be to the left of Devil's Ridge. Like I, gotta get, I gotta get around these rocks. Yeah, it's like, just behind these rocks. Jeez, man, it's so tough to to learn that uh, Ancient Spire doesn't have a spire. My brain is always telling me, Oh, you see a spire? It must be Ancient Spire. It must be. It must be. That's what they're talking about. But that's it. Okay. Yeah, it looks clear, right? Looks, looks clear enough. Probably roll up there and they already turn back into port and scuttle. Noobs, dude. Normies. Or, uh, what else? Regular, uh, regular players. Non merchant. Non merchant players. I don't know. What I'm trying to say is most people aren't out here for seven hours. I used to do these in, uh,. In groups, like in Reaper groups and stuff, though we'd always sail out for five, five to seven hours. I think that's the best way to play this game. Playing it for uh, any less than uh, any less than twelve hours in a row, and you're just not really getting the most that you possibly could out of the experience. If you don't actually feel seasick by the time you quit playing, then you probably could have put in a couple more, uh, a couple more dozens of hours in your session. I don't think we're uh, in a hide-and-go-seek type situation here. I think that uh, if they still were around, they would make themselves known. They probably aren't hiding behind Devil's Ridge. Okay, perfect. Easy does it. Oh, what do we got there? 
a sloop. A sloop with the big ol' emissary tail and his lights on. I'll take my chances, thank you very much. Seems like he's hitting a big wave, getting ready for the X Games like I was earlier. Two sloops on a vert ramp, dude. How much would you pay for tickets to see that? Gnarly. Two sloops on a vert ramp. You know, I was even just trying to get him to, like, uh... Like, I wouldn't even have to put my sloop on the vert ramp. They could just, like, put my sloop between two jumps and they could jump skateboards over the sloop, but they wouldn't even let me do that. It's just crazy, man. They're so strict. You know, I'm like, aren't you guys supposed to be cool? You're the X Games. Like, what happened, man? You guys used to be cool, and they're like... It's none of your business whether we're cool or not. And I agree. I agree. It's not really any of my business. What does it even mean to be cool? Sloop on a vert ramp, that's what I say. That's my hard limit. You don't get that pirate ship on that ramp. Watch me kick flip it. Machine assisted, of course. I can't uh, I can't do that on my own. Oh, look at that. Is that the same galleon again? There's also a sloop out there, though. Bro, I don't... I seriously don't even know. I'm just skipping. I'm skipping Ancient Spire. That's it. I'm back to skipping ports. I'm finally going to skip a port. This is what it takes. I said I have infinite patience, but, like, dude, I don't know. I'll, build, I'll, uh, I'll loop back around if I can, but, like... If these guys are seriously just gonna go out there and just do circles around Ancient Spire, then that's cool. They can do that. I don't, I don't care. I don't need it that bad. This is it. 15 runs, man. 75 hours. You're finally seeing it. I'm getting irate. I got a little bit irate that one time where uh, that one ship was just sitting in port for like 25 minutes. I should have just went over and done something, but I didn't. I mean... It looks like a different galleon. Especially since he's not doing anything to that sloop. Oh, okay, so there's like two sloops and a galleon. Should I just risk it? Is this some sort of crazy alliance situation that I've got myself into? That one sloop's chasing the other sloop. The guy with the emissary is chasing the dude without an emissary. Which is like usually the opposite situation is what you deal with. I don't even know like... I don't even know what's going on anymore. Up is down. Down is up. The dimples are actually bumps. They're protruding from the golf ball instead of dimpling into it. It's absolutely un unbelievable. Unbelievable situation. Captain Toby says, best time to risk it is when they're busy. I doubt Morals is much safer right now. Yeah, I mean, these two stupid uh, clown shoe uh, sloops are sailing over tomorrow. They won't even give me that, but... Uh, but that galleon's, uh, that galleon's sailing around out there as well, so I have no idea. It's kind of a uh, rock in a hard place type situation. Six of one, half a dozen of the other. I'll see if I see these guys past this rock formation. I mean, if they're still sailing out to Morrow's Peak, then I might just, uh, might just sail back around. Mm, yeah, I think I'm gonna try to go back to Ancient Spire. It's just that, uh, that galleon. If it's the same galleon, which I don't think it is because it has an emissary now, so I feel like it could be a different one. But I don't really remember, uh, I don't really remember how they were dressed. I didn't look that closely. So, we'll see. Oh. Alright, well, I changed my mind again. Morals peak first.
I have absolutely no idea what any of those ships are doing. As far as I'm concerned, everybody and every one of those crews is high as a kite and none of that makes any sense to me. But, whatever. First time for everything, man. Put a little wood on the mast, little, little tiny little mini plank. Perfect to match the other side. I mean, the thing that uh, the thing that confuses me the most about what's going on right now is like, that's the same galleon. The galleon should be uh, fighting the sloops. I don't know where that sloop came from, but uh, but literally, he's just like sailing around in circles out there. Unless he's chasing around that other sloop, I'm not sure. So there's the one without an emissary, without his lamps on, and then there was one with an emissary that I think had lamps. And he's just, uh, just one of those uh, weekend sailors I keep talking about. So that one's got the emissary. So there's that sloop. They're either friends or they're friendly. But the fact that I just got chased by a galleon trying to raid me. And now these sloops aren't having any problem with it. And this guy's coming a bit towards my way, man. Yeah, he's done. If, uh, if those three ships just logged on in an alliance, then, you know, whatever, man. Okay, so yeah, he's just doing his old thing where he sails around in circles. They were shooting cannonballs, like, I should be able to hear it from here, right? I think that's how the game works, but I'm not, like, 100% certain. Moro's Peak is clear anyways, big time clear. So I'll sail over to Moro's, uh, load and unload, then I'll sail back a bit west and check it out. It's gonna be really tough for me, man, to, uh squeeze out these last five streams in this run because it's like I'm not making a record tonight it's still going to go for seven and a half hours I've already proven I think what I set out to prove anyways so it's like so this is a real uh, real test of my patience and self control here get these last 25 hours of footage done but I'm going to do it I'm going to do it I'm going to do it with a smile on my face But, you know, whatever. Somebody had to do it. Somebody had to prove it could be done. Then I'm probably just going to get... Uh, like I said, nobody's gonna care, man. They're just gonna still be so negative. But even that, even that's gonna be fun if that happens, because that'll just prove another point that I've uh, been making on this stream, where it's like you try to change people's outlook, and some of these people just want to uh, just dig a hole and lay in it, man. It doesn't matter if you come right to their doorstep with proof. They're just gonna be like, oh well, you know. You say there's no PvP, but what we want to be able to do is sail right up to any ship and throw fruit on their deck and not be attacked. That's all good. I have no idea what those ships are doing. I almost feel like I'm, I'm invading somebody's privacy right now. Like I'm witnessing something, like a private affair between two sloops, you know? Where they're just like, oh, oh, scandalous. Someone is watching us. Oh, sloop number one, I love you so much. Oh, sloop number two, you're so amazing. Don't let them see us, our forbidden sloop. Sloopy, sloopy, doopy, love. 
I mean, for all I know, they could be fighting, but that doesn't really look like a fight to me. I should, uh, I guess I should just sail over there and join them, really, is what I should do. If you can't beat them, join them. Can't figure out the nonsense, then uh, just contribute to it, you know? Full speed. Perfect. And then, you know, the sloops. <laughs> The sloops alone would be fine, man, but just the fact that that galleon's out there, and I, I, you know, everything I know about, like, galleons tells me that that should probably be the same galleon, right? Because I don't know why a galleon would... I mean, another one probably could have spawned. The one sitting at Ancient, uh, Ancient Spire could have been a new galleon, but it's the fact that they'd be so aggressive to me, and now they're just, like, dawdling around out there, not attacking anybody, and it's like, really? Really? So I gotta get chased, and now there's just two sloops? flying around like a couple of uh, courting seagulls and that galleon's just sitting there doing nothing and it's like I don't know what's going on anymore man what game it what game am I playing is this even sea of thieves is this the new assassin's creed black flag 2 that'd be cool if they made that Gonna leave that anchor down, I don't even care. Blast me if you want, man. Come and make my day. As I as I cautiously look around for enemy ships. I dare ya. <gasps> okay, uh Moros Peak, selling tea. Selling tea, I have so much of it. Wonderful, such a wonderful thing. Welcome to the Merchant Alliance. Devil's yes. War Chapter. Thank you. Thank you once again for welcoming me to this place. You know, is there a certain uh, is there a certain point where you get to uh, know somebody well enough that when they welcome you to a place like you've never been there before, it just becomes insulting? Cuz I feel like if that's a thing I've reached um, I've reached that point. I've reached that point with Meg here. This is Meg, right? I mean, I, I, say, I say I know her well enough that she shouldn't be uh, welcoming me like I haven't been here, but I'm pretty sure this is Meg. Remember, because uh, all the Megalodons are over here in Devil's Roar. So this is probably Meg. She didn't like that comment. Taking her time with the coin counting. Back to making money. Back to evading galleons. It's more like it. Okay, so uh, blurry sugar goes there. Upgraded tea goes here. Just organize when I organize these. If they're gonna do the texture thing, I'm not going to. Okay, good enough. No crate in my hands? Okay. That's fine, that's fine. Silk here. Silk there, silk everywhere, unbelievable amount of silk. God, that toga party is probably getting weird. They're waiting on all these silks, man. Just a bunch of people uh, sitting around in their undergarments. Nothing to cover their shame. Ungraded tea. More silks, more silks. 
I feel like, uh, I've got a lot of silks here. Oh, those probably go to Ancient Spire. Yeah, they do. Good grief, man. <laughs> Ancient Spire is just like, come on, guys. We need the togas. You can't just have a regular party. There's no thrill in a regular party once you've had a toga party. My last checkout to Dagger Tooth is sugar, so that's good to know. I'll sell it at Galleons. Spices, more tea. Podcast, get out of here. Nobody wants you. That's it. One more crate. One more crate, and then I can sail over to uh, Ancient Spire and marvel as there is not uh, one galleon, but three parked in the uh, parking spots there. So much silk, good lord. Uh, da 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 da. Okay, classified, classified gemstones. I mean, I'm not, uh, I'm not Joe Biden here, but I'm bum. Ha ha, zinger. Bada boom. Okay, excellent. I guess I could have sold that ruby and stuff, but uh, whatever. <laughs> it's just a box of spices on the back. Dude, this stream is just like getting sloppy. You know what I think I'm gonna have to do, man, is uh, on Sunday stream, even though it's gonna be the most sleep deprived stream. I'm seriously gonna have to try to break that 500,000 record. I'm gonna have to do it. I'm just gonna have to try. It's just gonna like eat away at me for the rest of my life. I'm gonna be like an old man. An old man laying in my deathbed being like, oh, I should have broke that record when I was young. I think that's really what's gnawing away at me right now is it's not even like the Sloop Galleon situation. It's the fact that it's like, this run isn't even going to be a record breaker, so. so what's even the point, man? What's even the point of anything, dude? I'm going to become the doomers that I, uh, I slander so much on this stream. I'm going to show up with uh, black eyeliner on next stream, man. Or, uh, black eyeliner? No, is that called eye? It's called eyeshadow, right? That's what the, that's what the, the edgy got goth kids, they don't call themselves goths anymore, do they? It's funny that they call themselves goths in the first place, because like, what's that supposed to be like? There's nothing really spooky about the goths, like a gothic cathedral. I don't know, I guess a little bit. Maybe a little bit. Okay, well, Ancient Spire looks clear now. I'm almost disappointed. And then that's it, man. Ancient Spire, Galleon's Grave, and then uh, Dagger Tooth will be the last one that I check out with. But, uh, the thing is how it's the last three ports, so probably I'm gonna run into uh, a whole million, million billion ships up there. They all sailed north, they heard me. You heard me, man. 
And you know, I should apologize if you are a uh, Sea of Thieves player and you want to take a sloop out on the water and sail around in circles for absolutely no reason. I mean, that's your right, dude. That's fine. That's cool. Didn't mean to harsh on your mellow. If you are one of those people who just enjoy cranking the wheel to one side and just playing the accordion as you circle hand in hand with your fellow sloop. Nothing wrong with that. Didn't mean to get so frustrated. Yeah, yeah. Looks good. Looks great as gravy. Is that uh, is that a saying? Feels like it should be. Dude, so much for uh, so much for the dimples, man. I really thought that uh, I really thought I could shave 10% 10% off the time of this stream with all the dimples on this ship, but it's just not working out. It did get me away from that galleon, though, so I will say that. Definitely worked out in that regard. Oh, just about got my pantaloons wet. Too bad. Never seen the back of this falcon. Back of that falcon wing. Not really a much to look at, but. There you go. There you go, man. Back of the falcon content. What dock am I going to? I was going to sell it to Sovereign. I should have pulled in the other way. So I could have pulled ahead to load up, but yeah, whatever. I think it's like maybe a little bit faster because I have so many togas to unload here. I'm sure it's these Sovereigns who are throwing the party too. I mean, nobody will ever tell me. Just throwing the damn toga party, but there's got to be somebody on this island, right? What's that podcast? The military industrial complex is wasting all of our tax dollars to blow people up in countries we'll never visit. That's depressing, man. Shut up. I don't want to hear about that podcast. Yeah, this is a little shorter. Whatever. At least it's safe. Toga, 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 toga. Yeah, that's right. At least look me in the eye when I sell you my togas. Put that piece of paper down. Put it down. I bet that's just a drawing of one of his French girls, too. It probably has nothing to do with business at all. togas placing them directly inside of his body so he may absorb the power of the silk and become smoother and uh, classier more sophisticated uh, 
Unbelievable. Yeah, I find it, uh, I find it interesting that I didn't, I didn't want to break a record, but this stream is just still going, like, an hour over what it usually does anyways. So seriously, tomorrow I think I'm just going to try to, uh, try to break it again, but then again, you know, if I went and got that stupid, uh, got those stupid emissary cargo missions, I, I mean, it'd probably be an hour later than it is anyway, so. I'm not sure, man. I think what I'm just uh, probably going to have to do is forget about it. I'm just going to have to forget that the number 500,000 even exists. I think what I'll do is I'll, um, I'll write down the number 500,000 and stare at it while uh, lightly hitting my head with a hammer. And then eventually I'll have no idea what I'm looking at. And then when I look away from the number, it will no longer exist within my head. Once again, not a medical practitioner. Please consult your family doctor before hitting yourself in the head with a hammer. Ask your doctor if hitting yourself in the head with a hammer is right for you. Don't do that though, for real. I mean, I guess that should be obvious, but... Sometimes I don't know, man. I just don't know. I don't know if people can tell. People can tell when it's a joke. Now I just feel like I'm being insulting. Because it's so incredibly obviously a joke. But you never know with these uh, these Twitch community guidelines. I think there's one rule in there that says no jokes. So, uh, so I gotta be careful with that one. Is that a ruby? Is that just that, that galleon? They just uh, scuttled or what's going on? I'm gonna go take a look at that. Really no point, really no point, but uh, I'm out here anyways for the long haul, so. So why not? It's just something about rubies. Can't resist a I can't resist a good ruby. Oh what? An ashen key garbage. Garbage. I sold that ashen crate too, didn't I? Just a bunch of trash. It's so funny. The one time I have an ashen uh, crate, and I sold it earlier just because I was like, oh, the balloons. Garbage. Or did I? Did I get rid of it? I was gonna huck it off the. I was gonna huck it off the deck because I care so little about that stuff. But it would be right there if it was. So. No such a thing existed.
Nailed it. That was maybe the worst talking of uh, the entire uh, the entire 15 uh, episode run so far. Good golly, good golly, Chi. If I don't get kicked by the end of this stream, I'm gonna be disappointed. All right, well, we'll just turn it around then. At least the bow sprit isn't stuck. Third time's a charm. angle, perfect approach, bounce it off the corner, drop the anchor, oh, oh, yep, 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 yep. we can work with this, right, 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 this is good enough, hello, my lovely, hello, dearie, hello, Mildred, I'm having a rough time right now. Do you got any like brownies? Maybe some cupcakes. Maybe an invite to that toga party for once. You know? No such luck. No such luck. So, is it that part of the stream that I'm supposed to talk about hot dogs again? I think I've talked about hot dogs enough. I think there's really nothing left to be said concerning hot dogs. Um, except that maybe we could add some uh, dimples to the hot dog and it would uh, allow a person to eat 10% more of them in an equal amount of time. If you are uh, somebody who competes in uh, eating competitions, this is something that uh, maybe you should try out. Dimple the hot dogs. Might be considered cheating unless, of course, all the uh, all the contestants are eating dimpled hot dogs. But but uh, if they don't have the, the proper training to eat a dimpled hot dog, you might have the upper hand, even if all contestants are, uh, are using them. What's this? Storage crate? Don't need that. I think that, um, I think there might be something to that. Dimpled hot dog. It's probably a real thing already, man. It's probably something coming out of Germany. They have a name for it. We got a lot of, uh, a lot of tube meat. A lot of tube meat in, uh, in Germany, man. Talking about that the other day, I saw a picture of a of a vending machine, with like a bunch of a uh, bunch of sausages and stuff in it from Germany. Which like it's pretty crazy, but I guess it's not like that out of the ordinary because I mean it's perishable food, but as long as 
As long as it gets sold within a day or two, it'd probably be fine. Gotta wonder where it was at. I would put one at the gym, dude. That'd be crazy. Just eating like sausages at the gym out of a vending machine. That would be perfect. That'd be my kind of gym. Give me the sugar, Mildred, please. Thank you very much. Appreciate it, lady. This this should be fine, right? These don't need to be organized. All right, that's it. Finally, 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 <laughs> finally on my way up to Galleon's grave. We can uh, get this cursed run end, end it up, finish, finish it, finish her up. Is what I'm trying to say. I don't even know why this uh, why this turned into such a cursed run. Six and a half hours. It's because I did that one. Uh, that one Moros Peak cargo. But I still don't understand, like, how does the one cargo add an, add an extra hour and a half onto my run somehow? I don't know. Waiting out ships, doing this, doing that. It's like I gotta, uh, I gotta commit either to skipping these ports if they're uh, occupied or just, uh, just going for broke for the record here. It's like doing this in between thing. Got me uh, confused. It's got me confused about who I am, and what I'm doing. Is this a sloop? I'll take it. Bro. Bro, seriously? Have you ever had a skelly galleon come up when you're slooping? This is the first time I've ever had this happen. Talking about cursed runs, I've seriously never had a skeleton galleon pop on me when I'm in a sleep. Captain Toby says yes many times. I've never seen it. And it's a... Uh, it's an anchor ball galleon as well. Which is great. Oh well. rather not fight it. I don't really need, uh, I don't really need the loot. It'd be great if I did those two, uh, emissary cargoes. I was going for a record. Forgot about this skull down here on the frying pan. It's funny. Oh, they ran into a, uh, an island. Okay, well, that's fine. <laughs> what, uh, I don't even know, man. I don't even know what's going on anymore. That's pretty funny. Usually they just stick with you and he just uh, sailed off at a 45. But it's all good. I'll take what I can get. Okay, crate sorting time. This is the guaranteed content. Ungraded T. Oh, that's what I was talking about. Ungraded T. Broken stone, broken stone, broken stone, broken stone, broken stone. Broken stone, broken stone. Broken stone. More broken. Sugar. Broken stone. Broken stone for the stone. Stone snake. 
Torch crate, don't need that. Stone. My head ain't good enough. Unrefined spices. Galleon's still kicking around back there. Okay. Just gotta remember to sell the sugar at Galleon's grave here. Or the old uh, dagger tooth checkout. I feel like uh, I'm a little bit off heading as well here. Or not, because I just sailed into the wilds now, so. Yeah, so we're good. We're good. Okay, let's catch some wind. Hurry it up, hurry it up a bit. Perfect. Easy does it. You know, I'm sure I must have, uh, I must have seen a Skelly Galleon pop up on a sloop at some point. But, uh, man, I can't remember. It certainly hasn't happened on stream yet. But, uh, but geez, man. That's a nasty thing to uh, to jump on a solo sleeper. I mean, it's fine for me, but there's people on the uh, people on the subreddit again, man. They talk about that. They're like, oh, so you just like sail until a skeleton ship pops up and then your run's over? And it's like, no, oh, no, it's actually pretty easy. Pretty easy to sink the sloops, anyways. I mean, the galleons. I don't know. It's been so long since I uh, since I did one. You do have to hit them so low in order to get the water to fill up because the skeletons, they will repair the middle, so. so you gotta have a little bit better aim. It does take a lot of cannonballs. What is it, podcast? The magnetic poles reversing? We're all gonna be annihilated in 30 years? I don't wanna hear about that. Keep it to yourself, podcast. All right, Galleon's grave looks clear. Probably get rid of some of this uh, nonsense on the back. Dude, better just be a gong show when I go over there. There better just be every ship on the server hanging out, doing circles, doing the old do -si do playing the banjo. Anything less than I'll be disappointed. I guess the storm's kind of nice. 
Oh yeah, I forgot I got that legendary ill fated title. At least I got something out of this stream. Besides, like, you know, the 400,000 coins that I'm gonna make from it, but. It's all about that prestige, man. It's all about that prestige. Just a glory hound. I feel like I'm down to the uh, last brain cell in my head here. Let's give a round of applause for the last brain cell in my head. Isn't he doing a great job? Way to go. Way to go, little buddy. Look at that. Look at that job. Single neuron parked this ship. Single one. Okay, so Galleon's Grave, Minerals, and Sugar. their secrets, the secrets of the mineral, of the earth. Amazing. Quality lessons learned from a stone. No longer are they necessary for my voyage. And I will turn them in to receive financial compensation. You know what I never even thought? What if, uh, what if these ports, because I wondered, like, where do all these, uh, where do all these commodities come from, right? Like, somebody has to sail them in, right? But what if actually what's going on is, like, every week, it's actually the same 60 crates of commodities, and, like, as I sail around to deliver them, they just put them in a warehouse on the island. And then when the route shift for next week, it's literally the same 60 boxes that I delivered here. They're just like, oh, we want you to actually deliver them somewhere else now. So I'm literally just sailing around, exchanging the same group of boxes from port to port. It's the kind of insanity I feel like I'm dealing with. Okay, all right. That's it, right? That's it. I just need to get rid of these, uh, oh, whoosh. One straight box of minerals trying to hide from me. I should get struck with lightning while I'm holding these as well. I mean, I shouldn't, but that's happened so many times. I'm pretty sure they count as a metal object. So, do your worst, Neptune. Hit me with your lightning bolt. It will simply add another dimple to my body and I will become even faster. Soon I will have no wind resistance at all, and I will send into the sky like I myself am a lightning bolt. I gotta say, lightning bolts are pretty quick um, for like an object that doesn't have any dimples on it. Pretty amazing how quickly lightning can move. One box of tea. All right. All right, all right, all right. I'm gonna check the water just in case here, you know. So I can Rats might be complaining, but whatever. I can deal with my uh, customer service department. How's it going? Doesn't exist. Until next time, Captain. Hmm. Wrong menu. Wrong menu. 
Milestone class 67. Merchant Alliance gold. I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to buy that uh, golden anchor when I finish uh, run number 20. And that's just going to be like a, a memento of these 20 runs that I can look at and go completely insane. Yeah, just play in the fire podcast. <laughs> what are you doing? Oh, man. I'm telling you, he comes straight from hell. He has a hell spawn. A demon born of brimstone and flame. Placed on this ship to torture me forever and ever as I deliver these crates from port to port like Sisyphus rolling a boulder continuously uphill only to watch it fall back down at the end of it all. Where, where, where are you? Come here, come here. Into the cannon you go. No, I'm just kidding. You're a good dog. You're a good dog, You're a good dog you little hellish nightmare spawn. Sent to the planet to torture me forever and ever. As I uh, continue to deliver commodities in this merchant purgatory that I have built for myself. Ship's getting a little heavy. Sounds like it's getting a little heavy here. That's it. One more port and then I can do it again four more times next week. <laughs> uh, I should be fine. I don't think I'll completely lose my sanity by the end of this. feel like uh, mentioning uh, Paul Pelosi at the start of the stream though that's probably just gonna tank my impressions we'll see we'll see how the last one did it's so funny because like I said I was like now oh, it's kind of like current events but it's one of those things that they probably just like uh, they're paying Google to crush the videos that's a real thing probably is a real thing just got to talk about uh, I got to talk about clowns clowns probably sunsets and sunrises uh, cotton candy talk about cotton candy you know cotton candy is probably uh, probably a thing people want to hear about uh, how come it only really comes in one flavor it only comes in bubblegum flavor you always you always notice that it's always bubblegum flavored cotton candy I mean I don't know maybe that's just where I'm from Carnies only have one cotton candy uh, machine, and it's just uh, the only cotton candy machine in the country, and it only does one flavor. Speaking of carnies, I like those mini donuts, man. Mini donuts are awesome. Those deep fried mini donuts you can get from the carnival. That's like the best part of going to the carnival, is getting those mini donuts. It's too bad. Too bad I didn't have a deep fryer. Might be deep frying stuff right now. Deep frying stuff on stream. It could be pretty good. Pretty good time, man. Get a little bit of uh, mukbang content in the middle of the stream. All right, this is it. Um, six hours, 45 minutes, somehow. I have absolutely no idea where the time flies this is it I mean I think really I should just lean into it you know 
instead of uh, thinking I'm going to get these runs done in uh, five and a half hours, I should just make it a seven hour run. I mean, I had a really good time last night. That was a good run. I didn't expect to uh, make a record. I made a record anyways. It went f seven and a half hours, but I was like, I was like chill with the whole thing. It wasn't a big deal. But now tonight, I'm just like losing my mind. Uh... I mean, I don't know. It's still pretty chill. Captain Toby says uh, 442,000. Yeah, dude, I hope. I mean, that's still, that still seems like a pretty good number. Probably, probably. My guess is, uh, my guess is 440 again. Because I did do that one Devil's Roar voyage, so it should be more than uh, 413, right? Like, I think 413 is probably, probably the regular amount for a run. I don't really remember, though. It all blends together. I should be, I should be writing more notes here. You know, concerning the, uh, my counters and whatnot. That's pretty crazy, man, when you can do, uh, you know, 75 hours of footage and you run into so few ships that you can remember every single one of them. Because that, uh, that galleon definitely counts as an aggro. Some of these ships where they pull up behind me, like that one sloop earlier in the run, he, uh, he pulled up behind me and then he broke off real quick. Unless that was last night, I can't even, like, it's starting to just all blend together, man. My whole thing is, uh, like I was saying, I'm bit by the PvP bug, man. So I like, <laughs> I just want to go blast people with cannons and light their ships on fire. But I'm like, no, I said I'd do this. I said I'd do this to uh, 20 runs, so I'm going to do it to 20 runs. Because it's not like, you know, it's still fun. I'm still having a good time, but it's just like, I get a little bit of, uh, I get a little bit of jealousy, man, seeing people out there free and untethered. Uh, any kind of uh, responsibility to deliver crates. They just get to sail around in circles doing their do si -do. They probably had the wheels cranked and then they both shot each other's sloops with the harpoons, right? And so they're just like going around in circles pulling the harpoons. I wonder how fast you could get going in a circle if you did that. Harpoon to harpoon. That's crazy. Crazy, man. I just want to do, uh, I want to do some, uh, some more sketchy stuff here, but I'm still just like, you know, gonna get it done, gonna get it done, because I said I would, even though I'm like, I'm like the only person I think who's really, uh, well, I shouldn't say that. Once it's done, it's done, you know, that's the thing about, uh, making content and about entertainment, right, is it's like, sometimes it's a pain to do, but when it's done, it's it's done forever, right? Like, 15 years from now, I'll be able to go back and look at these videos and be like, yeah, that's something I did, man. I sailed around and did uh, 100 hours of commodity runs in like a month just to prove a point. So, you just got to think about that, I guess. But you know, once you start to... Uh, once you start to lose your cool, man, it's tough to like, uh, it's tough to put the, put the, the anger sharks back in the bottle or whatever. Chill out, chill out a little bit here. But, uh, that's fine, that's fine. I hope somebody gets to watch this. They get to laugh. They get to laugh at me losing my mind over a couple of sloops and a galleon. Even though, you know. I don't even know if people could tell how I rate that I actually get <laughs> over those things. Cause it's not like I'm, I'm not like, I'm not like hitting my table and screaming, man. Like some of these streamers, but like, I take a lot of pride in like, uh, absolutely never losing my cool. So when I start to lose it even a little bit, it's like, uh, it's like a big deal for me. Like I was saying, man, it's just like, bro, like, what, what, what were you guys like? What are you even doing? What are you even doing in your sloops? Just sailing around in circles, and there's just a galleon in the background, just singing sea shanties, and it's like, I was there ten minutes ago, and I was like getting blasted by cannon fire, and now it's just like a, like a little, uh, a little scene, you know, 
beyond the rainbow. Everybody's friends. Everybody's having a good time. And I'm just like, oh, come on. So, like, you know, whatever. But, uh, but it's all done. It's all in the past. It's all in the past now, man. Put it behind me. I'm just glad these last two ports were clear. I would have, uh, I would have thrown my Xbox right, right clean through the window, and then jumped out after it and just like curb stomped it. Mario stomped it with both feet. Talking about Mario stomping earlier. No, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding, Xbox. I like you. I like you. You're good. You're good. Keep doing your job. Speaking of which, I should check my uh, my audio sync. Man, how, I wonder how many hours of footage there are in this stream of me just talking about golf ball dimples. I kept that going for like, it feels like a long time, man. That was almost like an entire loop that that's all I talked about was golf ball dimples. So I guess, you know, I'm just super proud about that, but uh, did I sell all that sugar? I didn't even sell all the sugar, whatever. I mean, seriously, I don't care at this point. So. Dimples on a golf ball, which is like funny too because uh, you know my intro was like so serious. So anybody who watches this from the start is gonna be like, "Oh, is this like a really serious thing?" And then like 15 minutes later, it's just like, "No, absolutely not." But it's like you know I want to do like some uh, some current events at the start and everything, but it's like, dude, when the only thing that's going on is literally just a bunch of like uh, total total effing nonsense down in the states and then like this is all we're gonna hear about for the next three weeks again even though it's like you know it's at the end of the stream so I can speak a little more frankly than at the start of the stream dude something's gonna come out something always comes out man like whatever that looked like it was is not what it was like I basically don't trust anything after the whole George Floyd nonsense because it was like dude that that story was not even close to what they said that story was and then like George Floyd as a person was like a pretty reprehensible dude. He he held a pregnant lady at gunpoint one time, so it's like, ah, eh, okay. And then he was like overdosing on fentanyl that he that he ate to try to uh, to try to hide the drugs because he was uh, paying for uh, paying for something at a corner store with a counterfeit bill. And then it's like, okay, like that's a horrible thing. Like I'm I'm sorry that a man died and everything, but like, dude, that's the way they pushed that story, and then everybody just burnt down all their cities over like that. So now this comes out, it's like, dude, there's always, there's always, there's always more, there's always more, man. We never know the full story in the first week. And then furthermore, like, I just don't understand watching that, uh, watching that footage, how it's like, how would five people, five, uh, five police officers just like completely throw away their entire lives like that? For no, oh jeez, golly gee, golly gee, golly gee. Perfect end to a perfect stream. Seems friendly. <laughs> kind of uh, sales are those. That's cool. That looks like uh, Day of the Dead skull. Oh, it's like some Kraken. Sylvie's Sea Dreams, Captain by Captain Convenience. Okay, well, I guess he's chill. I guess he didn't want a piece. Just sailing by to say hello. <laughs> I could have gotten port blasted there as I'm just complaining about nonsense. And it's like, dude, man, everybody on Reddit, they just keep trying to beat the horse that it was a that it was a racial thing. And it's like, how can it be a racial thing when the police were the same uh, the same race as the person they attacked? And then they try to say that it's like, oh, it was the uh, the fault of the the white EMTs and the white uh, the white police who was who were there with them and didn't stop didn't stop the uh, the black officers from beating him to death and it's like oh, what like what it's just insane man it's complete insanity I just don't want to hear about it for like the next three weeks straight hopefully uh, hopefully Elon Musk will do something stupid you know 
he's good. He can put on the old clown wig. Maybe he'll buy another business or something. I have no idea, but like, I just don't want it to be this another repeat of 2020, man, where it's just like, uh, it just goes on and on and on and on. You know? But I guess, I guess if that's what you gotta do, that's what you gotta do, but. But it just makes no sense to me, man. That they, they didn't know that guy, and that's just how they reacted to literally, literally nothing. Like what? He was like resisting arrest a little bit. And it seemed like, like everybody involved. It just was like, just, uh, you know, I don't even know how to put it, man. It was like they knew that guy personally. And he was like, you know. I have no idea. Perplexing, dude. It's got to have something to do with the reptilians shooting their mind control rays into Memphis. Maybe chemtrails. I haven't talked about chemtrails. That's the silliest thing ever. I don't think those are real. The only uh, the only evidence I have that chemtrails are real is that people uh, seem to be getting uh, stupider year after year. I mean, I don't want to sound like the doomers that I always uh, I always curse out, right? But it's like, bro, I don't know what happened. Uh, what's what's going on? I mean, one of the things I said is like, uh, we were always this stupid, and the internet just gives us a chance to really take a look at what's going on. But like, yeah, I don't know sometimes, man. I don't know about people sometimes. I have a feeling that that's, that's the sloop that I was cursing out earlier in the stream, who is in the other half of the do si -do, cause like, it looks like he's doing it again. Like he just likes to sail around in circles. Okay, but whatever. I'll just keep, uh, keep cashing out here. Doing the best that I can. Gonna go far, something, something. Gotta catch all the Pokemon. Sailing my merchant vessel. <laughs> Yeah, I don't know. I don't know, man. What's a toga merchant to do out here? At least I, uh, I don't know, I kind of opened the stream with some jokes. I gotta go back, I gotta look at that intro again. I just like said the word stream wrong. And then, uh, and some other things. I'm sure it's a winner. I'm sure it's a winner. That's all, it's all good around here. You know, it's perfect. That'll probably just uh, draw more people in. Good on that ruby, can never get enough of those rubies, man. I guess probably, <laughs> probably it's because my textures didn't load. So like this whole time, right? I'm just a green skeleton. So uh, this has just been like the skeleton doomer, doomer stream. Like that's how it opened. So you know, whatever. Can't all be zingers, man. I should, uh, I should know better than that. I guess I'll see. I guess I'll see what I put it on YouTube and see if anybody makes it past the first five minutes. <laughs> I mean, if they do, they're just gonna get like a whole bunch of nonsense about uh, about dimples, anyways. But like, but uh, it's been uh, it's been it's been good. Like, it works it works with putting the current events at the start, man. People tend to stick around. So far that I've been seeing, I don't get a lot of views, but like the views I do get, like. The average view time is is uh, well over a half hour, so people who do watch it, they they stick around and watch it. And I'm getting like new viewers. It's not just return viewers, so. So I think it'll probably probably build. I think I can probably uh, you know add some PVP to the format. It's not going to uh, it's not going like, to drive people away or whatever. But we'll see after the the Reddit the whole Reddit thing as well. Like. Uh, I just can't, um, I can't, I can't refrain from shenanigans, um, much longer. It's just too, uh, I'm caught, I'm conflicted, I'm conflicted, like, you know, mentally, 
between like, okay, I want I want these runs, I want these runs to be done, and I want like you know, I want to make the the money in them, and I've been doing them straight so far for the first 15. So if I'm gonna start effing around for the last five, it's gonna be kind of kind of a weird thing for the data set. But at the same time, it's like, dude, to have the willpower and the self control to sail past uh, <laughs> a group a group full of people while you're like filming and not and not mess with them it is it is tough for me to do it's absolutely tough for me to do so so i'm definitely going to uh, i'm definitely going to be doing a lot more of that i'm still going to i'm still going to be running the commodities i think that's probably still always going to be my thing but i'm definitely going to be like i said every every ship i run into i'm going to uh, i'm going to sail past them and mess with them or try to give them some pork chops or interview them or just do something man because it's just like it's too much fun it's too much of a too much of an opportunity being out here when it can be such a social game to uh to not get out and uh and mess around with people that way and then you know if they want to fight they want to fight do that as well it's all good like I said, I'm gonna practice my uh, my chain shot and whatnot. I think it would be really funny to uh, to knock down a ship's mass and then light it on fire and then interview them as you're circling the ship. Be like, you know, what do you think about Justin Roiland? Wabba laba dub dub. My sympathies to his victims. I mean, I keep saying victims, but I'm pretty sure it was only one person. But whatever. That's just like it's weird, man. <laughs> It's weird how that's like the the vibe I got off and when like I talked about that when I was playing high on, high on life I couldn't play it anymore because I was like dude this guy's a this guy's a just a he's a bad person like there's one thing when your jokes fall flat but it's another when you just get that vibe that like this is a dude who who doesn't care about anything but himself or something or it's not even like it's not even like the self-centered narcissism moves. That it seems like he just like he hates people. Like his jokes are very uh, I don't know, very just awful, very quite terrible. But who knows? Maybe he just got sick of it all and he's just like phoning it in. Cause uh, cause yeah, man, that was a very 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 well-made game. It was just completely. Completely ruined by his writing, in my opinion. Just one humble poker merchant's opinion. On that. I was actually thinking of uh, of doing a stream before I was got the idea to do these, of just playing high on life and just being like, guy who hates Justin Roiland plays high on life. And I'd just be like grimacing the whole time, being like, mm, good jokes, man. Good jokes. These are good jokes. Fuck me. Fuck you, Roiland. Fuck me, fuck you. Good jokes, like them. Good jokes. It's just like, duh, just terrible. Just awful. I don't mean to, uh, I don't mean to beat a dead horse. I'm not going to talk about that uh, dimples, don't worry, but, uh, man, that Memphis thing, I just do not, I absolutely cannot comprehend what that situation was about. Like, that just, like, just makes absolutely no sense to me. Absolutely no sense whatsoever. It's just crazy. Like I said, man, it's like those guys, like those cops must have been on drugs or something. Like there's nothing like, like they were just like, they were so angry at this dude, man. They were so angry at him for literally like no reason, no reason that you could see from the, uh, from the footage that they would have to be that like, it was like, it was like a personal, like they were like, uh, 
vindictive, man. Like, like that guy had just like threatened all their families and did a drive-by on the police station. Like, that's the kind of behavior that like I would expect. I mean, I guess not if he did a drive-by because they would have just instantly shot him as they do. But like, man, they were just like they just hated that guy, man. To the point of like just absolute irrational violence. Like it just it made absolutely no sense. And I guess that's like, you know, the point of the outrage, but it's like, dude. It's just incomprehensible to me that that, that, that happened. And even like even if there's more to the story, I don't even know like what I'm trying to say is I have no idea what 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 else there could be said about the situation. Unless that dude had somehow personally threatened each and individual, like, if he was, like, calling their houses in the middle of the night for weeks on end, just saying, like, rude things to their families or something, which is, like, I'm sure that's impossible to be the case, but, like, yeah, just complete, just insanity, man. Complete insanity. Okay. Gotta fill the fruit crate. Gotta get these bananas out of here. Okay, that's the fruit crate. <laughs> what a tonal mess, man. What a tonal mess. This stream is just such a mess. It's just such a mess. Just had like... I'm just laughing because it was like the most like serious... To oh, it was sold at this outpost, huh? Fine then, I'll just huck it in the water, man. Jeez. But yeah, it just started out with like the most serious intro subject ever. And then uh, and then it just ends up being me talking about golf ball dimples. For like four hours. Okay, whatever. It's not my fault, man. It's just the uh, phases of the moon. I don't know. I don't know where it comes from, man. But that's the whole thing is it's just like, dude, what else are you even going to talk about? Golf ball dimples. It's like I got to, uh... Got to lighten, lighten the mood. Lighten it up. I'm not going to have, like, uh... I'm not going to have, like, a big philosophical discussion in this stream when that's what's on my mind. It's like, what's going on? down south again I'm not even gonna like uh, I'm not even gonna give it like the give it like the mental uh, the mental attention or whatever of, like having a serious discussion after talking about it because it's just like dude forget about it. it was just nonsense it's just total absolute nonsense I mean yeah I hope they figure out what like what like <laughs> what happened because like you know Give those guys an MRI, you know? Scan their freaking brains, dude. Do they all have tumors? Like, what is seriously going on in that police station? Just, like, absolute nonsense. Absolute nonsense. Straighten that out. Straighten these books. Straighten these books. I'm just killing time at this point. Let me take, uh, let me take one look, more look around here. Trident of Dark Tides, etc., etc. I can't sell these here. This Athena's Fortune thing. Another Trident of Dark Tides. I'll put this with the rest of the garbage. Okay. I think that's it. Finally up, up, and away. Just gonna go uh, lower the flag. Then I'll do the outro. Do, 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 do. Do. Oh well, like I said, they can't all be zingers. That was uh, that was tough to keep uh, a straight face, though. To be honest, 
say in some of the things I did during the stream. I almost cracked up once, man. I almost burst out laughing. I can't remember what, I can't remember what uh, what line it was, but like, dude, I just I almost burst out laughing because it's like it's tough to just be like dead ass serious talking about uh, talk about golf all day. Okay, all right. Okay, let's see. Dolby says uh, 442,000. Yeah, I'm inclined to believe. Probably 440k. I'm delivering it. Okay, so it is uh, January 29th. This is run 15, the fifth run on the uh, PC servers. Um, this session ran for uh, seven hours and ten minutes. I, I don't even know where the time went. Um, I wasn't trying to break another record. I was actually trying to keep this one under five and a half hours, but I decided to do one of those Devil's Run uh, cargo runs in the middle there just for fun, I guess. I don't know what's up with that. Uh, in terms of ships... Um, it was pretty clear. I had one sloop kind of come my way. I had a, a galleon near the end there, near the uh, four and a half hour mark, I think. That's crazy to think. It was probably further ahead than that, man. Couldn't have taken me that long to finish it up. But anyways, yeah, there was a galleon that definitely, uh, they shot some cannonballs, tried to board me and whatnot. So that was 100% uh, an aggressive ship. I can mark that down on the, uh, aggressive ship chart or whatever it is. I'll get going there. <laughs> and, um... And, um, yeah, besides that, everything worked. It was 14 point, fourteen ports, blah, blah, blah. So we'll see how much money I made here. My guess is probably uh, 440000 or something. Turn the page. Yeah, okay, so uh, 458,096 coins on this run. Pretty standard run. Um, you know, that's that. Not much more to say about it. One galleon, that was definitely aggressive. 18 days at uh, sea. 50 nautical miles sailed. That's where all my time went. I was waiting out a couple ports because now I'm just like, you know, getting into the old gold hounding here. Jeez, 458,000, you know, wouldn't have taken much more. I'm still obsessed with uh, cracking 500k, but if it's going to take me seven and a half hours in one of these runs to crack 500k, then it's like, like we were talking before, I don't really think there's much point in, um, or there's not much prestige and glory in doing it, rather. If I could break 500k in a regular five and a half hour run, then that's one thing. But if it's taken me an extra two hours to do it, then uh, I might as well just sail around and do a 21 port uh, run instead of a 14 port run. But anyways, once again proving out here on the PC, uh, the PC servers that, uh, you know, this game can actually be pretty chill as long as you keep an eye out for other ships. But... Um, even, you know, even the ships I, I've missed, there's been a lot of them that have come by, sailed by me, and they're friendly. It's been, uh, it's been, uh, less than, less than half, less than half of the ships, I think, so far. I've run into, um, just as many, uh, friendly crews as I have, uh, aggressive crews, again, so. I guess we're probably tipped over in the aggressive side, uh, now that I ran into that galleon there. But, I mean, even sitting in port here, there's a sloop that came by to check me out there. I thought I was going to get port blasted and he just sailed away. So that's that. Pretty calm stuff, man. I'm starting to uh, starting to lose my mind. I'm starting to get the old uh, ocean madness out here from a complete lack of combat. But I am determined to do a uh, another five of these. Four of these. Another four of these. 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. So that's five. Another five of these. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, I'll slam them out. Who knows? Who knows what's going to happen? You know, it could all just be luck. These last five runs, uh, I might run into an aggressive ship at every port. Who knows? Who knows? Who knows? So that's that. Uh, I don't think I'm uh, missing anything else here. All seems to be uh, seems to be in order. I'm going to... Uh, as you could do that after I uh, after I end the stream, but a little bit of behind the scenes here. I'm gonna I gotta write this down for the thumbnail. Beep, 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 beep. Thanks for everybody who uh, came out and chilled today. 
started this stream with uh, kind of some serious news or whatever, which is a dumb thing to do. Probably shouldn't do that. But then I mostly just uh, I mostly just talk complete nonsense. If you want to hear like four hours of just complete nonsense, uh, that was uh, that was uh, run number 15 here. It was good. I had fun. No serious discussions. <laughs> no serious discussions after the intro today. I'll tell you that. But that was good. Um, you know, if you're catching this on YouTube, don't forget to like and subscribe. Come stop by the live show, 9 p.m. Eastern, every day except Monday and Thursday. I will be back tomorrow. It's Saturday today, so I'll be back on Sunday to do my uh, last stream of the weekend here before taking Monday off. So that'll be tomorrow at 9 p.m. Eastern. And, um, and yeah, I don't really know if... Uh, I don't really know if I'll keep doing the Sunday streams. We'll see. Eventually, I do have to get some free time to uh, start cutting down some edits and stuff for this. So I might take the, the Sundays off. But I will uh, I will definitely try to be here for tomorrow. So check that out if that's something that you want to check out. And otherwise, once again, thank you for your viewership. And I'll uh, catch you all tomorrow, 9 p.m. Eastern. So see ya. See ya later. And farewell for now.